you, Lenzerheide. Hello, St. Moritz. It's a transfer stage, 81 kilometers, 2,350 meters of climbing. And be ready for the most spectacular views of the Spa Swiss Epic. Rolling out of the Goodbye Zone Club. It's so nice. Also, the album was there. The scenery was great. Living in the downhill trails are very, very good. Yeah, thanks a lot. We are all in. Yeah. It's great. It's fantastic. <laughs> Are pushing hard. Oh, the Bulls take second place. The Mauritian national champion, the Namibian national champion, the AFSA KPFA champions. St. Moritz, one of the most famous holiday des destinations in the world. Twice host city for the Winter Olympics, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and nestled in the fabulous Graubünden region. Famous for its alpine landscapes and superb skiing, St. Moritz is also host to one of the world's top mountain bike stage races, the Spa Swiss Epic. For the third time in the race's history, we are here and we welcome the 10th edition of the race and stage three, a loop course. And after two days of exciting racing, we are about to reach the halfway mark. Well, we've seen Olympians, national champions, world champion, medalists, and they've been battling it out on this five day mountain bike stage race. And the race is now starting to take shape with dominant teams in the UCI men and women's categories and the other categories, and they are emerging. Elizator Efficiency Inf Infinity Insure, Canyon Northwave both have a solid lead. And for all of the 600 riders who started earlier in the week, this is the first. We started in Lenzerheide, and now we're in San Moritz, and we will be in Davos in a couple of days for the grand finale on Saturday. We'll be spending time on board with the Bulls Media e-bikes as they follow the race. They'll be in the thick of the action following the riders all day, each day. And uh, the Bulls Media e-bikes will be ridden by two well-known heroes of the sport, Thomas Ditch and Stefan Sam and they'll be giving us commentary from the head of the field, both in the men's and the women's category. And down on the line, Paul and Till are on the mic, announcing the riders, and Dario and Andreas. They've been speaking to some of the riders, and we'll be hearing from them a lot today. We'll be speaking to some of the riders, and we'll be joining them in just a moment. Down on the start line in St. Moritz. So good morning, everybody here from uh, St. Moritz. Whoa, what a beautiful morning. It just, just now the sun came out, a bit of uh, fog in the sky, but uh, it looks, yeah, a really, really fairy tale. So nice, so nice. So this would be a fantastic stage around St. Moritz. Uh, two times they have to climb up, uh, one side from the St. Moritz Valley and uh, 
they can enjoy all the flow trails, all the man-built flow trails around here, St. Moritz, and uh, uh, they're actually they're pretty good. So we're in St. Moritz. St. Moritz is part of the Retromain. Retroman is part of Switzerland. It's not St. Moritz. It's San Muretzan. <laughs> San Muretzan. San Muretzan. San Muretzan. <laughs> so. Bien dia, bien dia, Andreas. Good morning, everyone. Bien dia a todos de la Romontia a quella terza etapa del Swiss Epic con partenza ad arrivare a Sogni Murezzi. 58 km stato in il programma, 2400 metri di differenza dal test in etapa. Se mai onta scuola in prima etapa, in etapa che è la regione di Sogni Murezzi. Si spiega al Trails, via Flow Trails da Sogn Murezi in torno a Corvia. Ciuncien, tocca sistien, con Rieders è una partenza in Cina, senza che pesce stu ceder durante quella di prima due etappe, si è in corsa extrem pretenziosa. Ciclisti e ciclisti, da buona mai, con ronta Ciun Nazions, al stop Craigs, al favorito, senza che pesce tutta la partenza. Quels vengono termes sin viadi in bien tredici minuti. Spunto la soci, vai liber, con la terza etapa del Swiss Epic. Pia, scodec, partenza ad arrivata. El Madame Liuga Soy Murezzi, Bolonch da Vendel Hotel Kempinski, Soy Murezzi, Bogni in Dida Valencia, il Sulei ha già dau bien di Ciel Blau e da Puspa in di Grandius per quella di arte etapa. In etapa è l'esdi in etapa spettacolare che si spibi al Strails da Lendi di Nauta. Definitely, yeah, spectacular stage. So both me and Andreas been on a round tour yesterday after the second stage and uh, it's really amazing. Trails are amazing. And uh, yeah, sounds out, guns out. We are ready for stage three at this edition of the Spa Swiss Epic. It's certainly a unique atmosphere here at the start finish. Today is a loop course, and we'll have some more information on the update of the route today. As soon as we cut to that uh, graphic, we'll be able to see where the riders are going and uh, the, uh, the feeling among the race winners. A bit of nerves, as always is in uh, mountain bike stage racing. There is a, a big obstacle to overcome today. It is stage three. And uh, as we said earlier, they're almost at the halfway mark. Two days down, three days to go, and uh, still some peaks to, uh, to conquer. That's what it's all about at the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. It's about conquering the Alps. And uh, the race is set in the iconic region of Graubünden, the iconic Swiss Alps. And the Spa Swiss Epic is also part of the Epic series it's a global portfolio of mountain bike stage races, premium mountain bike stage races, and the pinnacle of the EPIC series is, of course, the ABSA Cape EPIC held in the Western Cape in South Africa. It is the most competitive mountain bike stage race in the world, and the uh, part of the EPIC series is the uh, Swiss EPIC, and also the uh, four islands in Croatia, the Andorran EPIC, and riders who compete in all of these events will be labeled the an epic legend and they'll be receiving a uh, beautiful heavy metal medal a few potential epic legends we have here at the race and we'll talk about that a little bit later but in the meantime we will be uh, discussing the changes to the route we have had word the riders have also been briefed on some changes to the route and uh, as soon as we know more about that, we'll be letting you in on all of that. A new summit today, and we'll be covering uh, just slightly less distance and a little bit less climbing, but no less of a challenge as the riders will be setting off on more or less the same route, but we'll be taking in some of the fantastic flow trails of the area. There are around about 400 kilometers of uh, flow trails, dedicated mountain bike trails for mountain bikers. Now, dual purpose, there is uh, some routes as well known for skiing, and uh, it's easy to understand why some gorgeous landscapes, incredible elevation, and uh, stage three will explore the trails of San Moritz and around San Moritz in the Graubünden region, iconic, and that's what the Epic series is all about. It's ex about exploring iconic mountain bike regions all over the world where riders can get to absorb the uh, scenery and absorb the local culture 
We saw yesterday the Alpine horns blowing at the highest point in the race, just adding a bit of a motivation to, uh, to the riders as they uh, conquered the Alps. in the climb to Albula and I followed and then suddenly we saw that there is some gap so he thought that it's a good chance to maybe gain some time and try what other riders can do and uh, the, the gap was getting bigger and bigger and uh, but still at the tarmac section we had like 30 seconds gap we saw, saw them behind but on the tarmac I went in front and pushed even more and at the top I think it was almost three minutes or something so since then we knew that we can really make a good race and also I was pretty sure that here on the flat, uh, we can also gain some time, so I pushed very, very hard on the flat part also, so uh, this was also a good, good move, I think. Yeah, my first Swiss Epic and my first podium, so I'm really happy with that. Uh, I have uh, the podium ID on my, on my head, so I try to follow the chasing group and uh, I suffer a lot for, for a good position. Um, I know I have a quite good sprint, but I have also the white speeder to see what position we are as a team. Um, but it was quite quite funny, like with four or five strong teams together, and then one team was in the front and they lost the road a bit or a wrong turn, and the other team came inside. And yeah, the final I have a good sprint, and Peter knows very well how to position in the group. And we're super happy to be on the podium again with this with high level race with, with a lot of good teams. And, Two, two podiums in two days, it's, it's very good. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, I must say I did look at the views and the lakes. I'm not used to seeing such blue lakes. I do see blue sea because I'm from Mauritius, but yo, the views and we're so lucky with this weather. I mean, my first specific last year was quite bad weather and um, yeah, I loved every minute of it. Awesome trails, so many people on the trail supporting. Yeah, just loved it. Yeah, I was here in the training camp a few weeks ago for altitude training, um, so I really know this area and I felt in love, fell in love with this area. I did the Albulai and training once, so I knew how long the climb is and that it never ends. Um, especially the first part is really steep in the single trail and then the long part on this uh, tar road. So yeah, um, it was a definitely an advantage and then also knowing the trail coming down and knowing that there's always a headwind, but I think we were actually really lucky today with the wind coming back. But at the end, it's also not such a good thing if you know all the, the roads here because I knew there's a way more direct road to the finish than what we took. We still went over Alp Starts, which is quite a climb. But I mean, it suited us, so it's all good. Uh, today it was, uh, I would say, quite relaxed. Um, the first 30 kilometer was quite a lot of downhill and flat parts, which I didn't like <laughs> too much. And then it was really nice, so technical uphill, so I really, really like that stuff. And then we could go up to the Albula Pass on the, on the road, but it was, um, yeah, it was just beautiful with the blue sky, sunshine, nice trail. Uh, and then again, a lot of, uh, I think, 20 kilometer flag section back to St. Moritz. Yeah, so it's nice to be here. St. Moritz hosted the uh, Spa Swiss Epic on two previous occasions and with over 400 kilometers of dedicated mountain bike trails, many of them dual purpose trails surrounding the town and surrounding the area, it's easy to understand why. Stage three explores these trails like never before and the route designer Stefan has handpicked the very, very best of them. Plan for today was a 68 kilometer route However, event organizers who keep a close eye on the weather forecast and are in close contact with the authorities have taken the decision to divert the route slightly and with the risk of thunderstorms and a landslide, they have removed the Valbeva section and the high summit of um, San Murazan and replaced it with a new surprise. That's the thing about mountain bike stage racing. We pass through some highly remote areas and they are, of course, exposed, exposed to the elements. And that is, of course, the appeal of the sport. The organizers do all they can to mitigate the risk. And, of course, it is safety first. That is first and foremost. And the new route includes Marguns and a new summit at 2,543 meters. And uh, we will be... Uh, 
The riders will be enjoying the Olympia Flow Trail and the Forpetus Flow Trail still, that is still included in the route. And of course, also still enjoying the beautiful landscapes. This is the Swiss Alps after all. Service stations remain and uh, the riders will be covering 58 kilometers and 2,100 meters of climbing. So a little bit less climbing, fewer kilometers, uh, perhaps welcomed by the riders, but no less of an experience of the alpine landscapes and the challenging trails that lie ahead. Just three or so minutes from the start of the stage three of the Spa Swiss Epic, the 2023 edition. It is the 10th edition of the race, founded in 2014. We are about to see the world's best national champions. And uh, we've also in, we've seen the dominant displays of, of the um, Olympians and medalists in the recent world championships, the world marathon championships. And uh, as the riders uh, remove their, uh, their, their warm clothing ready for the start, they've done their warm up, they've had their warm up routine and those national championships jerseys will be revealed. Also revealed will be, most importantly, the Chiavita leaders jerseys in each category. In the men's category, it'll be yellow, uh, highly visible yellow jerseys, and that is that belongs very firmly on the shoulders of the Canyon Northwave team. Martin Stozek and Mark Stutzman have earned their several minutes lead they have a seven minute and 52 second lead over William Pirelli and uh, over eight minutes on Buff Megamo. We'll look at that moment in a moment. We'll do a short analysis of that lead at the moment. We're about to see the Swiss and the Czech rider lead the field out onto the course in just a few moments. Daniel Gersmeyer wearing the Austrian National Championships jersey. He is riding with Wout Allemann, a Belgian rider who is himself a multiple national champion. But today and this year, in fact, he wears the European Championships jersey. Wout Allemann, Belgian two-time stage winner at the Absa Cape Epic. Canyon Northwave. Traditionally in their purple jerseys, they'll be removing them to reveal their yellow jerseys. And Mark Stutzman coming off a recent national championships win. National champion of Switzerland is a Swiss native in his home race. And uh, to be national champion in Switzerland, considering that it is the home of mountain biking and the home of many of the very finest mountain bikers, no mean feat. In the background there, the Estonian is uh, from Buff Megamo. Also in his national championships jersey, Peter Pruce. Peter Pruce was well positioned in the sprint finish yesterday for third spot on the stage. But in the foreground, Canyon Northwave looking dominant in the 2023 edition of this race. Martin Stozek on the left and Mark Stutzman on the right. Just the final preparations, just getting a little bit of fuel on board just before the intense racing begins. We've had two days of intense racing and they are off. The Bulls tear through. The Bulls having a fantastic uh, performance this year. They are lying in fourth, but in very close touch with uh, really it's, it's it could a podium spot is really well within their grasp. Following the race today, Stefan Sam on the e-bike and Thomas Ditch giving us the uh, unprecedented footage from the thick of the action down on the trail right with the riders.
as the riders head out today on this 58 kilometer circuit, 2,100 meters of climbing. And uh, right about the 10 kilometer mark will be the first, the pinnacle of the first obstacle of the day. And they'll be rewarded by the Mamata Flow Trail. But uh, 10 k's in, they've got to climb almost immediately straight out of town. There's a short tar section that will rise upwards, some single track, and then a forestry road climb. And uh, if anything is to go by, by the uh, last few days, the action started happening really early on. Yesterday's stage, we had one major obstacle, a 22 kilometer climb up to the highest point in the race. That's where things really lit up. And the main field of men are ready to head off. Barty Bucher, a nine time finisher of the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. He's raced and finished every single one and well on his way to a 10th. He's known as the last Ibex, only two of them in the race. Danny Schneider is another one. In the, on the very left-hand side, you can see Florian Vogel leading the Masters category. Amazing a bunch are on their way. Have fun. And we are getting ready now for our UCI woman. And we can hear Paul K down on the line and that just about to announce the uh, top UCI women. And the uh, race is uh, well and truly under control. Uh, by Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt. They lead the race by 14 minutes and nine seconds over Davos Klosters. Davos Klosters, the previous winners of the race in 2022 and in 2019, Bettini Yanis and Adele Morath. Bettini Yanis uh, had a hard day on the first day, stage one, having lost over 10 minutes. Yesterday, consolidated the losses to uh, around about two minutes or so, Adele Morath and Bettini Yanis, both Germans, and Bettini Yanis, an epic legend, Adal Morath has finished several Spa Swiss Epics. Successful campaigner at the race this year. Might not be their year. They have lost plenty of time in two days. 14 minutes is a hard deficit to make up. Barring incident, the pairing, the Namibian and the Mauritian pairing look well in control of the race. We'll see the orange jerseys in the uh, middle of the picture. Vera Lorza, Kim Lacourt in that order. And on the very left, we can't quite see her, but we can see the sleeve and the stripes on the jersey of Adomaroth. She is the European Marathon Champion. Also present and correct, Monica Calderon from Colombia. Calderon is lying fourth overall riding with Tessa Kortakos. They are just under an hour back, so no threat to the overall lead, really. But Cannondale Vass Arabe, our uh, former stage winners at the Absa Cape Epic, they won the uh, grand finale, in fact, in 2023. So, certainly competent campaigners. Bulls Topado, Serena Luchel Schwab, and Katerina Sosner. And they're off five minutes past eight. They have 58 kilometers to cover, 2,100 meters of climbing, and some gorgeous flow trails still to come. The Mamata Flow Trail, Olympia Flow Trail, Forpetas Flow Trail, and several other beautiful single track sections to enjoy. And we'll reward them for the uh, 2,100 meters of climbing. I hope you are ready to rock and roll today. That is needed in Oli Impulse. 
So as the Bull Media's e-bikes will be following the women's category and is uh, going to give us the, uh, really a th get us into the thick of the action and give us an unprecedented view of the sport really up close. And it's a, uh, it's a new innovation in the sport where we can send coverage all over the world from the, the very sharp end of the field, live action. A little bit later, we'll be able to hear from the Bulls Media e-bike riders exactly what is happening on the ground. One minute to go Multiple nations represented at the 2023 edition, the 10th edition of the Spa Swiss Epic. 45 countries represented in total. An international field, certainly 73% of the riders, almost uh, three quarters of the riders are from uh, our international Swiss contingent, making up 25%. So fantastic to see the uh, Spa Swiss Epic and the Epic Series attracting riders from all over the world, sharing the sport sharing the iconic region of Switzerland, of Graubünden, as uh, the uh, second most uh, prominent nation represented is South Africa. 78 riders from South Africa will be competing, 36 from Germany and from the USA, 34 riders. Great Britain, 31, and the Netherlands, 28, including the uh, team of... Uh, Buff Megamer, Hans Becking from Holland. We're seeing Belgians, the Sp Spanish riders, Danish riders, Austrian riders, and that is the top 10 countries represented. We've also seen some flags from Hong Kong. And the riders head off on their 58-kilometer uh, journey today. Slightly more subdued pace. It's typical of mountain bike stage races where uh, riders will take off really fast on stage one. And then the, uh, the enthusiasm starts to wane a bit, of course, on stage one. They will be uh, rearing to go. As any athlete preparing for a race like this, they'll adopt a professional approach no matter how uh, where they will be finishing in the field, all of the 600 riders will be following a training program, and part of that training program will be a very strong taper. So much of the volume will be done a few weeks before the uh, start of the race, and the final week will be a week of putting up the feet and letting the body recover in time for the big effort, the five-day effort to come. So it's natural that the first day is just a bit of pent-up uh, energy, but today is certainly not one of those days where uh, they'll have that, th that there'll be the two days of hard racing in their legs. And as we said earlier, the uh, just a little bit more of a subdued pace as they set off. We are in St. Moritz at the start of the uh, Spa Swiss Epic, and we have Dario on the line with the riders right now. Are you with us, Dario? Yes, for sure, I'm with you and with everybody, and especially with the riders here in uh, St. Moritz. Yeah, the mood is good, so everybody's happy to start this uh, third stage. Everybody has a grin on his face. Yeah, coffee bar was open early in the morning so we could drink uh, a coffee to be ready to be awake on the start line. So we see the uh, mixed field at the moment, just right after the start in uh, Samoritz. And now the first real uh, climb starts. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hard one, as both of them today are really hard. Have to climb up to the Sala Strains. And um, then once more 
They follow the flow trails down uh, back to St. Moritz and then back up again. Look at this, such a beautiful uh, scenery. The bike in front of this uh, group still with the mixed field. And uh, yeah, throwing over to uh, Andreas from RTR San Muretzan. Muretzen, San Muretzen. San Muretzen. Now I know it, now I know it. San Muretzen. En als dat inkeuwen, als de achtste groep van de partij, als topfavoriet, als koerieders de elite van zijn partij, punt, dan is het ooit in de auto F3. Maar dan doen we dat in het moment dat we een naval plaats in het klassement generaal, zo in de duas etappes. Maar binnen 4 minuten zijn we in het plaats de podest, die we ons lanciaten in tegen graad Odenton. Boudicci was relatief mijn spert en zeer. Si ha 800 metri di differenza d'altezza e direzione. Un sala strange, con chi torna è un inegato lui a una cosa, so i muretti sul marmotta flow trail. Inega è un prem trail, un giro osa vero ma in etapa con... Sì, è giro in etapa con un tic carattere, con la prima etapa che non si viene giro. A lei, ieri sono stato in un'altra etapa da lei a Soi Muretti, non sono stato proprio in una grande, lì un gas, non sono stato passato dall'albero, ho spiegato tutto, non sono stato in un'altra. Voi sapete che i blocchi che si mettono in una partenza, vengono in 22 minuti da 30 venti mesi, sono viaggi circa 30 team, 30 gruppi, a due, è una dina, buon amore, 600 corridor, 600 ciclisti, 600 ciclisti, alla partenza in team da due, qui è il spaziale, vede qui, Svis, Epix, qualcuno che non conosce il Cape Epic, che si sente al BAP di tutte quelle corse di tappa. Zur, Plirs, Dis, N2, che sto in N2, che sto harmonizzato, poi in N2, che sto capito, poi in buona frida, in un lato, che si sente al recept di successo. Ves in una crisi, un collega che può scrivere di sostenere, forse fa tempo, forse regalare via in riga in gel, Pia, e in una corsa propria che si fa in due. Non so se è una giata, forse è una delle prime metri in tec più pacifico, non so se è una giata, 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 se è in mountain bike paradise, so such a beautiful place here. Not only here, we're uh, moving over to the falls tomorrow. We've been in Lenz and Heide and the biking, and everywhere, yeah, it's getting better and better. The trails are beautiful, the scenery is uh, beautiful, <laughs> the hotel rooms are beautiful. Actually, my hotel room is bigger than uh, my apartment at home, so. Poah. That's that's quite good. So I'm going to stay here a bit longer, probably. Now we're moving over to the force today. A lot of the crew and uh, being ready for for tomorrow's stage. But first, today we're here around Saint Moritz. It's uh, like a round course here, and uh, it's a beautiful one. And uh, we had a chat in the morning with some of, of, of the riders. Yeah, everybody is still in a good shape. Everybody's feeling good. They had a nice sleep. Yeah, some reds, it's, it, it's quite high. So we're around 1,800 meters around that. So some guys, they probably had some problems with sleeping on the first night in uh, Lenzerheide. So that was perfect. First Lenzerheide, 1,500 meters, and now we are uh, going up to 1,800 meters and yeah, everybody's uh, keen with the highness and uh, even with the thin air up here. So the highest uh, point of today's stage, it's, uh, it's Corvilla, it's about, uh, whoa, let's check it out. I think it's about 2627 above sea level. So uh, yeah, that, that's, that's quite high and um, yeah, they have to pedal up there. So the air is pretty thin up here. The riders had to get used to that. And uh, you tried it yesterday, Andreas, you're used. 
to the thin air. And they met each other on the yeah, train. Exactly, so. exactly. <laughs> try, uh, yeah, so news in a part that we Swiss epic here, sir, but Santia and Tegel Pols, new vesicles, trail, the also news la part, Lou, Kels Van Swenter, uh, Bian Trent, uh, new venture, two kilometers, the Alp Muntach, Navenda, Samada, said all of my quarter, two kilometers, and see, relative mind ties. Cuyuna Lumagari, a live stream, Nisla Television, we're my quarter kilometers, fetch ties and token, Kivalo, direct. Team Corvia, then Tom Balencia, trails, technical man, bo a ship, pretends you, slash your dear, be a flow trails, then Don Iva, a dynasty, a Jew, a Quivan, see where I mean, fate toys, who can say, can no shenta sets, can as we as in a in a son. Muretia, Scodario, I did it, you won't listen, see in Altezia, be in Melia, see a chimney, a dolce meta, so mar, so Muretia, the basin, talk, so do a millimeter, so mar, no cala, area, is a capacia, a fin, a decoy, bo, and the chip, mean jean, chivania, frida, mayor, see in quella Altezia. In Sven Pischbert, El Flat, who is here, is one of the most grand Swedes, who is here in the third etapa of Sogn Murezi. In the etapa, who is here to adapt to the power of the etapa, is here to score the leader. Signs of the good man, 10 kilometers. The trauter is here to stay out of the route. La part tras la Val Bever. I ven pie se concentrao sin trails. El, el contorn de Corvia, el contorn de Sogn Murezi. Pie in etapa, in tic picurta, que cualquier rente se esplanizao una venda la bial enchata de Antonio Lesdi. Y es forza, bueno, mai, para mai, bueno, mai, al fin de los puntos culminantes de que es vis épico y una grandiosa, fantástica etapa en el quince... Va cruzar de vrias, si es yo propi, resta pepe concentrao en in liuk den tombu in etapa pipa presenciosa que cuál es decir que valen se seis con la etapa royal que hay manaos un barco chonte kilómetros de lai. Soy Muretti de una dina vim partiu tocan vida las ocho a mesa, miche dos minutos a mesa in grupa. Os venían se capecha cuáles que ni te clasa y pie no vamos al clasamiento general de Anton Equels. Chapo tres la capiala de Minchin que venía la rivada de cuál etapa ni de cuál curso que valas con Frank con la pi greva curso de mountain bike el Svizra en toma ina en general forza la pi greva en toma ahí al Cape Epic el África del Sud. So it's uh, just a short stage today. A ah, short stage for uh, for a Swiss Epic 58 Ks, 2,100 meters of climbing and descending. A lot of descents are on this world famous uh, flow trails around here. So the first is the Marmotta flow trail. Marmotta means marmot. Pretty easy. The second one is the Margunz flow trail. And then uh, the third one, the Olympia flow trail. And the fourth one, it's the Fopetas flow trail. So <laughs> it's probably some kind of the flow stage today. Yeah, if you cancel the climbing. The climbing is uh, pretty OK. So just a short amount of climbing on single trails. So most of the climbs, especially the first one, is uh, on a forestry road, second one as well. But at the end of the second one, up to Marguns, they changed to a single track as well. And then uh, the third one is fully on a forestry road as the fourth one as well. So this is uh, the Spa Swiss Epic third stage, St. Moritz in uh, Engadin. St. Moritz, world famous place, not only for rich people, rich people, uh, if you're talking about money <laughs> but uh, also we are rich in experiences uh, rich in adventures if you join uh, the the swiss epic so money can't buy that <laughs> so nice so nice yeah yesterday we had a, a thunderstorm yeah in the evening a real big one <laughs> so yeah it's a bit wet at the moment but uh, as I told you before, the first uphill is a lot on forestry, so it won't affect uh, the performance today. But later on, uh, the uphill in the in the single trail that would be a bit uh, low me. So yeah, it's a lot harder to pedal. Better forecast for today looks better and better. Early in the morning, we thought there's a thunderstorm coming in the afternoon, but now, as we know it from before, 
from Switzerland, from this part of Switzerland, from Graubünden and especially from the Engadin. Weather is beautiful. So, sun comes out. Yeah, actually, it's uh, at the moment, it's pretty fresh. So, in the morning, it was around, early in the morning, around 7, it was uh, 8, 9 degrees. Now, it's, uh, it's a bit, bit warm, around uh, 12, 13 degrees. So, perfect for a wake-up call. No ice bath needed in the morning. <laughs> and um, especially for the riders, it's okay to start uh, a bit... In, in the cool uh, weather or not, Andreas? Okay, you listen to the temperature ideal for a mountain bike. Or the men see that it's great. Then it's the wind is very cold. The hours are very cold. The hours are cold. The remnant of the year now is still relatively nebbly. We have the old ditch. And you want me to see that the prime then it's the wind that arrives. Devi e che ho B su lei a Sogn Muretti Bogn Oz e ho le si in PBD in tic pi caul in ton e una dina fresh la da me un mosco de io a si uccin cian in due splice con in cins participons perfect relazions da si a mi sans propi di de las temperatures a neu ni gin vent al moment e un ci sa quel vent lu el de cuors del di al vent da Maloy. Nos vesim che ulteriurs participons che ha in proms per quella partenza dalla tiarza etapa scodec da ciuncon toc kilometers la distanza ai ina i vada in tornè bien due mili a cien metters anzi differenza dal tezzi a quel parpar fec pretenzius gest lanciata va ina gada anzi tais no che nos vesim che è un centro di pochi chilometri, se lui si gira nella Samada, si la Alpe Muntac in un'etapa nella regione che si sa molto più se ha al fans di mountain bike. Ci sono mai più che va bugiando con un velo, per gli anni galviati, e le linee di nauta. A Soi Murezzi, ed è a Samada, mai si in quella Alpe Muntac, l'ho dato in Valencia, trail da panorama, sotto la greppe, vi do un tocco in direzione Corvia, a Scott Dessert. Se vai a prendere in dels trails, in dels flow trails, dentro l'altro è l'Olympia flow trail, che si maina tutta dobbia, con io sapevo quanti storti toccano giù sul vic da Soi Murezzi e dal spaziale vede questi trails, in sa Dina in Valencia, veste sull'antira in Giedina Alta, in Svesa e in il glicè da Mortarace, in Svesa il vizio da Puntragina, in Svesa vi, dall'altra parte Mortas Murai, in Svesa giù ora vanno tutti il lax da l'Engiadina il lax da Silva Plana il lax da Soi Murezzi, che forse è il spaziale, il panorama e una culissa magnifica in torno a torno, che ho visto in senso i grandi usi regioni che non si vede nel cantone Grigion. Dario, io del Raminente che ho fatto quella ruta la sera per integrare quel trail della etapa da dove per essere vede, ne ho vanno proprio a trasa, io ho un tupau. Dario che amava sin l'altra parte e in trail il vigneto di Odosh, Kin Canai. Dario, ma sai tu fare una trail stava? San Maurizio, tu bisci che sei ora un'intervexa? Sì, sono due giorni un'intervexa. Fu un'intervexa direzione, ma non è un'intervexa. È un'intervexa. È un'intervexa qui. I trail sono molto buoni, quindi se ti piace i flow trails, then you're in heaven. Actually, I don't like flow trails that much. <laughs> I, I like more the rough stuff. So, uh, flow trails are like, zoom, zoom. If you do the brap thing in the flow trails, like brap, then it's good. It's a little like skiing, like carving the yeah, flow trails. I'm a snowboarder. Ah, you are a snowboarder. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's probably why, you know. Another lifestyle. Yeah, another lifestyle. That's why I'm more like, like taka, 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 taka. I like more this stuff. No, no, but uh, actually these, um, Trails are really good. Later on, we're going to have a guest here. Uh, it's Darko Katzin. His company is building a lot of flow trails around the world. We talk about that. We talk about uh, mountain bike tourism uh, in Switzerland, in Europe, uh, how, yeah, and everything like that. He will be our guest around 10, I guess, or? About 10 o'clock. Yeah. About 10 o'clock is come, yeah. Darko Katzin from uh, Allegra Tourism. And uh, now, we're not in a tourism board, we're in a race board at the moment. So, last ride, they just started here. They're taking it easy. Look at this. Totally relaxed in the morning. 
This is another part of uh, Swiss Epic. It's not all about racing. It's not all about winning. It's just about having fun and enjoying the nature and the beautiful landscape here. Yeah, and uh, the food is perfect. Uh, everything is just, yeah. We're going back to the men's field and this is the first climb today, uh, Stefan, Sam. So the, yeah, the leaders, they just split it up, huh? So it's just a steady start to the, to the first big climb. But you can also already see riders dropping out in the back. So first first victims of the of the overall are unfortunately Team Bolt. Seems like Axel has uh, some problems early morning, but the stage is still long. So it's a pretty easy first uh, uphill. So you're on the uh, on the forest road at the moment. Uh, did somebody accelerate or was it an attack no, or uh, no attack. why do they split no up? Attacks, just uh, steady climbing, just put, pushing the watts steady up the hill. And it's uh, currently it's uh, Wout Alemann pulling from the front, the leader jersey just sitting behind them, steady climbing. But the pace of course is high, otherwise people right. won't drop out. Yeah, yeah, we see it. it's about seven, eight k's climbing, and uh, it's pretty steep actually. So uh, it looks it flat, looks flat from our road. point of view, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But trust me, but it's it, it, it's 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 definitely me, this not. This place is never flat. <laughs> so thank you very much, Steph and Sam, for this uh, for these insights, and we're going back to Neil. Thanks, uh, Dario, and thanks to Stefan for those great insights to know exactly what's happening. He can hear the riders, he can uh, he can obviously see them, and that's the those are the visuals that we're getting and being broadcasted and beamed around the world. And one of the great things about having the Bulls Media e-bikes and, of course, the expertise, those who know so much about racing because they have been racers themselves. Stefan Sam just uh, giving us the insights as to what's happening. He knows full well that it's Axel who is the one who is suffering. Simon Schneller on his right, Axel in the uh, in the national championships jersey. Just uh, it happens that sometimes the riders, certain riders take a bit of time to warm up the bodies in the morning. And uh, the others who are highly aware of that, <laughs> they would be highly aware of their rivals if they do struggle with those early morning starts. They will be uh, maximizing that disadvantage for sure. And in front of us now, we have the pairing of Hans Becking and Peter Proust. Peter Proust leading on the climb and a clever tactic of Hans Becking to let uh, the, uh, the Estonian lead on this section of climb, giving a bit of a push because tantalizingly close is the very front end of the field. and. We only see three riders there. It's uh, an unusual thing. The rules of the race state that the two riders, the two-person team, the two riders must stay in contact with each other. They're not allowed to be separated by more than two minutes. So we'll need to have a look up the road just to see where the partner of that uh, spare rider is. But we're with Stefan Sam right now and we'll find out in a few moments exactly what is happening at the very front end of the field. And we do expect to see the Team Topado at the front end of the field and because they've had a disappointing day with mechanicals. And in fact, that's exactly who we have here. Casey South had some issues with his uh, tire on the first stage. And Jakob Dorigoni also before it, having to stay with his partner. And stage two, more mechanicals for the uh, Swiss and the Italian. Today, perhaps their fortunes will change looking for some podium time at the end of the day. Well nestled into that bunch at the very front and riding slightly more defensively today, Canyon Northwave in the Chivita leaders jerseys, the yellow jerseys you'll see up front and the steep gradients all very clear. That characterizes the Spa Swiss Epic, those steep gradients, the Alpine landscapes and those 
those leg crushing steep gradients going up to around about 25 percent we've had reports out in the course that the gradients have been even steeper and sometimes forcing the riders if the trail isn't completely smooth the riders will be forced to just get off their bikes take a few steps and remount when the gradient slackens off a little bit martin stozik mark stutzman canyon north wave looking dominant they have a seven minute and 52 second advantage over daniel Gesmeyer and Wout Allemann from william pirelli william pirelli came into the race you could say the uh, race favorites with Gesmeyer, one of the most winningest riders at this race and he is an austrian well at home in the alps and right out front setting the pace is Allemann in his European Championships jersey. Now we heard Stefan Sam earlier talking about that high rhythm being set by Wout Allemann. It's not necessarily an attack, not a move. Just knowing that a high rhythm will put their rivals under pressure. It's not necessarily exactly when they would like to be in a so-called breakaway because there is still a long way to go of a uh, stage of 58 kilometers 2100 meters of climbing sort of two to three major obstacles of the day still to go but they know that a gap like this will put pressure on their rivals and their rivals will be forced to chase take a few risks on the downhill if they're struggling on the climbs they'll need to make up that advantage on the downhill sections and you can see from the trail surface there are rocks sharp gravel sections and a uh, few extra risks mean that there is a chance of a mechanical or a flat tire and possibly even a crash so all part of mountain biking tactics and about uh, gaining as much advantage as they can and uh, you know, riders in yellow they can afford that position of being able to be a little bit more uh, defensive in their riding so letting the canyon north wave team letting Wout Allemann and Daniel Gesmeyer push the pace at the front Now the Bulls Media e-bikes have two cameras on them. Stefan Sam will have a camera on his head, a helmet cam, and right now we are viewing the race from his chest cam. And uh, yesterday we did see Thomas Ditch when he was able to turn around and look backwards with his helmet cam. Perhaps we'll get a chance to have a look at that in a few moments. But right now it's all eyes ahead on that climb ahead as they reach the summit. Around about the uh, 2,500 meter mark is the uh, is how high that first summit is the first obstacle of the day and that is at the 10 kilometer mark we haven't had any time checks yet of exactly how the front two teams in the race two teams in the race right now at the very front stefan sam following Wout Allemann and daniel gesmeyer that is the william pirelli team and closely marked are by the yellow jerseys of canyon northwave We see Stefan Sam just going ahead and will be treated to a view. He, what he, most likely what he'll do is he'll go ahead and turn around and then we'll get a very good idea of how big that gap is back to the contending teams. And with the women, we're with Thomas Dietsch right now with the women's category leaders, Vera Lorza, Kim Lacourt at the back, letting Vera Lorza set the pace, but really setting the pace at the front of this group as we saw yesterday, as we saw on the day before, on stage one, stage two, Adal Morath is setting a fierce pace. Bettini Giannis matching it, pedal stroke for pedal stroke. We saw yesterday, did put her under a little bit of uh, pressure. And we are back now with the men. Bart Allemann showing the gradient. He is at the front, he's not struggling. He is just straining with the gradient, upwards of 20%. Great showing by Team Topado, putting their bad luck behind them. Casey South, Dorigoni. Yes, just, just wanted to show the gaps already. I'm back on oh, the bike now. This was just a super steep part oh, super on tarmac, steep. but even riders had to dismount. <laughs> losing grip on the rear wheel and balance so it's really steep <laughs> and about Wout Allemann feels good I think 
because he's also in front of Daniel. <laughs> Still in the lead, no, no, no. right? No, no, it's uh, Wout Alleman and uh, and Daniel Geismeyer and the Jerry. All right, Jason. all right. Okay, okay, sorry about that. So, Daniel Geismeyer, Wout Alleman, together with uh, the leaders, uh, Martin Stossek and uh, Mark Stutzmann, and uh, you can see how steep it is, even on his e bike. <laughs> Stefan, now no problems for him, but uh, yeah, you have to. You always have to take uh, the shitty exactly, track, yeah. no? I try to be out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's not bad, so uh, it's not too wet. No, no, no actually, up it's, there. I'm surprised. The rain yesterday and uh, and and this night, everything is uh, is very good. Probably settled all the dust, so we have hero dirt on the downhill. Yep. So about Taliman and Tali Geismeyer, it's a pretty short stage today. Uh, you think they're going for the stage I mean, win? They, a stage win is always good, but if they want to, uh, want to attack the yellow jersey, they have to make a move. It's only three days left. Yeah, yeah, but uh, the gap is already uh, pretty big, so you, it, yeah, you never know big. what's happened. Two, two yeah, minutes. You never know what can yeah, that's right. Mechanical that. or just a bad day, <laughs> and and like with a bad day in these mountains, you're going backwards. Yeah. All right, uh, Martin Stosek told me yesterday probably they need a rest day. <laughs> Perhaps it's today the rest so day. Just going for second place <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know, but yeah, a rest day in a stage mountain bike race, it's probably impossible. So, yeah. I could try to ask him, but maybe well, he needs his breath. <laughs> At the moment, uh, for sure, on this uh, on this road up to the first high point of, of today's stage. And we're going straight over uh, to the ladies. Bonjour, Thomas! Hello. Bonjour, bonjour. You're with the ladies, and uh, it's uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it's always the European champion in the always. lead. Always, <laughs> yeah, she's in the lead. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Adelheid Morat, the team the Fools Closures, together with Bettina Janas. Uh, but the leaders in the general classification is uh, Vera Lose and Kim Lecourt, and uh, they just uh, follow. Adelheid Morat, she's the strongest in the field, definitely, after three days. So it's even hard for uh, Vera Loser and Kim Lecour to, uh, to follow Adelheid Morat. Mentally for Adelheid, Thomas, is that pretty hard, always not going uh, your own uh, pace? Yeah, it's really difficult to appeal. It's, uh, yeah, gap is really big behind already. You can, I can turn, but I can't see anymore the, the third team, the woman's third team. Yeah, in front it's uh, only two teams with uh, Adelaide leading from the beginning and just behind uh, Kim and Vera are just following. Look, not easy, but uh, comfortable. Yes, so Adelheid Morat is always, always in the lead. One more time, uh, Thomas, is it hard for her, for Adelheid Morat to, to race like that? So she always has to stop and go and she cannot ride her own pace. Yeah, it's not her own pace, but it's already high. I mean, it's, uh, it's not just a training, it's racing and it's... Uh, it's harder than uh, training. I think it's even if it's, if she is not at the, at the at the limit, she is already with a high pace, even for her. Probably it's it also hard for Bettina Janas because she always uh, is is the, is the women on the second place in 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 this uh, in this team. Yeah, that's uh, the worst place. I mean, she has to to try to follow Adelaide, but it's uh, it's not easy. But she has to take the, a good rhythm to go on top of this climb and uh, not pushing too hard because the second climb will be also really hard for her. Then uh, to take a rhythm and uh, and try to, to follow Adelaide. 
Okay. Are you... We're going uh, back to the man. They're close uh, to... Yeah, they're already on top. Dropping into the Marmotte flow trail. Yes, look at this. And now it's time for Stefan Sam to enjoy. Stefan, did you already bring a Juchzer out? <laughs> exactly. This is what we do in Switzerland if we like a trail like that. Yeah! He's uh, following uh, the leading men over, uh, over this uh, Marmot trail. Trail da Marmotta. Trail de Marmot, il flow trail de Marmot, la prima gara che va in giugno si dice che è un in alla testa, e Martin Stossega marca Stutzmann, il scuro stricos mel, il stricos da leader, e non questo che fai, via tempo, si Daniel Geismayer, e austriacan, parte insieme con il belgies, vaut aleman Geismayer, che gudignau a voni non, che è svisa, e pigalzan, e pendiu giù, in te che da fadri brandune con il oser, canci tu sciasca fai, e si direzione. Una corvia di Zaviu, un zontel smalet, un si contaischi, e se ci sono sprofi, stoni della via, direte se ne esce, fa storto, se ne tai per la via, vengono buttati di pratici in linea, grazie, l'uso è proprio da saia. Adela sa donas, e le vanno le due ferme, le gruppe alla testa, con vera losa, Kim Le Kurt, Bettina Janes, che parte insieme con Adelheid Morata. Dosa sa ne proprio gude in gara, quel flow trail da Marmotta, che va in giù, di va lungo in giù, di va in giù, tocca nel senso schlarigna, lo tocca nel semana. Also in una lunga, lunga passaggia, o se in giù, non sa proprio tre flatte, sa in tic e gude, quel trail, si intesa tecnica, ma in bugre, via in un jeans sales, al tempo, tempo horrend in giù, quel line bus at cui na al malet forse la televisione, ma quel dato un proprio gas, dal Stefan Sam si e-bike con la camera sto e da gas per vero mai sta, si il scalco in si la roda da vos, a Daniel Geismayer che nos vedin che di esto von nus in Valencia trail, scodet bubia crapa e es in proprio in flow trail. Scodario D. Yeah, extra style points as well. Uh, it's a. Uh, who is it? Uh, Daniel Geismar? In, yeah, it's Daniel Geismar in front of Stefan Sam uh, doing the Nino whip at the moment. I want to see you in front of, of, uh, of your computer or whatever, going with the guys into the berms. Like for me, sitting here, it's always. Uh, up and down and left and right, moving with the whole upper body. So I'm right with you, Stefan. I need a goggle. I need yeah, yeah. Maybe put a fan, put a fan <laughs> in front of your computer as well so you can feel the wind. Get there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be great. Wow. Thank you for that. So, yeah, the pace is high at the moment, so yeah. Flowing in a high pace, yeah. As long as they feel the Absolutely. flow, it's all good. Just like they're enjoying. Can you? Yeah, they're enjoying, but uh, probably it's too fast to come down on, on a trail like this. So it's it, it's it's not a uh, no, yeah, it's, it's not relaxing no, no, it's at all. Work, eh? For sure, a lot of work yeah. for the upper body. You have to pull to the to the. Uh, through the jumps and everything, so yeah, always keeping the balance right for the burdens. But it's a it's a perfect yeah. built trail. So even if so, you can really yep. you can really uh, use all the momentum. Super cool to ride. Yeah, it looks easy, but as you told me, it's definitely not like that. So if you're cruising down with that speed, a flow trail, you have to work all the time so you probably the pulse is not Never. coming down that much so they're no, still no, on, a, on a high level some, some little ups where you have to keep the momentum and push the pedals that's the cool thing on for about slow trail yeah you can cruise down it's for the family yeah and if you go super fast it's also technical everybody can enjoy can enjoy yeah it's getting as as faster you go as more difficult Absolutely. it gets so um, 
Viret Marcunz now on this uh, forest road. Short time down. Still together without Aleman in the lead. And then uh, his partner, so his team is colleague. Back, so he's a solo rider today. His partner has uh, some problems with, uh, with digestion. So he's maybe trying to blend a combo. Oh. I thought about that as well, because uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, as a test, he did the EKK bike revolution in the falls, yes. a cross-country race. Uh, <laughs> Lars Foster won, and uh, he just, uh, yeah, I thought ninth yeah, or really tenth. Result, yeah. So <laughs> he's still in real good but shape. Let me tell you, he never stopped. <laughs> he never stopped training. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. looking at me back. Funny. <laughs> and Topada Racing is also coming back. He never stops. So we, we will have... Yeah, yeah, and uh, Lucas Flick technically... We will have three teams in the lead group and uh, yeah. the solo rider. Solo rider, this is the guy in front of you. This is uh, Lucas Flickiger, the brother of Matthias Flickiger. And... Uh, we see where you are at the moment on this, uh, yeah, it's some kind of a downhill. This is time to relax now. Just have to wait till Stefan Sam is around the corner. <laughs> and then uh, everything is back. We're with the leading mixed team. With uh, Thomas, Ditch, Dörte and Benjamin, they're right in uh, front of you. Uh, we had an interview with them yesterday and they ch just met each other for, uh, for this race. So a uh, pretty new team here, but they, they work perfectly together, yeah, they Thomas. They really work together because they are almost uh, on the leading uh, women team. They are catching the leading woman team. Yeah, they are riding really well. They are pushing hard. And oh, okay. uh, yeah, daughter is just like, uh, I don't know, like 50 meters behind the leading woman team. Great. So that was the last, mi uh, last mini call from Benjamin calling Dirty. Hey, my team partner got sick, so I need a new one. Are you keen to join me at this year's edition of the Swiss Epic? And uh, yeah, there it is. Ah, so, nice. Okay, really? I'm coming. And she's doing really yeah, good. Really, really, really steep. steep I mean, 25%, I think. Hurry bird. Hurry bird for ah. riders. So, uh, Dirty is on, uh, on the granny <laughs> ring at the moment. And uh, yeah. You really need that one. Oh, it's so steep. Oh, extreme style. Um, Andreas, bist du da gestern auch? Brutal style. Da bin ich nicht auf. Nein. Die Gavazinus gibt es Jeans propi. Fit, fit, fans. Mountainbiker. Stolz, du schaffst dir das Velo. In der Pendenz, da tocken 20 Tschun Prozent. Da gucken wir uns, wenn wir können, wenn es Trikots wären. Sehr Benjamin Michaela durch den Martischewski. Wenn es meinen aller Tester, dass man general della gruppa mixed miscia d'ada pieno che in un parte con una donna che va in usa Lucas Flückiger uh, von Stefan Sam con la camera Lucas Flückiger che è per sul il momento si è gruppa sa buono la propria il collega da volontiere le due equipe della testa che vanno in giù direzione Schlarigna Corvia anni di aprile sotto paese con i marmotta flow trail tocca Margunz Margunz e lui in toxile via naturale non chiesto essere concentrato con le vie di chi si è buona o forse un ruclas in una tala via dove si è chiesto in un trail naturale tra i uaul sur Schlarigna Schlarigna è Celerina for you, girl. <laughs> Ce Ce Celerina. Celerina. Celerina, Celerina. yeah, genau. Schlarinja. Schlarinja, das yeah. uh, habe ich gestern in der Erde ein bisschen gekriegt, wie der Ansage. Muss ich raus? Nein. <laughs> In Tokio, in der Kölner Passage, die sind vor Sintek, Brennerin, Tick-Ticket, Pipazifiger, Stefan. 
Ja, Stefan, zusammen jetzt ist es wahrscheinlich ein bisschen nass geworden. Ja, es geht eigentlich. <lacht> ja, es geht eigentlich. Schon, logisch, am Morgen ein bisschen feucht, aber, aber easy. Ja. So, ein paar äh, Grashalme, die dir am Bein rumstreichen. <lacht> ja, Kotzele. <lacht> ja, genau. Genug sind sie, gut sind sie nicht länger. <lacht> <laughs> so we're back with uh, Stefan, uh, Sam with the leaders. In front of him is uh, Lukas Fleckiger. He lost his uh, teammate, uh, Timon uh, Rueck. Timo felt sick this morning. So he's a uh, poor, lonesome cowboy. Yeah. He's, he's really like Lucky Luke, the poor, Absolutely. lonesome cowboy. Lukas Fleckiger. So <laughs> Absolutely. Good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's enjoying it really much here. And this trail is uh, it's just amazing, one more time. And um, yeah, it's grippy, it's not slippery, isn't it? No, at the com uh, compulsory portage section. So I have to get off the, off the bike and run as well, which uh, might be a challenge on the e-bike. So this is uh, pretty slippery here. And uh, you see the guys. All right. Everybody has to walk here. We sometimes have these sections with the rain and the and the loam. It's pretty. Uh, yeah. You know, it's pretty slippery. I don't know what's more difficult. Yeah, we saw this. We saw uh, Paul Kunz, the we, Swiss uh, cycling. cycling uh, Probably these hard cycling shoes are not that good <laughs> in a walking passage like that. These boots are not made for walking. <laughs> these boots are not made for walking, no. <laughs> I have to change the title of, uh, of the song. Okay, these boots are not made for walking. It was just but short, what short you do. stretch around the bike again. So nothing too hectic. So there was that uh, Swiss Cycling Commissioner Paul Kuhns right on the on the side to stop everybody riding. Everybody has to go down. So commissioners from Swiss Cycling or from the UCI are always on course. They check in front of the leaders if everything is okay. And if there's a problem, they stop immediately, they change something and uh, yeah they they, they grab a card to to stop right so we're going back to neil thank you very much stefan well thanks stefan thanks dario and we're back with the uh, women's category races and we saw earlier some images of uh, the two contending teams together davos clusters Adele Marath leading the pace, and she still is leading the pace. She's the one in the very front wearing the European Championships jersey. But the team of the moment, the team of the week so far, are the ones in orange. Vera Lawza, Kim Court, a steady pace, keeping it close together. Adele Marath riding ahead of her partner, and uh, Bettini Yanis showing uh, signs a little bit of fatigue early, earlier on in the stage on the steep climbs on the way up to the 10 kilometer mark at Corviglia and it looks like the elastic has broken. Kim Lacourt, Vera Lawza, a very well-honed partnership. Not necessarily a brand new partnership, but a well-honed partnership. They have got that uh, that dynamic, that uh, two-person team racing dynamic down to a T. And uh, they talked a little bit about their philosophy of racing together yesterday. They said that they don't leave each other behind. So no matter who the stronger rider is on the day, they don't leave any gaps. No rider is left behind, which is in a bit of a contrast to Adele Maroth. Adele Maroth likes to ride on her own out front and let Bettina Yana set her own rhythm. And of course, psychologically, that may make sense on the face of it, but psychologically, it, it can be quite damaging to uh, the weaker partner on the day when they really feel that, uh, that terrible loneliness that you feel when you're on the limit and on the back foot as well, especially on a challenging climb like this. We saw the gradients so steep that the riders, some of the riders had to get off and push just with the lack of grip and, and also because of the steep gradient up to 20% and sometimes even more. But no problem for this team here. Lacourt, Lawza keeping a steady rhythm, hardly a bit of daylight between them. 
they are riding completely in sync and in no way no small way contributing to the success of this team and just casting our minds back to the general classification at the beginning of the day in the women's category they have a 14 minute and nine second advantage over DeVos clusters Adele Morath is going to have to wait for her partner she is obliged by the rules of the race it's a two-person team race she has to sit back and wait for Bettini Giannis to uh, to come back to her and then lead her partner back to the front of the field right now we are at the very front of the field Vera Laws a Kim Lacourt tore past Adele Marath who waited for her partner Bettini Giannis and now well, already putting time into their rivals already 14 minutes up on general classification and looking to put more time into DeVos clusters in third spot on overall general cl classification we saw Katarzyna Sosner and Irina Lutoschwab they drop back on that steep climb up to the, uh, the high point before they reach the Mamata flow trail and that flow trail we saw the men go through there with Stefan Som following now Thomas Ditch is following the leading women in their orange jerseys a beautiful flow trail that anyone who visits the area, visits the region around St. Moritz and in the Graubünden region can tackle. And uh, there is uh, certainly you know, very popular trails among the locals and also international riders too. These are world famous trails and the area characterized by hundreds of kilometers of this type of riding. It's from built, hand built trails with berms all the way to the super remote wild and natural trails we've started to call them that will be a little bit more rough a little bit more uh, remote as we said but no less fun each to their own whatever your preferences in switzerland in the graubunden region in the swiss alps we'll have it here so kim lacourt just happy to let her partner vera Lorza lead the way on the downhills kim lacourt's not her favorite habitat she likes the climbs um, but certainly will be in the, by the end of the week she'll be a fan of the technical downhills they have raced the Swiss Epi before they were third last year and in fact won the grand finale so in fact when they won stage one and stage two that was in fact three stages on the trot 2022 was the year of uh, awakening you could say as a partnership and as mountain bike stage races both accomplished road riders they are uh, both national championships in several disciplines and specializing in mountain biking stage racing on the world stage and just f arguably you could say from their victory at the 2023 APSEC Epic they are the best in the world at this discipline trails demanding absolute concentration from the world's top riders the mindset going down here will be one of uh, no risks I think we've uh, heard from the riders certainly in the last few days that they will put as much power down as they can on the climbs ride uh, to their limits on the climbs but take the downhills as conservatively as possible because they know that the losses on the uphill will not be that great if they can gain time they'll gain time but the losses on the downhill that are possible from a mechanical a crash a flat tire those are unmeasurable they could be infinite because many times in mountain bike stage racing we've seen punctures just unrepairable some riders taking hours to fix them and losing time and losing their chances on overall general classification that 10 minute advantage in fact in the women's category the 14 minute advantage could easily be wiped out by just one small silly mistake <laughs> if we cast our minds back to earlier images of Stefan Sam following the men's category there were three teams emerging Canyon Northwave leading the uh, the charge with uh, William Pirelli but uh, we also saw Team Topado who are down in 16th place on overall general classification and uh, they have lost almost an hour repairing those uh, punctures having some mechanical issues and although the general classification looks like it's uh, slipping with it, slipping from their grasp 
they still have a chance of glory at winning a stage. So that's what it's all about. Mountain bike stage racing is staying consistent. It's about putting it all together. And this pairing know exactly what they have to do. Luck is going their way. They haven't had their haven't had bad luck, but they have also, to be fair, they've been mitigating any of the risks to reduce the likelihood of bad luck. And that's what it's all about. Accidents happen, punctures happen, but if you can reduce the risks, and there are fewer chances of that, then you have all the chance of, they'll have every chance possible of keeping those uh, Chevy to Orange leaders jerseys. Now we do have some time splits on the, in the women's category. We're looking right now at Elizeto Efficient, Infinity Insure, Vera Lorza, Kim Lacourt, and they breached the top, the Corviglia 10 kilometer mark, and had 34 seconds on De Vos Klos. There's not a huge gap, but Tiniana's holding it together, and credit to the German, and not lose, keeping a steady rhythm, and reducing that time loss, and in third spot, hitting that uh, 10 kilometer mark, Corviglia, Topado Bulls, Sosna and Lucho Schwab, three minutes and two seconds down. Cannondale, Vas Arabe coming good on today's stage. Calderon and Cortacast, three minutes 34, looking good for a podium on today's stage. If they can stay in touch with uh, the Swiss and the Lithuanian, they, ha they can get their name and lights. The Colombian winning the grand finale at the 2023 Absa Cape Epic, the final stage, the prestigious final stage into Valdivia State. Uh, but three minutes back, they look unlikely to catch up to the team of Lorza and Lacourt. And we're back now with the men's category. We see in front of us Lucas Fluckiger, a well-known campaigner on the World Cup circuit, brother of Matthias Fluckiger, who is still very much a prominent rider on the World Cup circuit. He is riding what looks like alone. He has left his partner. His partner struggling today with uh, digest digestive issues. And Dario had the insight from on the ground just exactly what uh, what was befalling his partner. But it's clear that Lucas Fluckiger is on form. He may be retired, semi-retired from the sport, but he is still very much on form, very much a, a an elite athlete. And he is enjoying, enjoying the view of Daniel Gersmeyer and the leaders of the race in the yellow jersey. Chevy the leaders jerseys, Canyon Northwave leading the pace. Aleman and on the back, Giesmeyer happy to follow the fierce pace set by Stozek and Stutzmann. Daniel Gesmeyer is wearing the national championships jersey of Austria. He's a multiple national champion of Austria in the marathon discipline and his partner Wout Aleman the European champion, a prestigious title indeed. And that's why they're wearing different shirts. Normally, the rules of the race dictate that they wear the same color, the same style of shirt, the same type of shirt. And uh, it's uh, the exceptions of the rule are if they are both national championships. And of course, the greatest exception to the rule, no matter what, the jersey that rules them all, the jersey that takes precedence over any jersey that the riders may wear is the leader's jersey, the yellow jerseys. We see their... Uh, Martin Stozek and Mark Stutzman just uh, getting in between Daniel Gersmeyer and Wout Allemann. We saw on the climb that they were riding defensively, but right now they know they've got a gap on their rivals and they, if they can put in a few extra minutes on their rivals, of course we saw in the general classification, we would have seen that earlier, that the Bulls are lying in second, or they had a, they were lying in fourth and they are uh, the also the losers of the day today on that at that time check, Buff Megamo. They are eight minutes and twenty one seconds down in overall general classification and that gap is growing for sure right now. Well, just looking at the time checks, and we spoke a little bit about uh, Torpado Factory, Casey South, Jacob Dorigoni, and uh, the Celerina Flats River at the 21 kilometer mark. That's where the riders have already passed through the 20 kilometer mark out of 58 kilometers. And Torpado Factories, Casey South, and Jacob Dorigoni.
pass through there an hour and two minutes of racing and they are 31 seconds ahead of the group that we see here. Willia Pirelli, Gersmeyer and Ellermann, Stozik and Stutzmann are losing 30 seconds to Topado Factory. So the stage win looks uh, it looks very clear that Topado Factory are heading for a stage when they might arguably have fresher legs because they had mechanicals on day one, they had mechanicals on day two, and uh, very often when a team has mechanicals, they're right off the day, they'll take an easier day and not have to fight for the lead, fight for the leader's jerseys, and they'll arrive just a little bit fresher on the day. So 31 seconds advantage over Willie Pirelli and Canada on Northwave, and in fourth spot, passing through that time check, coming good during the weekend. We did predict this. Cannondale Vas Arabe, the Spanish team, Bo Martin and Munoz at 2 minutes 40. So another great day for uh, it, for the men and the women Cannondale Vas Arabe team. And we're right now with uh, Stefan Sam on the Bulls Media e-bike and uh, Dario, uh, uh, you're in, in contact with him right now. What's, uh, what's happening down on the trails currently? Yeah, that's what I wonder about as well. So uh, we probably missed something, the, the attack from KC1000, uh, Jakob Dorigoni, Stefan yeah, Salm. Exactly. They just did uh, yeah, exactly. the single track downhill and uh, could pull a gap. Uh, like I heard, just like 30 seconds. So I want to close up as soon as I can can to show them so it seems like they're on a mission but also the there's no real urgency in this group to catch them because the overall gap is quite uh, is quite big and uh, maybe like neil said like maybe mark and uh, martin they want just want to have a little bit more day and they're just like Wah! just want to follow <laughs> Yeah, so okay, Casey Thousand, uh, Jakob Dorigoni, they're 18 and a half minutes back on the uh, 12th position in the general classifications uh, after yesterday's stage. So they definitely going for uh, the stage win and this here, this is the fight of the overall classification between Willia Pirelli and uh, Kenya Northwave, and there's uh, Lucas Flickig as well in this team. Hey, he was dragging uh, on the flare part at, at, at the back wheel, yeah, yeah, not? Yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> he would he would have been he would. <laughs> he's allowed yeah, to absolutely. do that because <laughs> he's not in the he's not in the overall yeah, yeah. classification. He's not going for stage win. He's just riding to have fun. No. And uh, yeah, yeah, just to finish uh, to finish the Swiss epic. Yeah. He's Absolutely. allowed to do that, but he's out of competition. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's having good fun. So he also Here. knows these trails by heart. Because he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a lot of time up here, yeah. an ambassador for the Beaver Lodge, which is uh, pretty close to where we are now. Exactly. Yeah. So he's, uh, yeah, spending time here. Also, uh, Neil spoke about he's the riders and athletes that come up for training camp to St. Moritz, just when we went up to uh, to the Corvillia, I saw uh, Andre Flischknecht, uh, Lars Forster, taking videos of the peloton going up there. So probably they are on a high altitude training camp to prepare for the next World Cups in Andorra. Definitely, yeah, that's right. Yeah. The next World Cup is uh, on high altitude as well in Andorra. Swiss national team is up here since uh, Tuesday, I guess. And uh, perhaps they pass by here in the afternoon after the training. We don't know, we will see. So, but I'm surprised they're up that early in the morning. <laughs> morning sports. Maybe some, yeah, maybe, maybe sports, some get out. Meditation, you never know. <laughs> yeah. Good, good. Yeah, you never know. Probably they're coming from the back as well, like Lucas did. No. <laughs> now the speed is high, so it's not that easy to follow all these riders. And uh, even the stage today, it, it's a long one, 58 k's. Now uh, we're in this uh, flapper before the next uphill. Gap is still the same, around 31 seconds, Topado Factory, 
in the lead. And then uh, Willy Pirelli and uh, Canyon North Wave. Andreas, uh, wir haben gerade ein bisschen geredet von äh, Weber Lodge und wie schön das es ist und wie gut, dass man hier oben trainieren kann. Boah. Ein paar ein André. Frischknecht, und sie nur LLT hier wieder Tranasse pro Brasil in der prossima Kurse der Coppa Mundiale an der Bab. Thomas Frischknecht wird bei Probabel Forces in Sonne zu Kujan und du passt auf Fähig wieder das Trainement. Thomas Frischknecht an der Kurse. Ai die la partenza a quei Suisse Epix, wenn der Kalle Tournaus direkt als Campionati Mundiales da Glasgow direkt fatti al Viadi al Grigion. A nus das inke la Gruppa a dir del Caminent bo la Gruppa da Teste con Daniel Geismayer, Wout Alemann, Martin Stossega, Mark Stutzmann, da vos tieren nir, weil nus Lück. Lukas Flügiger geht den Ton auch der Konkurrenz al Piazza siu Partenari, Astes e Capescia. I a fin quei quei Swiss Epic Astrid and Tom Bus di da con as altres equipes. Also ad Astrid, per esempio, bu fa tempos per X in duo che ho alla testa. I ad and Tom in a gruppa che è un pieno avant. Chi ne sa in tec de Munkentau, Casey Saus, Jacob Dorigoni, al Taliana, al duo Schweizer Taliana in avantaggi da... Gie è bien 30 secondi, so se che ho qui va a direzione Samada. 30 secondi a vont quels uh, quei quels chun corridors che o els and tom mi due san bobe gron interess forse da pude so entrose immediata che si sauza jacob dorigoni els ca an tutina an pau uh, retard Buna mai c'è un conto di due minuti, se non c'è una voce del classamento generale per Nigina Panica, per Daniel Geismayer, Wout Alemann, dove vanno dopo per il leader Martin Stossek e Mark Stussmann che hanno proprio tutto sotto controllo. Il duo Niel Ramon Spadri Barandun, che insieme con il campione svizzero del maratone Conny Loser. 9 minuti di retardo, sono entro 10 km a Schlarigna. Non so se si capisce, poi c'è il capitano, 9 minuti spara a me relativamente bien, relativamente bien, o che hanno in defect, forse che in Eiru Klaus, ni del ton che hanno spiato 9 minuti, sto che la rigna per me un tic sorprendente. Els hanno in sì già giù in 2 minuti di in ritardo, direzione un corvia, del ton scodetti, 9 minuti è fit, fit, bien, è una dina 9 minuti di ritardo, entro 25 km. Martin Stossek a uh, uh, platt in defekt technik. We zien ons kou al Czech. Ik heb dat in die gene altra. So they have to fix that stuff by their own. So this is teamwork now at the moment. So Mark uh, goes uh, to the front to make ready everything. And then, uh, yeah, we're here. And now they have to fix that. So, correction, Torpedo Factory, K3000, Jacob Torigoni is 52 minutes back. So this 18 minutes I've been talking before, this was from the first stage that the mechanical, on the first and on the second stage. This is why they're going uh, full attack mode today for the uh, stage win. Now, We're at the leaders women, still the same, uh, two teams in the front. It's uh, the team at uh, the Force Klosters and Alessandro Efficient Infinity Injure team. Why do I always have to say this team name? Come on, Andreas, you can say that. Uh, <laughs> Elisator, if <laughs> ah, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look. The uh, orange point. This is uh, the leading man. So we see here the wheel change of the leading team, Canyon Northwave. That took some time. That took some time. So uh, I think the world record is around 40 seconds. There's something wrong with the derailleur. Martin Stosek. 
tries to fix it with his uh, foot. Now he goes back. So probably... Be... No, it's all good. It's all good. And now they're heading into this uh, uphill. On this uh, road, it's getting narrower now. And now this is the second uphill for today. So, uh, Stefan, it took a bit uh, too long, not? The wheel bag. This always takes some time to uh, undo the... We don't have quick releases anymore, so they have to undo the, do the, the, the bolt, the rear bolt. This all takes some time. But uh, normally they train it as well, and they're used to it. They are so strong, they can keep a steady rhythm and come back to the group. Just, yeah. Yeah, because the second up exactly. is long as well. Yeah. Yeah, but they were lucky. Yeah. In the lead to they were lucky just, to just have the flat <laughs> before the tip zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Martin Stossig looked back and then only a few hundred meters to the tech zone. Imagine, yeah. Yeah, probably otherwise it won't take much longer if you're it's having a samurai with you. Of course, yeah, you can always, you can always fix it with a plug, but, if, plug, but if, uh, if you have the chance to change the whole wheel, then you already have the right tire pressure. Much better. Everything is new, and you're on the safe side. Yeah. And you still have uh, spare stuff for another exactly, punch a bit yeah. later, probably, because, uh, yeah, it, yeah. So 30 k's till the finishing line, till home for uh, these two guys. So now it's uh, Mark Stutzmann uh, in the lead, followed by uh, Martin Stosek. Yeah, good bad luck for these guys. Bad luck having a flat tire. Actually, it's, it, it's quite strange to have a flat tire on uh, that part of, uh, of no, the stage. No, we're just going to, along the river to, uh, through some grass with a lot of, lot of hidden stones. And I also, yeah, yeah, I oh, also right. got one with the front wheel, like down to the rim, and I'm on almost downhill tires. So, yeah, it's, uh, there are some, some uh, sneaky stones hidden in the, in the grass. Also, if you follow, if you follow, yeah. uh, follow team and you can't pick your own line you don't see it really you only see it at the last second and then stuff like this happens yeah yeah that's pretty dangerous spot in that case yeah thank you very much Stefan <laughs> oh, it's easy to about to talk about stuff like that sitting uh, at the finish line <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you're also a rider you know what yeah. it's like I also got a lot of flat <laughs> tires as well. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. So we're going back to Neil and he has the classification of today's stage. Well, thanks, Dario. We're just looking at the uh, 26 kilometer mark. We saw they've already passed through the 30k mark, but uh, at the 26 kilometer mark, and that was at the service station where we saw Canyon Northwave re electing to replace the rear wheel and um, Stozek and Stutzman are in pursuit of Willy Pirelli, but first through that time check at the 26 kilometer mark was Topado Factory, Casey South, Jakob Dorogoni, and uh, closely followed by Willy Pirelli at 47 seconds down. And at uh, 47 seconds down, that means that uh, Casey South and Dorogoni, they are gaining time. They are on a fantastic day. Fresh legs, you could say, arguably, after two days of racing, is there such a thing? But yes, they didn't contend yesterday's stage. But uh, we see there at Canyon Northwave may have entered the uh, service station at Beva um, just at the same time as William Pirelli, but they did not leave at the same time. So we'll need to see exactly what this gap is right now. Stefan might have a bit more insight as to how far ahead they are. But Stefan is not leaving the side of Canyon Northwave. This is the team in the yellow jersey. They're the favorites of the race, the new favorites of the race. But they will have to try to close that gap back to Willie Pirelli. The team of Willie Pirelli, Gersmar and Alleman, they started today on general classification, seven minutes and 52 seconds down. And the yellow jersey wearers, Stozek and Stuttman, it, they definitely did not lose that amount of time in re electing to replace that rear wheel but they'll need to just keep the pressure on keep the pace high and uh, hopefully reduce that loss that time loss to William Pirelli 
We'll be with Stefan Sam. He's going to go up the trail and we'll try to get a good idea of just how far up the road Daniel Gersmeyer is. Gersmeyer and Valaman still in pursuit of South and of uh, Doragoni who are charging today, looking to make good after yesterday and the previous day's disappointment. And they will be aiming to get their name in lights. We did see South and Doragoni riding at the front on both the first stage and the second stage. And we expected great things of them until we saw them at the side of the trails fixing punctures. And clearly it took way too long to fix those punctures to allow them any kind of uh, opportunity to catch up to the leaders. Right now we see the lone figure of Lucas Fluckiger. He is riding alone today. He's allowed to do this within the rules of the race, although he will get a time penalty for being separated from his partner by more than two minutes. But uh, his partner is ailing at the moment, and we are about to catch up with the uh, pairing of Alleman on the front and Daniel Gersmeyer on the back. They can sense that this is a big opportunity to put some time into their rivals. They came into the race as favorites, the Willia Pirelli team is a fantastically uh, well-drilled outfit. They've got four top riders, and they very often interchange the riders, Raben Steiner and Samuela Poro, and they interchange the riders depending on who's on form, keeping their rivals guessing. And today and this week, in fact, they elected the pairing of Gersmeyer and Alleman, and clearly on form and taking advantage of whatever opportunities they have even if it is a flat tire, they know that any team at any point can have bad luck. And uh, we did hear from Stefan earlier and from our Dario earlier, they were talking about good bad luck. And there is such a thing. If you're going to have bad luck, you may as well have good bad luck. And they had that flat right near the service station. And no risks. They, instead of addressing the puncture itself, addressing the symptom, they changed the entire wheel. So they took a holistic approach. They elected to lose a couple of minutes, but uh, with that, there are no risks. They can start completely afresh. They still have that full set of spares. They still have that, uh, that inflator canister spare in case there are any emergencies. But starting afresh, fresh new tire, fresh new wheel. And uh, although they will lose two minutes, that is the most risk-averse pos uh, solution possible. Daniel Gersmeyer following his partner, Wout Allemann, the, the uh, Belgian rider, Dressed in his uh, European Championships jersey. With uh, Stefan Sam right now the, in the Bulls Media e bike in the top left hand corner. And on the bottom and the main part of the image, you'll see the course map and the orange Bulls logo that you see there. That is following the women's category leaders. And the men are well and truly on that climb well after the 30 kilometer mark. And they are climbing right now the uh, section up to Alp Moon Touch. Just a small issue with uh, Alaman there. We just have get a closer look, and perhaps we've got some insight from Dario and Stefan down on the line as to what the issue is with Alaman. Thank you, Neil. Uh, this is uh, in front of us. It's the uh, European uh, champion, and uh, this is the followers of uh, Casey Saus and uh, Jacob uh, Dorigoni, which are the leaders at the moment. Uh, Stefan, Daniel Geismeyer is now in the lead. He's always riding together with the European champion. Last year it was Fabian Rabenstein, so he got used to. <laughs> To the, you to the shirt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Alaman was just uh, stopping and having a look at this seat. Maybe it feels like something is a little bit loose. Maybe the saddle uh, or, or something else, but apparently they just, uh, I just checked and continued. So everything seems to be fine. Yes. So Danny guys, my second position, uh, the Austrian champion. Yeah, and they they try something for the overall classification. So they've been on the on the second uh, place. Gap was not that big during the first two days. 
So what's the plan now for these two guys? That means full attack mode, or what do you think? Uh, keeping it steady, so... Uh, the draw of uh, the two tooks. I can see uh, Daniel Geismeyer talking to him a little bit to keep the pace steady and keep a good rhythm. And they can actually already, yeah, like two core or one corner. Up can yeah, the leading team uh, of uh, Casey Jacob. So maybe, yeah, the first goal will be to catch up to them and then maybe be, maybe do some more punishment uh, together as two teams. So they're coming closer to the leaders at the yeah, moment. Yeah, still maybe like a 35 second gap, I think. Look like a goal. Yeah. Still a big gap for these uh, two riders on this uh, second uphill of, uh, of today's stage. They're uh, heading into a single track right on top there. But first, a few uh, case on this uh, real nice road for, uh, for an uphill. Did you did, did did you get the shortcut on the right hand side, yeah. uh, Stefan? I know all the shortcuts here. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know them, okay? I, I did that one yesterday, so that was that's a real nice one. <laughs> so not, not, but not uphill, easy, downhill. Like a hundred meter gap. It was uh, on this long straight. They could just see the, the lead. They they are not where the or just so they have the. The speed of the race inside and to try to get there as soon as possible. So the gap was uh, at the service station at Bib, right uh, at the uh, at, at the start of the climb. It was 47 seconds from Topardo factory to Villa Pirelli. So the gaps is for sure coming down. Yeah. A bit. Uh, I will. I will. I will try. Yeah, I will try it's to coming jump down to the front. Yeah. So Stefan Sam is overtaking uh, Team Villa Pirelli, driving him uh, right in forward to Torpado Factory. Look at the speed of him. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close, huh? Just took about a few seconds till uh, the e-bike of uh, Stefan Sam is back uh, with the leaders, Casey Thaus and uh, Jakob Dorigoni, Casey Thaus second uh, in the Swiss Epic stage uh, probably two years ago in the fourth. But no stage win yet for these uh, two guys, I guess. And they're still on the mission for this, uh, for their first uh, stage win. So, Andreas, the two drivers, we try it today. We try it. Casey Saurs, Jakob Dorigoni, Italian, who is a duo on the test. Direction Alp Montage, the Pita is a good part of it. In a pretty good pendency, it's about 24 km from Samada, in the Alp Montage. We try to see the coins of the Martin Geismeyer and Wout Alemann. Con bien uh, 20 seconds retard. Giu in defect a Martin Stosek. Que partan siamo con Mark Stutzmann. Leader elad Anton Giu Kletiada. Giu in a plata. Bien 2-3 meters avon la zona tecnica. Also, se vi umida relativ main sper la roda. Si che io poi in plus aival. Que, que, que quelle strai sgruppe svegnano tutti insieme. Non è la regione di Alpa Montage. E con Ton Giu Bever, su inter 26 km. Su inter viene la mezza data la corsa e fa 3 barandun. Insieme con Coni Lose, 10 minuti. Retardo il momento qui torna di Javal. E tu svasi non scrivo al retard della gruppa. Vemmo Rauk Saxi Lura. Geismeyer e Wout Alemann hanno svesini circa 20 secondi, 22 secondi retardo. Allora, vengono un po' di su entro, poi non è 25 secondi, sparano in una più alta cadenza, si do, in quella alba montaggio. Scordate, non è una cosa di brandun, che è a casa, si è strelz da casa, che aveva forse un po' di fausa al plazzo, il podesti, vengono più probabile, non con podesti, 10 minuti al retardo, ma si è in plazzo, qui torna il momento, si capisce, in gran retardo. Che è un vese, non si capisce, 
capisce e già o da buon ah, quei motivation si so capisce uh, guys mai ravaut alima that is a top motivation when maxi it gets yeah. so away forna Bit, bitte ein bisschen Haas fahren, wenn man noch säckeln kann oder noch fahren. Danke vielmals Stefan Sam für äh, du kannst alles, alles auf das Mal. <lacht> genau. Ja, genau. Ja. Thank you very much Stefan Sam. 20 seconds is the gap at the moment from the leaders to the chasers here. And uh, with this information we're going back to Neil. Well, that indeed, Dario, is fascinating information because at that service station at Beva, at 26 kilometer mark, they had 47 seconds and William Pirelli are on the charge. But uh, we have to remember that with the dynamics of the racing having changed so much over the, uh, over the last couple of hours, in fact, the last hour, the last even half an hour, um, the uh, race is now on. And previously, before the puncture that uh, the befell Canyon Northwave. Before they changed that wheel, Willie Pirelli were riding closely and cooperating with them and also happy to let Topado Factory, Casey South, go up the road. Things have changed though. And what has changed is that there is now a gap between Willie Pirelli and Willie Pirelli are riding ahead of Canyon Northwave. And this is critical because Willie Pirelli, they may not necessarily be looking to win the stage. They are looking to gain time on Canyon Northwave. So two races in one. There's the race for the stage, which Casey South and Jakob Doragoni are certainly in the hunt for, but uh, also the race for general classification. And Willie Pirelli see the advantage they have over Canyon Northwave. They are capitalizing on that bad luck that uh, that that happened, that uh, that wheel change did cost them time. And Willie Pirelli are looking to make the absolute most of it. They won't know exactly what happened, but they will know that there is a gap and uh, even though they won't have all of the complete information in their ears at during the stage, Gesmar and Aleman, if they sense a gap and they sense a weakness, they're going to maximize as much as possible. So it's not necessarily them cynically taking advantage of that, uh, of that bad luck, but they've seen the gap and they know if there's a gap, they need to make the absolute most of it because they can be sure that they might not get opportunities like this again. So as we said, there are two races in one, this is the race for general classification. William Pirelli are racing for the overall GC. They're racing for yellow. Topado Factory are well and truly racing for the stage. If these two teams can get together and cooperate with a similar agenda, the agenda of, of course, the yellow jersey does in fact coincide with the, win with the agenda of winning the stage, Topado Factory and William Pirelli would do well to cooperate with each other at this point right now. Canyon Northwave on the back foot, we don't know exactly what the time gap is. We'll be able to get more information from Stefan down on the trail. But Canyon Northwave are on the back foot slightly. They have a seven minute and 52 second advantage over, ye over the Willia Pirelli team. But that can go, can be wiped out very quickly. Tactics of to Topado Factory would be very, they'd be well placed right now to hang on the back of uh, the team Willia Pirelli. Stay on the back of Giesmeyer and Bart Alleman and enjoy a ride to the finish and possibly a stage win for the Swiss and the Italian. All right, now we're with Stefan Sam on the Bulls Media e-bike watching the lead men. This is the front of the field and we have two teams in the mix, Topado Factory, William Pirelli and the yellow jersey wearers shortly be oh, short way behind Canyon Northwave. Martin Stozik, Mark Stutzman, having had an issue with their back tire, they elected to take the time to replace the entire wheel, D did not elect to change the tire or to, um, to place a plug in the tire. They wanted a more holistic approach and a more risk-free approach, knowing that they can go through the stage with a fresh tire. Did cost them some time. They have time to spare, but uh, does put them a little bit on the back foot. But uh, knowing their firepower, knowing how strong they've shown in th their uh, their form in the last few days, they are more than capable of closing that gap. A very strong showing from Casey South and Jakob Dorigoni. Dorigoni uh, struggling a little bit on the back, but uh, Casey South 
showing that he is more, the, both of them are showing that they're more than capable of riding at the very front. And they have already passed through the 30 kilometer mark. Um, looking forward to seeing what those time gaps are. We've seen Willie Pirelli with them right now. And uh, the time gaps that we're getting are a little bit delayed. The teams are together, but uh, at the 30 kilometer mark, they had 12 seconds. Now they are all together. And we are waiting to see what the time gap back to the uh, Canyon Northwave team, the team in yellow. We'll be able to get uh, up to the minute, in fact, up to the second trail advice from Stefan Sam. He started his stopwatch. He's looking back to see the lone team, the two figures perfectly in sync of the uh, team of Martin Stozek and Mark Stutzman riding together, cooperating well. And the clock is ticking. Topada Factory and Willy Pirelli passed through there at around right about the, uh, after a, an hour and 36 minutes. And the gap is still only a matter of seconds, 40 seconds. Stefan Sam will not relay that information back to the team because, so as not to give them an unfair advantage, but for our purposes, 40 seconds is the deficit and the advantage that Willie Pirelli have over them. They need to cooperate with Chapada Factory to keep that gap and to put to take more time out of general classification out of the Canyon North Wave. Now the uh, results we see there, that is on stage three, we're at the 30.5 30 kilometer mark. And uh, things have happened since that in that uh, Willia Pirelli and Topada Factory are in fact riding together. So that gap of 12 seconds you just saw there is now, they are riding together. There is no gap, but uh, one minute at that time check at uh, to back to Canyon Northwave. And Canyon Northwave have already taken back 40 or 20 seconds. They're now sitting at 40 seconds behind those two leading teams at the moment. Fantastic performance, showing their strength when it really counts and they open the taps. Martin Stozek, they're no longer riding conservatively. They are riding to regain contact with Brillier Pirelli. And not only that, the most important part of that is that when they gain contact with, with Willier Pirelli, they know they can cooperate and put more time back into their other rivals. And their other rivals, of course, aren't just Willier Pirelli. It's Buff Megamo, the Bulls, Team Larks. We haven't seen much of Team Larks throughout the day today. They may have also had some bad luck, but even at the time checks, they've been out of the top 10. So Buff Megamo are still in the mix. Uh, in overall general classification, they are eight minutes and 21 seconds down. But we saw the uh, we saw Peter Pruce struggling a little bit, and we certainly saw the Bulls' Axel Rudil struggling on the very first climb. They are 13 minutes back on overall general classification, but the uh, teams out front right now, if there is a catch, if Canyon Northwave do catch up to Willia Pirelli and Topada Factory, they will cooperate fully so as to put their rivals, to put more time on their rivals. Because of course, Willia Pirelli, if they are defending that second place overall, they have Buff Megamo breathing down their necks, less than one minute down, less than 30 seconds down, in fact, on overall general classification. They know that whatever advantage they can, they will make the absolute most of it. Mark Stutzman leading the, uh, the drive now, leading the, uh, the duo as they try to get contact. We might be able to see just a glimpse of the leading two teams up the road. And certainly that's what the uh, team of Canyon Northway will be looking for. They're looking for any sign, any visuals of the, uh, of the leading teams. And of course that just gives them a little bit of a carrot at the end of the stick little bit of a hair that they can chase and it makes all the difference if you're riding blind if you can't see your rivals up in front if you try to make a catch it does uh, make it a lot easier if there is uh, something to aim for we are treated to some of the most gorgeous trails the natural trails around the Alp with the Alpine landscapes as the backdrop to an exciting day of racing. Stage three, things are taking shape and drama for Canyon Northwave changing that wheel, but it looks like they are well in control of that, uh, of that issue that they had. 
That's the thing about mountain bike stage racing is that uh, any top professional will tell you, including Stefan Sam, Stefan Sam and Carl Platt were known as the masters of, uh, of taking control of any issue. If they had, uh, they were known as the masters of damage control. If there was a flat, they would repair it quickly. They had a plan. And in fact, I think Stefan Sam still holds the record for replacing a chain on the trail side in less than 40 seconds. I think Stefan will remind us of that day, but I think those days when we had the stopwatch out and counted how long it took Stefan Sam to completely replace a chain which he had spare. And we will be crossing very shortly to Dario. And uh, just uh, before we do that, we've got visuals of the women's category races right now. And this is the uh, dominant team of the race. Vera Lorza, Kim Lacourt in their orange Chiavita leaders jerseys. And uh, keeping a steady rhythm, not leaving a single bit of daylight between them. Well cooperating pair and uh, putting as much advantage as they can into their rivals, Adama Roth and Bettini Giannis. So Dario, are you in, uh, you're on the ground right now in St. Moritz waiting for the riders to come around. It's a loop course. You saw them leave and you'll be seeing them shortly after their 58 kilometer journey through the Alpine landscapes. And you'll be in touch with uh, Stefan. So you're talking to Stefan directly. Uh, any insights from the trail? Yeah, Stefan, Sam, the trail looks beautiful at the moment. I did that one yesterday in the different direction, so you have to paddle up all the time. Hey, I was wondering, so Stefan Stosek, he uh, had a look back right after the wheel change, and now he tried to fix something on, on uh, yeah, does he problem, does he have some technical problems, or? Uh... It's just uh, on the Shimano derailers, there's the, the lever for the clutch, so the chain is not slapping too much, and for the wheel change, it's easier to open it to give the cage a little bit more yeah. play. And uh, yeah, he just wanted to try uh, to close, but I think it was already closed. So he was not sure if it was fully closed. So he just gave it a little push by the, with the foot. Okay. So now this, uh, okay, so this is now a quite interesting situation because the teams can all see each other. So Avilia and Pirelli are the two white spots in front. They have like 100 meters mm -hmm. to Topado and another 100 meters to the to the yellow jersey. And it's only uh, a few hundred meters uphill now, so a real steep one is coming up. Yeah, it looks really good on the left-hand side. Uh, Torpada, then Ville Pirelli, and now these are the chasers, the overall classification leaders. So it seems that everything's coming together. Well, we, we, will we will see. see, we yeah. will see. <laughs> They're still not together, so everybody's fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's struggling, yeah, yeah. Condition's still perfect, temperature is okay up there. Absolutely, 18 degrees or something like that, so it's perfect for, for riding. The track is awesome. Good grip. We had a bit of a loose section just uh, a couple of minutes ago, but now it's just perfect riding. Yeah. Yeah, this trail is perfect in both directions. Really good for uphilling, really good for the downhill as well. So, phew. Nice view into the uh, into the valley down to. Uh, Slarinia, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, l I learned quick the red Romanish uh, language. Chichipula, that's what he said yes uh, last year. Do you remember that one? No, Stefan? I don't remember. <laughs> Chichipula. No. What, is, what, is, what does that mean? Chichipula, Chichipula is who? Uh, Hoover. Okay. Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> Chichipula is Hoover. <laughs> so most most important yeah, words yeah. to remember. Probably are some. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we probably never <laughs> never need it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, yeah. The cap is uh, is closer well, at the moment. Oh, so they're, uh, they're coming closer at the yeah, moment. So yeah, yeah. Now we're to part of racing. Uh, Stutzmann feeling good and end. pushing from the front. Good, from the front. 
And we, if we're talking about Chichipurla. 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 Chicha. Chicha. Chichapurla. Chichapurla. Yeah, probably Chichipurla is. Uh, my, I speak in, in my idiom, uh, Sufsilvan. Ah, okay, good. It's maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please, Andreas, we are from out here. Yeah, Martin Stosek, uh, Max Stutzmann, the leader of the PAP, the Jakob Dorigoni, the Italian, and the Casey Southcan, and the Kaukan, and the total Pussy, and the Skapa. Pagan den ton osin tik. Pagan bo pli de velas meiras kom. Vas el zanesh diashu shavagad Daniel Geismayer ja ostreja kan se mukul Belgiz vaut Aleman. Kain al moment ala testa koi duo kafa osa tempo sin koi trail panorama trail direktion marguns puspa elo valuoni ne gadan si direktion korvia el zan Passau von kurt la Alpe Montage. Ne vende samada se usine via Natural as the Alp Montage and when the Leos are in the Vine of Ones, she in Trail Panorama Direction Margun, so that in a sea you can and the Reminense Bupi a ski to say because a pit of part relative plat in Balletia Trail Natural. Uh, I valo in kort terms uh, um, fosse bien nos event dos alles so die zum konnte meter so differenze dal tezio und sie es wenter weinte seit ein june chines minutes in trail de dort oka marguns thank you very much uh, grazie al fitch andreas uh, vialand and now we're right in the middle so uh, team torpado is now together with uh, canyon north wave Following uh, the leaders at the moment, this is the team Billy Pirelli with Daniel Geismann and Wout Aleman. So we're heading over to Neil. Well, thanks, uh, Stefan. Thanks, Dario. And thanks, Andreas. We are, have reached an important point in the race now. The catch has been made of uh, the uh, Canyon North Wave team have caught to a part of factory. Now, important to note that Willy and Pirelli have attacked and they have left Topado Factory behind. And this is clearly because they have a different agenda. They have the agenda of the overall general classification. They have sensed the weakness. They've sensed the gap back to Canyon North Wave and they are maximizing it. So they are riding at full taps open. And just those tactics at play here that when the catch happens, the Topado can now sit back and relax and they can, uh, or hardly relax, they can sit back and just ride on the wheels of Canyon North Wave and hopefully follow because up the road is William Pirelli. William Pirelli believe that uh, they're not only going for the stage, that is the stage win is almost secondary. The primary goal of William Pirelli is to put time on general classification into Canyon North Wave. Canyon North Wave are the dominant team. They have shown to be the strongest team in the race so far, those two stages, but they have, however, got that chase that they've just had to make up one minute. They've got to make that up and they will have spent a few, a few burnt a few matches, uh, spent a few biscuits, as they say, chasing back. So who knows if they'll be able, if they'll have the firepower to get back. If any team has that firepower, they will. We can see just a little bit up the road, the uh, lone figures of William Pirelli riding together, and Canyon Northwave absolutely on the charge. We're already seeing a gap to uh, just just starting to form back to Topado Factory. That uh, gap between the wheel of uh, Stozek and uh, Casey South, and that is an all-telling gap. Just on the uh, corners, giving uh, South an opportunity to catch up again. But uh, that gap is starting starting to yo-yo, and the elastic eventually at some point will snap as uh, the team of Canyon Northwave aim to get back in touch with uh, William Pirelli. Of course, what we really expect to happen, if the inevitable happens, like if, uh, for instance, if Canyon Northwave do manage to breach that gap, if they close that gap, all Topado Factory need to do is just get back in touch. And even if they don't, it's highly likely that once that catch has been made, if William Pirelli is caught by Canyon Northwave, there will be a little bit of a lull in the pace. And that lull in the pace will mean that the race is more or less neutralized, that attack, that move that uh, William Pirelli made just a little bit earlier that's been nullified and at some point very soon after that catch they will uh, have a bit of a truce and the, the fierce pace that is being set currently will come out of the front of the race and this will give another opportunity to to a part of factory so casey south and jacob dorogoni all they need to do is have a bit of faith 
need to take a uh, take a little bit of a moment to themselves, not force the pace too much, not go into the red, not blow themselves up. And if they are patient, they will be rewarded by the, the way things will play out and the tactics of things. As the race starts to neutralize a little bit with William Pirelli and Canyon Northwave together, that would give another opportunity for Casey South and Jakob Doragoni. Another shot at that stage win. They've already shown that they are keen. They've already shown that they are keen to ride alone and aim for uh, aim to be aim to finish alone, which is of course the best way to win a stage. If you have a chance to celebrate as you go across the line, that is first prize for the Turpado factory team. And uh, just before they reach that second uh, that second time check that we've been looking for, that uh, 37 kilometer mark, that's the water point and the Lai Alf highest point in the race at 2,543 meters. We will get a clear view of how the racing will unfold at that point. We've still got some exciting flow trails to go. Olympia flow trail, Fopetta's flow trail, and the flow trail down into Marguns. But uh, the lie off section, the highest point in the race, that will be a critical telling point shortly before they tackle the Olympia flow trail. Back with the women's category leaders, the overall race leaders of the, uh, after two days into day three is the pairing of Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt. And they are looking dominant. Certainly they're looking very strong, but most importantly, they're looking very much in sync. Kim Lacourt, happy to set the pace. She does enjoy the climbing. And uh, credit to her because she did complete Glasgow World Road Championships uh, she finished in the bunch, and that was on Sunday, a particularly hard race, 154-kilometer road race. And the next day, she was on the plane to Switzerland and uh, riding at altitude and heading up to that high point in the stage today at Lyalf and at 2,543. Direct contrast to the streets of Glasgow, she's now in the alpine landscapes of Graubünden around St. Moritz. It's all part of being a professional mountain biker is being able to adapt to different circumstances. She's now on the dirt, whereas uh, on the weekend she was riding across cobblestones and on steep climbs in among the world's best road cyclists. And uh, certainly she looks very much at home in her speciality now. They've specialized this team in um, mountain bike stage racing and the results certainly have shown they were third last year in the 2022 Spa Swiss Epic. They won the grand finale. They won stage one of the 2023 edition, stage two as well, and they look well on their way to solidifying that overall lead and uh, cementing their place in history, in the race's history as a former winner. Losers of the day, we saw that Bettina Yanis was struggling. She's a two-time winner of the race alongside uh, Dal Marath. But uh, today doesn't look like their day. They struggled on day one, lost plenty of time, lost over 10 minutes on day one. And day two, they consolidated their efforts. They managed to uh, limit their losses. Bettina Yanis was struggling on that main obstacle, the 22-kilometer climb. And uh, they are lying currently at 14 minutes and nine seconds down on overall general classification. Now, as we are with uh, the Thomas Ditch following the lead women on the Bulls Media e-bike, we're seeing a steady pace set by Kim Lacourt, Vera Lorza following in perfect tactics, perfect sync as they launch another assault and another possible stage win for the two. And uh, down in St. Moritz in the valley, we have Dario and Andreas, and they have a special guest with them right now. Exactly. Thank you very much. And uh, in the next few minutes, Rumanch is the language. <laughs> so, uh, Andreas. Not only Rumanch, huh? Not only Rumanch, okay. Mein cordial benvenuto. Let's go for a dark coca zin da Puntragini. Che dis vini us col velo da Puntragini che ho a sogni Muretti 20 minutos a Dina Silvelo. Publer possible. Adolsa io metto avanti cudizza zeda fa quella 
quella etappa, quella terza etappa che ho da Soi Murezzi, Soi Murezzi sono tons trails. E voi sapete già di dire il Mr. Trail. Tu puoi dire se tu ti vuoi, <laughs> ma sì, io ne ho, ne ho, um, forse è più giusto, io ne ho contribuito al sviluppo forza di questi rides, di sendi e di trails. Ma se vi si sono quei trails che ho detto che l'engine di Nauta non si sa che è, fanno già un plisè di dire, che male ne fai per il turismo, che viene un extra l'engine di Nauta, giusto per quei, per i quei svies, quei trails, e la regione di Soi Murezzi, Corvia. Sì, è da naturalmente enorme, un buon sentimento, alza sì. Tutto il live, il portrezzo della quarsa, si è naturalmente impressionato dalla sveltezza e del savoir sul velo, c'è questo niveau, c'è i partecipanti del Swiss Epicon, qua fa gusto, ma fa naturalmente il gusto a Zbunura, appunto sono i miei, si giusto da Puntregina, Samorezza, sul live del Stato, e ubler le persone sul velo, gli auto già in pensionati, famiglie e qua ci sono le colie e ci sono tutti in rire sul viste e hanno un gusto di essere inviati sul velo. Sì, qua fa, qua fa enorme piacere, invece. E di essere capace di fare trails per tutti, trails e buon trails. Uh, Precis. Da, naturalmente, fai pretensius trails, da quel flow trails. Mm. I trovo i trovo in te del tutto mm. e in quella regione. Mm. Trails per famiglie, se che ti sa sì con la, con la buona banaia. Mm. Non so di noi profi, naturalmente in questi anni su crappi e regis, buon pretenzioso avondo. Mm -hmm. Quella mi sa è molto importante, è in una regione turistica, è una regione di Nauta. Sì, per la regione turistica è naturalmente decisivo, c'è una regione turistica. Um, noi vanno naturalmente in mince regione con un'ingedina, una ride di trails, di sendes che già sono esistenti e noi vanno le nostre sende storiche sono cresciute per altri motivi, also per ir su un'alp, per uh, contrabanda, per uh, fabbricanti, per ir a pè. E o se si prova il mountain bike, di spiego già in 15 anni, se, o se si è per qualche anno da ad adattare le sende esistenti per il mountain bike. E cosa tu dici giusto, in un daio be un tipo di mountain bike. E da qui è con i super esperti che non vedono sul live stream, ma da naturalmente c'è famiglia. E questo, questo dovrà essere altri trails. Tu e io dovrai essere altri trails con i professionali. Che fa per te? Mi c'è per te in via un trail? Tu hai perso... La cosa è che discutere tutto il lavoro mezzo di però io credo che la base dai due prospettive, so una è la prospettiva della persona sul, sul velo, quella è semplicemente avere un buon tempo, essere alla fine del trail e avere gusto, essere stata in il flow, avere uh, una buona esperienza e qua include naturalmente uh, Sport, stadi fisic, stadi psichic, um, forza è il, il giusto livello di difficoltà, tutto qua là, ma è ci di sicuro. Um, e da c'è la parte, però, è la prospettiva di una destinazione, also in, in una senda, un trail, di essere sostenibile anche la manutenzione. Questo ci, ci capite più che ogni dollaro culisse, ma è in generale se so valutesse un po' l'impegno dei comuni, quanto il lavoro ci va in questi trails, in queste sende, per uh, dons di d'agua, per dons di natura, ci crede un bosch. Um, e un trail può essere differente ma anche sostenibile, tutto il nostro che le si fabbrica. E qua è dal nostro punto di vista, che sviluppare le sende e le rides, le rides delle sende, è il più decisivo. più decisivo. Quello che ho detto è che in trail può semplicemente tutta la regione planificare, fabbricare, quindi non tirare con il strutto, trovare un enorme bel lavoro. Come planificare in trail? Cosa hai costruito per fare in trail? Come hai fatto in quel tipo di processo? Questo è un processo molto vasto e la costruzione o il la lavoro sulla senda è un sulla montagna, qua è il nome del tempo, veramente una piccola parte, una grande parte capita avanti. E da 
Avant, es propi tot la discussion di una destinazione, che vuoi una destinazione veramente? Vuole gli auti va col vela, vuole gli auti va col bike, c'è tips, dunque c'è offerta dover per qua. E anche l'offerta è che va nel servizio, ma è l'infrastruttura, also il trails. E loro decide che tipologia ci viene fatta. E loro va a cercare potenziale anche il terreno, e il potenziale dipende dalla topografia, del tipo di terreno, che qui ho il sportrezzo che non è in Amarguns e non è in Zurlgot, in Pingins Bösch, non è in un terreno um, alpino, ma non è in un pasto, che è un'altra morfologia di terreno che più in su va in un po' più crappa, cioè un terreno minerale. E loro hanno questi piani generali, so, c'è una tipologia, c'è una tipologia per loro in giù. E loro escono naturalmente di un processo di partecipazione enorme, perché o se vedete una giusta, la Camera piglia avanti due spedunzi con ciauns, noi ci sono di un spazio in giù ci danno molto altri interessi, um, agricoltura, alps, ciaccia, forestale, bots di protezione e naturalmente turismo. Noi sono i umani, ci sono di un spazio, ci hanno altre funzioni. E più da qua, come in se loro una planificazione ci si può forse mettere avanti, ci dice proprio l'inges, se non una carta, in giù ci va per permis e in giù ci va l'ora per una specificazione del trail. Allora, posso mettere avanti, mi dice trail, se allegra planificare un trail, ci clappa quel con una specificazione, che vuol dire che c'è la sua faccia, c'è la larghezza, poi il radio. Um, Do questa roba tecnica, questi sono sur, questi sono sur 35 criteri che specificano e per con quale valore parte la planificazione legale e per che quella è stras e desfinanziata per loro è la costruzione. Il processo avanti la costruzione è blare più vasto. Allora qua le robe che non vengono in notte, giusto i flow trails che sono costruiti um, in giù in odern avanti, trails, qua era un processo di plus oms, e il tema di costruzione sono perenni per mettere qua in connexione del tema. Allora, è un enorme processo, mm -hmm. chi ha il lunge, a lui va col bagliare, costruire il trail, entrare su entro lui, mantenere mm -hmm. questi trail, in quell'altezza che ho con un viarns, mm -hmm. con, con la crappa, con la tiara che è in movimento, più e più fece, mm -hmm. con, con la midata mm -hmm. del clima, e poi, poi è finito con il trail del bagliare. Preciso. Allora, là, l'elemento centrale è che um, i scocci mantengono una senda con l'acqua. L'impatto principale uh, è forse per un giorno e 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 un è l'acqua. Questa pluvia, ma è l'acqua che c'è anche il terreno, che svanisce l'acqua su una costa, naif c'è anche la prima vaira, e questo naturalmente è un impenso enorme, e un certo percentuale che non possiamo fare più sostenibile, una senda, questo moltiplica naturalmente il avvenir, il squast e il stem di manutenzione che c'è in comune ad oggi. A forza è un tic adversari, magari gestire gli trails naturali, lo che si va a fare, con la discrepanza in tic, velo, questo che va a viaggiare. Mm -hmm. Dati che ho mica ton difficoltà, che si vengono per l'altro. Sì, abs assolutamente, appunto, ho detto, non arriviamo qui anche di un spazio, su un sender, su un trail, ci sono già occupati. E di già anche il tempo libero, su quel ci va una pe. Quelli sono i primi, quelli sono qui a 80 anni. Però a 80 anni, o non a 80 anni, o se vuoi, vengono quelli da combattere contro gli stessi. Le sende erano qui per ir a Mund, per ir ad Alp. Io se niente tanto niente da là, gli altri ci hanno il tempo libero, il spazio. Quando era, quando era, quando era, era, era controverso. E gli stessi erano con il velo, e dopo con l'e-bike, e io sono con i trail runners, non vengono con un mounto di un po' di tempo il tema del nuovo e del mio domani. E qua non è di dire che i conflitti non no sono qui, però non vanno per fortuna in grigione, e là poi danno i propri blaghi con, uh, con Superbia, vanno in una buona 
maun cun ir in tuarn, cioè quels ci vanno col velo e quels ci vanno a pè, rivan bain spera via. Quel cum mainza sul nivo che tu già dit, son della planificazione, o in giù des capiter velo, in giù des capiter, in giù des des ir a pè. Qui in Engiadina, vezza anni, ho se giusto la vart, ci des la vart intensiva da bike, da c'è la vart dalla val, su vers motos mural, l'anno da in giù una stura da bike, in un esco mandato, tu può agir, ma l'offerta è su scea mai attrattiva che da questa vart, ci dà automatico che una, un, ci arriva ben spera via, e il spazio in Engiadina, che il resto del grigione, è su scea vasta, also la soluzione tecnica, sono assoluti fatti. Ma è forse solo una scia, è forse più acceptato da quella vara del Corvia, sai, sì. c'è una massa di bikers, c'è un mondo con il mio bike, molto smurai, mm. ma è forse un po' più in alto, ma è forse un po' più in alto, che è un po' più in alto, che è più in alto, che è Precisa. Plus, tia esperienza con il velo, di molto smurai, quella è una catastrofe. Noi per vita la senda non è buona, però tu non ti accetti che non è una bain, che tu hai l'impressione che sono un disturbo a tutte le famiglie che sono inviate qui a Colcerin e a Vincul Vello, altro tu non arrivi a una buona buona esperienza per te. E ti dice l'acceptanza è fai buona. Ci sono vite nel Giardino, nel Grigiuno. Però qua non è capitato per coincidenza. Also il Grigiuno fa da spi bler, bler, sons. E si fa attivo perché quella convivenza resta e pagaiva. Però là è il centum Grigiuno il arch delle Alps sur il pionier. Also c'è buona Pasqua in Grigion, non c'è tutto in Blersle e le Alps. Also non sto il gran toc, sur il confin, um, però è in, in Atersle e in Svizzera, in giù c'è uh, il conflitto che vive e naturalmente c'è più. E tu ti dati un potenziale, ne hai un gran potenziale per trovare i trails da bike e il Grigion? Ci damo, ma sì, 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 sì. In Pustut, also, il Grigione è la um, situazione in cui c'è, in un esos qui ha il bisogno di costruire una nuova raid, o nuova, sono un dos mille chilometri di senda in, in Grigione, quasi, quasi enorme. Quelle sono bot tutte, er permesse sul velo, na tutte sono adattate, ma non può dare in forza fare un pass il uh, mettere insieme le sende il right corretta e non va in um, forza son regione in regione ci ha un occupa un po' più bot col bike sco, sia qua in Giudina alta e bassa o erlai tavo clostra flem e da altri se lo si un po' più tardi però ci sono seri in movimento non si dice che in gesto è un po' tardi nella casa di quella antica tematica trails trails da in gara a Dario situazione della corsa grazie Fitch yeah. at the moment looks still the same this is uh, the women's leader at the moment the overall leader is Vera Loza Kimla Court on the other side on the left hand side the leaders at the men's race this is the team William Pirelli at the moment it looks like Daniel Geismeider is struggling a bit on this um, uphill. It's really, really steep, as I told you before. It looks flat, but uh, it's uh, really, really steep. The women are on, on this uphill. Now they're into, heading into the downhill. With us is, uh, is uh, Darko Katzin, founder of uh, and owner of uh, Allegra Tourism. Uh, You're the one who told the destinations how to uh, yeah how to plan a, a, a proper mountain bike destination. So we're some kind of a mountain bike paradise. We've been in uh, Lenzerheide in the bike kingdom. Now we're in St. Moritz, and then we are going over to uh, the Fos Klosters. Three totally different destinations, and you're one of those guys who know how to handle mountain bike uh, tourism at its best. It's not easy, even in this mountain bike paradise. Um, it's not easy and it's especially not fast. It's not a quick win. Yeah. Um, it's not about ideas only, and it's not only about building trails. It's uh, mainly about 
um, getting everybody on board because we practice our sport in a space that is already occupied by agriculture, by forestry, by hikers. And so we have to be very patient and sensitive and tenacious when we want to develop mountain bike offers like here. Yeah. So the trace is one thing, but the thing around, even with hotels and uh, mm. and everything, that that's the other question. But people from the outside see that's that's the background. Mm. Mm. If you want to create a new trail, as we've seen before, mm. so they, that takes a lot of time. Mm. Uh, we know Switzerland pretty good, so everything, a lot of uh, discussions, uh, a lot of permissions, a lot of landowners, uh, so and everything. So tell me, how long does it take till? Uh, a flow trail like uh, the Marmotta trail we've seen before mm. exists <laughs> and is ready to ride uh, from the, the idea on yes <laughs> <laughs> so the Marmotta trail is um, has been built this is now the second full out year that it's been in operation it's the third year that we can ride it uh, construction time if I remember correctly was only between maybe six weeks or so or six six and eight weeks but from the idea, I mean, the idea originate, <laughs> originated <laughs> more than 10 years ago. Yeah. And then when you go into planning, detailed planning, concepts, permitting process, those are multiple years. Yeah. Um, maybe from the planning where the Marmotta Trail was actually a concrete line on a map to the permission and construction was maybe about two years. So that's about it takes. So most but that's a that was a fast lane in that case. Exactly. So, yeah. that's, that's rather fast. But the basic idea and concept of developing this side of the mountain around Corvillia, it's been more than 10 years. How important is uh, mountain biking for tourism? So it, it's a real big thing, especially not, oh, no, not only in, uh, in, in Graubünden. It's uh, risen immensely here. Um, in the Engadin Valley and also in Graubünden, um, I mean, everybody can see and sense it now. This morning <laughs> I rode from my uh, home village Pontresina here to St. Moritz. It's about a 20 minute ride. I passed Lake Staats and it was full of biking people. Early in the morning, around nine in the morning. Yes, all ages, all skill levels. So we're talking, you know, elderly people. We're talking families, everybody with a smile on their face. And this is just a reality that wasn't here 10 years ago. Yeah. It was, uh, we already had biking 10 years ago because we were already developing, but not in this dimension. And 20 years ago, it was still, you know, asking for permit. Can, can we still, you know, making sure you were allowed, accepted, good, which was already great, yeah. but no comparison to what's going on today. So it's still rising at the moment? the whole mountain bike thing. We're in a real good part of uh, Switzerland. So Graubünden, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best. Yeah, yeah prob the best. Not only uh, b because we have the, the best trails and the best nature and everything, we're allowed to ride on 90.9% uh, .9 of all the hiking trails exactly. as well. So that makes it even special, mm. this, this part of Graubünden, mm. that it's that interesting. Mm. Indeed, that's a huge part that's not visible and doesn't have to be tangible for whoever's riding. Yeah. Um, but Graubünden has a huge setup or a great setup behind the scenes. So a lot of institutions um, from municipalities, from the canton of Graubünden, so the official entities that are really behind the scenes taking care of all the processes, uh, the legal sides of mountain biking. And that's why we can enjoy so many great trails, yeah. um, sorrow free and just, you know, enjoy our flow as mountain bikers. Yeah. And we see yesterday one of the government just posted a picture that he was riding around <laughs> around Larks. So uh, <laughs> we're, everybody's grown with mountain yes. biking in that, spa, yes. that part of, of uh, Graubünden and uh, yeah. Look at the scenery here. <laughs> it can't be better, yes. even if the trail. Thank you very much, uh, Darko Katzin, owner and founder of uh, Legra Tourism. Uh, they are planning mountain bike uh, trails, resorts, institution ideas all around the world, actually. Not, not only in this part of Graubünden. Uh, that's right. Our, our home base is in Graubünden, but um, we have a lot of work in 
in Austria, in, in Italy, but Allegra also exists in Japan. Japan is starting, yes. which is very interesting. And uh, Allegra is very active in the Nordics, so in, yeah. in, in Finland. Um, mostly those are our hotspots. And uh, more and more also in urban areas. So it's growing to all sides and we're very happy and very glad and thankful we can be a part of this very positive movement. It's a real positive movement. It keeps you young. It keeps the child. Yeah, in you, yeah. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you very much. Allegra means uh, hello, by the way. If you're up here or... Exactly. Allegra, Allegra is, our, um, is our greeting here, but translated figuratively means like cheer up, be happy. So it's okay. an invitation to cheer up. And it's also a good idea to say Allegra on the trail because it means cheer up, it's very friendly, and also um, people get to feel you're local. So say Allegra when you're on the trails okay. in Graubünden. So pronounce it right, <laughs> Allegra, not Allegra. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. So we're back with the men's field, with the men's leading group. It's still uh, Vilja Pirelli. Yeah. They're going really fast in this um, flow trail, as we talked before, together with Darko Cattini. Takes a, Cattini takes a long way till a trail like this is ready to ride, and they're riding it with a lot of pleasure, as I can see. Stefan! Hello, Grezzi! Hello! Yeah, exactly! <laughs> That's, that's a part of Allegra as well. Ayuchze once again, right in the middle of this uh, of this trail. Yeah, today is a real good stage for you. Just the best. These guys is so much fun. <laughs> you can trust all their lines. They know what they are, what they're doing. Just follow and have fun. Yeah. I never saw. Daniel Geismayer whipping that much over every jump. He's uh, doing a whip or he's having good fun. Yeah, you must have fun. You must enjoy the downs. Yeah. So there's uh, this down and there's one more climb coming till uh, the last of these four, four flow trails of today's stage. Uh, yeah, we think about... Uh, about 20 minutes ago, or even a bit more. Did you know something about the gaps? No. So the, the chasers, how no, far behind are they? I think not that we 40 seconds. I don't like 200 meters behind these two. So about, it's a steep. So we're getting dizzy here watching uh, your video, but, it, but it's uh, so nice. Uh, so we ride into a rider's perspective and uh, I want to ride. Ah. <laughs> Not only sitting around here behind uh, the screen. At, at least you're on the, your helmet camera at the moment, otherwise I can see the handlebar. That makes it even worse. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to get some <laughs> new perspective. Yeah. Yeah, a, a long, long flow trail as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, we can see the yellow point. This is uh, Stefan Sam's bike. They're uh, coming down. Two and then uh, one more time the climb up, and then uh, yeah, it's done. They're coming home for today. Home is the start finish in uh, Sankt Moritz. Look at this trail. This Look is at just, this. Just the best. <laughs> so nice, so nice, and you can see how much they're enjoying uh, this ride. So probably they go up another take it. one more time after Maybe the race. Take a second it's look. So nice. Take the Covilia one and just go up again. <laughs> why not? Yes, why not? I'm ready for that. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's have a quick look on on the timing, because uh, these are the leaders of the men, Villier Pirelli. 
On second place, it's uh, at the moment Canyon North Wave. They overtook Torpado Factory, which went in uh, attack mode on this uh, last uphill, but had to pay the price at the top. At the uh, men's competition, it said women's competition, it's at the moment that the overall leaders, Vera Loser and Kim Lecourt, are in the lead over uh, Bettina Janas and Adelheid Morat from uh, Davos Kloster. Third place, it's uh, Katasina Sosna and uh, Irina Lützelschwab. Irina Lützelschwab, the new Swiss marathon mountain bike champion, crowned last Saturday at the Eiger Bike Challenge. Definitely not happy about the result yesterday. So uh, she was in a bad mood when she came home, but um, this morning, she was on the start line, looked a bit better, felt relaxed, and now they're still on third place at today's stage around St. Moritz. It's a round stage. Tomorrow is uh, the next stage from St. Moritz to Tavos. Then Tavos, Tavos, a round course in Tavos, and then on the last day on Saturday, one more time. So we're going back to Andreas. Yeah, in the same case, the group is on the test of the Wachten Yasta, the Donas. The Doman Cinque Olympia Flow Trail de Corvia, Giusul Vicida, Son Murezzi in Propi. I in the in Vech Trail. And so now, this group can talk to you. Also, the Olympia Flow Trail de Corvia. Well, a proper maritau or non flow trail. Sì. Qua è esce, qua la marità, è svezia, è un po' questo nostro corridor professionale, ci vanno in tour del mondo. Quelli sono i mezzi la corsa, ma ci sono anche il secondo corridor di svezia. Quando si inizia, c'è quel fase che si svela e fa qualche di un whip, quindi c'è un po' di sale, c'è un po' di sale, non ho niente di fare con la corsa, ma c'è l'impressione che c'è i mezzi la corsa, qui si clama, si è... Lo found in sai, also ist wenn sie bald da wart, kriegt der Vater das gut nicht durch, so sind sie so nicht mehr so eine Quarz, sondern ein Ugus, in der Schee war ja ein Ublärz, sie ist war der Quiz Flow Trail. Ist er immer simpler meint, automatischer meint, in Quiz Flow, in einem Stadi, in dem sie nur Studien plünüllen, in dem sie sich pläne meint, präsent, ein den Körp edorme, ist lasche simpler meint hier. Qui c'è era per noi per Allegra, era per la regione, per il Grigione, per le Alps, qui c'è era il primo flow trail che noi abbiamo realizzato, qui c'è era la prima sende di questo tipo che noi abbiamo realizzato, e qui c'è era un po' controverso, oggi più, però c'è invece era il stadio della sende, quello è il sur di Jean Sveglia e la fama di un'unica gusto, qui c'è una bellezza di vezze. In flow trail tecnica, ma in bo... Fit pretensions and Tony Stoy fit concentral the song talk at him. And also news here, Sarah, we news you don't quite trail a dial sentiment. You've been on some bull of fin. Well, in trail ca equa character nijina fin. Precise. Albert, Albert, sul sul mountain bike, non is your the river plus jvelt the punct A a punct B. Dim per se des propi. The trail is a bit, so you can see a bit of Taoism or Buddhism. The sand is a bit of a bit. We have a chance to finish as far as possible. It's very long, and you can see the level. It's very accessible to the people, but not in a little bit. Here's a little bit of a little bit. The trail is a little bit of a little bit. It's 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 a little bit of a little bit. Vaira Grief. Also, as you see in the Viadi, these are our professionals, these are people who are without a pass, but the Riola is without a pass, so it's not without a pass. So, this is just an activity physical. And this is an integral ghost. This is a good one in the flow trail, and this is a good one in the trail natural, with crappers. Dario is a bit of a good one, who is a good one with crappers, and this is a bit of a good one, and this is a good one in the flow trail. This is a ghost. Yeah, for everybody, there's something ready up here, and everybody needs his own. Maybe you need to get a flow trail, but yeah. 
Vier habe ich dann lieber, wenn es einfach mhm. gemacht ja. das für, Und das macht eben gleich aber wieder zwischen denen auch Spass, wenn man einen Flow trail Ski, ja, Kreier, das ist die Diversität des mhm. Mountainbikes. Also Mountainbike ist sehr wasch. Es ist eine leere Interpretation. Und dort fa Part des Mountainbikes. Das ist eine Belletze. Es ist schwer, dass Trails in Jutsch, als Korridors waren, und es ist nicht so ein Stress. Um, e per mich gust, in Chun tendesche più vers flow trails, in Chun più vers trails per techniques, in Chun cerche er più l'exercizi fisic. Um, Questo un gust e minche persone non es nerne minche di li stessa. Also ja, wie de mai personal manche, jan nem. Minche dann nei plü vöglia de ir tote di flow trails e atres dietz nei plü vöglia de dir de quia fin ora te va e si va a mo fare un pass che rif io fino a tu sei, ma se con me dici un po'. Also, a me mi piace l'offerta vasta che non va in grigio. Cos'è? Exterio, vus con vostra firma allegra, se si è buon mo involvai in Svizzera il grigio, se si è mai sus con fins, col quel leuda, col del strails leu, sai in scusa ia da di, di l'Italia, niente. Vus si è già buon scizzone in a ich weiß in der Kollaboration ist es cool, Japan, also ah, Lunch, 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 um, Scotchi des, ein Tilester, also si nos vas in Grand Tok. In Austria nos poim blüder che al mountainbike per se è scumandà. Al mountainbike per se è scumandà in Austria. Dunque si sviluppa in un ambient in giù che qui sport che non vezza in osse è scumandà. In Grigioni si o vice versa. Ed è permesso da per tot pilantora in singles punkt in giù che l'es Forza Pitchen Strata sind schon zuletzt gekommen da. Also, das ist komplett anders. In Japan ist es schon nicht mehr. Das ist eine ferme Koalition mit Grigion. Das erste Projekt in Japan, der in Nord, auf der Insel Nord, in Hokkaido, in einem Lötchen namens Niseko. Und Niseko ist eine Lötchen der Gemelagi, also eine Schwesterstadt der Samurai. Also, das ist eine Nikuia. Und wie ist das Flow-Trail, das du weißt, wie ist das? Und ich dachte, oh, das ist alles, was du willst näher. Und das ist nie eine Kollaboration zwischen Niseko und Allegra. Und jetzt ist das Allegra in Japan. Was ist das Kollaboration mit anderen Nationen, mit anderen Jahren? Es ist ja jetzt nicht der Austria, wo ich komme, aber es ist ein bisschen kompliziert. Es ist ein bisschen Prozess, es ist ein bisschen mehr. Also... Al principi è una è una impressione che non ha per lui è una più simpel. Al giusto ci sono dei sia Italia, Austria, Svizzera. Al Svizzers ha una dunque l'impressione in Italia è tot più simpel dell'amministrazione del permesso. Al Italians ha una impressione in Austria al turismo più grande pais. E gli austriaci ci sono gli svizzeri che dicono che questi sono tutti i ricordi e non vanno in giù in altre montagne. Quindi, è una cosa che si tratta di un'altra. La base non è una differenza. Per esempio, naturalmente c'è la burocrazia in Austria, che è più grande che per noi in Svizzera. Quindi, quando si dice che forse non è così consciente. E il lavoro in Lesco in Giappone è semplicemente bello per ci dare un'altra cultura. Qua è chat buono, no? È chat qua è super. Noi siamo in questo vis epic. Anciet è la regione da Lai, Lai Bike Kingdom, che ho avuto dei conoscenti per vedere la Coppa Mondiale, la scorsa della Coppa Mondiale da mountain bike. Sono in Murezzi, sono in la seconda destinazione, da me è un vailo direzione, da Vau, Claustra, quella Strais, Dati parallele dentro quelle tre destinazioni, dati cause che sono completamente differenti? Le parallele sono su una andata di volo scolisse, che vuol dire che le destinazioni con lavoro non sono a livello cantonale e sviluppano il blare lavoro di base insieme, quindi quelle lavorano fermi, fermi insieme. Um, e c'è la parallela e sur la qualità dei servizi, also dei bike hotels, dei guides, 
de shops que sont en train de se développer ensemble. Il faut bien naturellement au service du trafic public qui collie à ces régions. Et là, il y a des différences. Le Bike Kingdom est sur Alay et de Rosa est le mountain bike, l'élément central du tourisme de l'État. Qui qui est en Gedinata, non est ici, en Gedinata est plus vaste. Qui va y plus pour autres sports, pour sports de montagne, pour sports sur l'Aua, il va de plus être pour art et culture. Qui est ici, qui est ici, qui une bonne destination de mountain bike. In giù c'è il mountain bike, noi ho però la rola centrale, o la singola rola centrale. E loro te vanno a cluster, vanno a dire ciò la situazione, in giù c'è una raid di sendes enorme, vasta, per uh, tutte le accessibili, e con gli implants, con gli uh, implants di schi, con gli implants di trasporto delle zone di schi, enorme, vasta, valle delle svarze, e per un certo segmento di sura, e da ciò meglio di scuola in ingegneria. Dina o la Lenzer Heide. E loro vengono però, tu puoi scolire tutto, col traffico pubblico o sul velo. Alzo i da son differenze entre le esperienze, ma sono tutte strais fenomenali. Il sport da mountain bike, quel trails, immens important per il turismo grigio. Sì. Il trail è l'elemento centrale per ci portare l'esperienza del bike. Dario, wie sieht jetzt aus im Rennen? Zuerst einmal Grazel Fitsch, danke vielmals, hey zwei. Thank you very much. Grazel Fitsch means uh, thank you in uh, Romanisch. R right. In Grazel Fitsch. In Grazel Fitsch, exactly. So, we're going back uh, to Neil with the latest insight about timing uh, in this uh, stage around St. Moritz. Back to you, Neil. Uh, thanks, Dario, and thanks for those great insights. And uh, just uh, right now we're with the, the uh, team Infinity uh, in Insure team. That's Vera Lawser and uh, Kim Lacourte. Lawser leading down the uh, spectacular trails around the uh, San Moritz area in the Graubünden region. And just a time check at the 30 kilometer mark. They have already passed the 30k mark. And the uh, leading team in their orange leaders jerseys had a one minute and 20 second advantage over their rivals. And in the men's, at the 44 kilometer service station at the Chantarella station at 44 kilometers, Willia Pirelli are charging in the lead. And the race dynamics have changed considerably since we started at eight o'clock this morning in St. Moritz. And right now, Willia Pirelli are on the charge and at that service station, Canyon Northwave. Stozek and Schutzmann, they had mechanical issues. They elected to change the entire wheel. They had tire issues, and they are now one minute and 17 seconds. At one point, it looked like Canyon Northwave were going to catch them. <coughs> they had Torpado with them, but uh, they have now elected to break free from the Italian and the Swiss team and chase down their biggest threat on overall general classification. Daniel Gersmeyer, the Austrian national champion, riding with the European marathon champion, Bout Allemann. They know this is their chance. They haven't uh, been absolutely on the pace, although they've been pretty much there and thereabouts all week. They have uh, now got a big chance to put uh, some time back into their rivals. At the start of the day, Willia Pirelli, Daniel Gersmeyer and Wout Allemann had a seven minute and 52 deficit to the uh, Canyon Northwave team. So Martin Storzek and, and Mark Stutzmann still have a comfortable lead, a comfortable margin, even if the race were to finish right now. Still quite a bit to go. It's 58 kilometers is the total distance of the stage, 2,100 meters of climbing, but they have passed the highest point in the race, and that is at 2,543 meters. We saw the riders reveling in the Olympia flow trail. We saw Daniel Gesmeyer, a great view of him from the onboard camera with the Bulls Media e-bike. Stefan Sam following Daniel Gesmeyer and Wout Allemann down the trail, making the most of it right now. They have already passed the 44 kilometer mark and well on their way to really the final, you could say, peak. It's a very much of a plateau, kind of steady, undulating climb. And 
as soon as they summit that section, that last section, around about the 50 kilometer mark, 49, 50 kilometer mark, then they'll be descending once again on the final flow trail of the day. That's the for Petus flow trail before they hit a short section of tar and plateau all the way to the finish, around about uh, five or so, four or five kilometers into the finish, into St. Moritz again. And the advantage of uh, one minute, over one minute over their rivals and Canyon Northwave are absolutely on the charge. They're chasing, and at one point we thought that uh, the Topado factory team would have a chance at a stage. The Topado have had some bad luck throughout stage one and stage two, electing to just to ride conservatively and live to fight another day. Unfortunately for them, there are two races in one. It's not just the overall, it's not just the stage win that, uh, that is up for grabs, but it's also the overall general classification. And uh, for riders like uh, Casey South and Dorigoni, they will be going all in for today's stage. But of course, they have to defer to the overall general classification. And the big teams are on maximum speed at the moment. We saw them earlier riding a little bit more conservatively, kind of marking each other and watching each other. Because if you're racing for all overall general classification, you'll be looking at measuring your efforts over the full five days of racing full five stages of racing and making sure that no one none of the riders none of the riders aiming for general classification will be aiming to go into the red whereas if you're just aiming for uh, purely a stage win it will be all in for that stage so casey south and jacob dorigoni are losing out a bit because at the moment instead of measuring their efforts and being conservative the uh, Willie Pirelli team are going all in as if it was a stage win, but it's really just to get as much advantage over their rivals, Martin Stozek and Mark Stutzman. They only have over just over a minute, whereas they need to make back seven minutes, well over seven minutes on overall general classification, but they'll take what they can get. They know that every advantage they can get is an advantage that uh, may count later on, because of course the race is only over when they reach Davos on stage five on Saturday, the grand finale. Tomorrow is the penultimate stage, and uh, that will certainly be a decisive day. And uh, the grand finale looks like it could go down to the wire. Exciting racing, and we have these riders to thank for bringing the racing to the crowds, to the fans. Gesmeyer and Allemann not disappointing the fans, making sure that it stays exciting right the way up until the end of the stage at the 58 kilometer mark. After 2,100 meters of climbing, we'll know exactly what that gap is. Can Canyon Northwave close that gap? That is the big question. And can Torpado still hang on for a coveted spot on the podium on today's stage? They've come good today. They've had bad luck over the last two days. They had tire issues on day one, mechanical on day two, and we expect to see great things from them throughout the week. They are out of contention. Almost an hour back on general classification is uh, Team Topado Factory, but they've still got two days to go to put their name in lights after today. So today they've done very well to hold on to that advantage and uh, hopefully if they can keep their luck going as it is today, they can enjoy the latter half of the 2023 edition of the race. And right now, we are on board with Kyan Olshov and No Warren. No Warren is the youngest competitor at the Spa Swiss Epic. He was the youngest competitor at the Absa Cape Epic in 2023, earlier on this year in uh, uh, March, in the Western Cape and Cape Town. He's certainly traveling a lot, and the camera belongs to the bike of Kyan Olshov, who's kind of been a bit of a mentor for, uh, for No Warren. You can see No Warren up ahead. Just a bit beyond there, just going into the trails now, wearing his USA Cycling Athlete Development Pathway mountain bike jersey. And the uh, great to see this is the future of the sport. At one point in the stage, we saw the uh, USA Cycling Athlete Development Pathway team passing through the time check, around about the 10th position. And in fact, they were ahead of the, uh, of the team of Buff Megamo, which uh, means that they're having a great day out as we are back with the women's category leaders and certainly the dom dominant team on the uh, on the stage and of course all week as is shown by those yellow those orange chievita leaders jerseys kim lacourt once again leading on the climb setting the rhythm and not leaving any daylight between her and her partner vera lorza riding in sync they said yesterday that they don't like to leave any time between them they never leave each other behind 
And that uh, in sync riding has uh, kept the morale up. And uh, even in the darkest moments that they may be feeling, they may be dominant, but they certainly go through their own struggles. Vera Loza, Kim Lacourt riding in sync and have around about a 1 minute 30 advantage over their rivals of uh, Davos Klosters. The team you see on the left there is a, a men's team. It's not Bettina Yanis and uh, Adal Marath. Adal Marath is uh, some way back, 1 minute and 30 back. At the last time check, we saw it at 120, but we have word on the course that the gap has grown a little bit after that 30 kilometer mark. They are heading up to the highest point in the race. Still a bit to go before they get to Lyalf. And uh, they are currently climbing up towards Lamp, uh, Alp Muntach. And they'll be enjoying, very soon we'll be able to see images of them enjoying the flow trails that uh, we saw the men's category, even in the fierce racing spurt, uh, racing for a stage win and overall general classification. We saw Daniel Gessmeyer doing some tail whips on the Olympia flow trail and monitored closely, watched closely with his onboard camera, Stefan Sam on the Bulls Media e-bikes, bringing us the pictures and the action from the day, as is who we have here, Thomas Ditch, who is following the women's category leaders on the Bulls Media e-bike, giving us uh, some insights as to what's really what it's like. He can hear, he can, uh, he can see exactly what's going on, and being a former racer at the very, very highest level, he knows all about the nuances about competition and he'll be able to look for any of the signs of weakness. He'll look for uh, any, any signs that, uh, that he can relay back to us about uh, what's, what's really going down in the thick of the action. A unique opportunity to get into the, uh, to really get under the, under the skin of the sport. I'll just look back at that time check when uh, at the 30 kilometer mark, Lawza and Lacourt had a 1 minute 20 advantage over their rivals and a 5 minute 22 advantage over to, over the uh, Topata Bulls team. And Cannondale Vas Arabe having another good day. Uh, always seem to be coming good towards the end of their uh, stage race campaign. 9 minutes 18, so it might be a little bit out of contention for that podium time. But uh, the momentum it looks like it's swinging in their favor as we come closer and closer to the grand finale in Davos. Right now, back to Stefan Sam, going through the flow trails, following the, Daniel, the team of Daniel Gesmeyer and Vote Alleman. He is, uh, Vo Alleman is leading at the moment in the European Championships jersey. Daniel Gesmeyer, the Austrian champion. Now, just having a look at the body language of Daniel Gesmeyer, although it's hard to judge the, the speed, it certainly looks like they are on the charge. They have all to play for. They are not taking any time for themselves to enjoy the trail. It looks like they are full gas. And uh, they didn't see any tail whips from uh, Daniel Gesmeyer at the moment. They know how close they are to the stage. They are within, uh, probably within 10 kilometers of the, of the stage. They know they have an advantage. They won't have exactly the time check. They know that it could be almost a minute. They'll definitely be glancing back when the uh, terrain opens up a bit just to see what kind of an advantage they do have over the chasers. They'll know that uh, they need to make the most of whatever gap they have over the Canyon Northwave team. The Canyon Northwave team seem to have been dominant on the climbs. So their firepower is, uh, is certainly superior this week, but uh, if there's any chance they can get over their rivals, the uh, Willia Pirelli team will take it. Stefan Sam very kindly uh, cleaning the lens for us so we can get the uh, world-class views of the best mountain bikers on the planet navigating these trails. We did look at the time check and with five kilometers to go, we have seen no sign whatsoever of Buff Megamo, the Bulls, Team Larks, who are lying third, fourth and fifth overall. 
Team Tapado still seem in contention for a stage, some stage time, some podium time for today's stage. That's the, the stage three. We're in stage three of the 58 kilometer stage. And right now we are witnessing the world's best descending on the Fabetus flow trail. And as soon as they reach the bottom of this trail, we'll be able to see them uh, heading along the district road, along the dirt district road into St. Moritz and the second host town of the Spa Swiss Epic of the host towns, the second host town, the first host town, we f started in Lenzerheide on Tuesday. That was stage one, a loop course around Lenzerheide, and then a transition day on stage two from Lenzerheide to St. Moritz. We've spent a day in St. Moritz exploring the trails. There were 400 kilometers, estimated 400 kilometers of beautiful mountain biking trails around the St. Moritz area, the town of St. Moritz and the course designer Stefan has certainly picked the very finest of them. It was a bit of a route change as we uh, got into the, uh, as we started the day, we heard yesterday that there was um, some r weather risks of landslides and the course designers, of course, they're in close contact with the weather reports and the authorities. Risk of landslides, some weather, some weather issues, and of course it is safety first. The organizers are, uh, they realize among, is certainly the first to realize and uh, we all acknowledge that uh, mountain biking stage race mountain biking takes us to some very remote areas and that's really part of the appeal of it is that we get to access by bicycle some of the most spectacular trails but of course with that they come risk and safety first as we said that's uh, the priority while still balancing the rider experience and certainly in terms of rider experience we've been able to experience thanks to Stefan Sam the world's best as they tear into the finish they we don't yet have an exact time gap at the five kilometers to go mark but we will very soon when we hit the finish we'll be looking back at that clock just to see what kind of an advantage that Willie Pirelli have over Canyon Northwave the urgency of the chase definitely seems to have come off Canyon Northwave they were within touching distance of the front uh, possibly 20 25 seconds or so but with the uh, the way that Daniel Gesmeyer and Wout Allemann were descending. Uh, perhaps they were taking a few risks knowing that this was their chance to take advantage, but uh, at that 49 kilometer mark, uh, which was uh, around about 8 k's to go still, Daniel Gesmeyer and Wout Allemann had a 1 minute and 30 advantage over Canyon Northwave. Topado Factory still in third spot, just under 2 minutes back, and fourth, not yet passing through that section, our Cannondale Vass Abre several minutes down. So Topato Factory look good for some podium time today, making good on their disappointing days one and two. But uh, the race within a race is, uh, of course, the stage. But uh, importantly and most importantly is the overall general classification. And Canyon North have look in control of that, but they will have to concede just around about a minute and a half to uh, the fast charging Daniel Gesmeyer and Wout Allemann. Back with the American team, the youngest rider in the race, and it is Noah Warren absolutely reveling in these trails, gaining the experience necessary to ride. Um, certainly we'll see him in a couple of years riding at the very front of the field. We saw them pass through one of the time checks in 10th spot or 9th spot, I think it was, which means that they certainly have the firepower, the capabilities of riding with the world's best. They were in fact in front of the Buff Megamo team, Noah Warren and Kain Olshov all the way from the USA riding for the uh, Development Academy and uh, of course a very good glimpse of what the future of mountain biking holds for us. And back with the leading team on the stage. This is the very sharp end of the field. The first team to pass through the time checks in the latter half of the race have just under a minute and a half advantage at the last time check over Canyon Northwave. This is Team Willier Pirelli, the Italian outfit with an Austrian and a Belgian riding full gas towards the finish. The Austrian Daniel Gesmeyer, a multiple winner of the Spa Swiss Epic. In fact, in the women's in the men's category, he has won this race uh, twice in 2022. He's actually the current title holder and also winning in 2017, riding with Jochen Kess. And we are back with the women's category. Vera Lorza is led by Kim Lacourt. Kim Lacourt setting the pace. She loves the climbs. 
She's comfortable with altitude, even though she was racing on the road at sea level, more or less, um, sh on Sunday. She has adapted well and a consummate professional in her sport, specializing in mountain bike stage racing. She is followed by Vera Lawser, and close by is the Bulls Media e-bike of Thomas Ditch. We should be able to b cross to those pictures quite soon with Thomas getting an inside view as to what it's like down on the trail. It's a steep section this. The riders will be putting in maximum effort, just gaining just incremental advantage over their uh, rivals. We saw earlier Adele Morath and uh, her partner Bettina Yanis. Adele Morath, a bit of a gap there, but we could say that she was uh, trying to set the pace, but putting her partner Bettina Yanis under a bit of pressure, and uh, that hasn't, uh, hasn't fared well for the team. They are losing time. But compared to stage one, where they lost over 10 minutes, today's time loss, at the time check, we're looking at around about 1 minute 20 that Bettini Giannis and Dal Marath lost. And uh, still a long way to go. Still at least uh, 15 kilometers to go for the, uh, for the Namibian and the Mauritian. But uh, they still look very much in charge of this race. See the uh, women's team in front of us there, the gorgeous views from the very highest point in the stage today. The Lyalf section, the Lyalf peak, the pinnacle of today's stage, 2,543 meters above sea level. And uh, we are in the Alps. Let's remind ourselves these are the Swiss Alps. So altitude does play a role in the athlete's performance. But no problems for this team right here. The, the all-African pairing, Vera Lawser and Kim Lacord. Vera Lawser is, in fact, a local. She lives in Switzerland with her husband, Connie Lawser. And uh, she's spent a lot of time in this area. She said she spent four weeks in a training camp exploring the area. So it's one of her favorite areas to ride a bike. So her experience will be shared with her partner, Kim Lacord. And... Uh, it was time well spent, clearly, because they are in charge of this race for sure. As they reach the 2,543 meter mark above sea level, around about 40 k's into the race with 18 kilometers to go. They'll just take a short uh, break, short breather, as they uh, just, uh, back off a little bit on the power, most likely, before they uh, head down the Olympia flow trail. They will enjoy this. No risks for them. They've already said that they take no risks on the downhills. They'd rather put as much power down on the uphills. That's where they'd gain their advantage. On the downhills, they know with no risks, there is no chance, or f they can reduce the risk of having any mechanicals because they know, among many others, especially having raced the Absa Cape Epic in 2023, they know how quickly one single small mechanical can wipe out any deficit. They have a 15, almost a 15 minute deficit over, over a 15 minute advantage, I beg your pardon, over their nearest rivals on overall general classification. But they know full well that that uh, can be wiped out very quickly. Back with the men, Daniel Gesmeyer, he can hear the announcer right now. He can sense that they have a stage win within their grasp. They have done the work. They've taken advantage of any weaknesses of the other team. And this is what it's all about. It's about uh, just staying in contention, not letting the guard down. And they already looks like Wout Allemann is smiling. And some celebrations as they cross the line together. Great friends and great competitors. They are in sync, perfectly matched are the Belgian and the Austrian. And they'll certainly have a celebration. Very happy to take the stage. Could, they came into today's race as uh, favorites, really, with Daniel Gesmeyer being a two-time winner of this race. And Wout Allemann, more or less a newbie, but certainly not new to the sport of mountain bike stage racing. Big congratulations from their teammates. 
from their friends. That you can see there is uh, Fabian Rabensteiner, a trusty teammate of both of these riders. Very excited to see them at the finish. Success for the Italian outfit, Willier Pirelli. Just a bit of a glimpse there from Daniel Gesmeyer. He might be able to see what that clock is showing. He is fully aware that they are in the hunt, not just for the stage, but for the overall general classification. They'll be looking back to see when this team here in yellow, Canyon Northwave, Martin Stozek and Mark Stutzman, bad luck during the day. They changed an entire wheel. They had to go into the tech zone and remove the wheel, replace it with a fresh one and they have consolidated their efforts. And uh, Martin Stozek leading Stutzman through the finish. And we'll just see what the, uh, what the clock says, exactly how much time they have lost to Willier Pirelli. Look at him go with that Mark Stutzman. Great sportsmanship and camaraderie. They are definitely enemies on the trail, but uh, when uh, the racing stops, when they've crossed the line, it's uh, the sportsmanship shows. That's the great thing about mountain biking. There's a f tremendous camaraderie, not just between each team member, but also among the uh, among the entire peloton, you could say. And fantastic performance and making good to Pardo Factory, Casey South, Jakob Dorogoni, a tremendous performance after some disappointing times on stage one and stage two. Mechanicals, and they've put that behind them, and a prestigious third spot. They were able to stand on the podium, their heads held high. They were a victim to perhaps the, uh, the, the race within a race, the race for general classification under different circumstances. Perhaps if Canyon Northwave didn't have that flat, they will wonder, maybe the, uh, the Italian team and Canyon Northwave might have just been a little bit more conservative on their racing, giving the opportunity to Torpado Factory to race for the stage. But uh, having lost two minutes to the very finest team in the world right now, and uh, we've lost two minutes to them, they know that they're very much on the pace because we can certainly be sure that William Pirelli were going full gas, maximum, eff <coughs> maximum efforts all the way to the limit, all the way to the line. To part of factories, Casey South, Jakob Dorogoni, fantastic performance from the Swiss and the Italian. And just reliving that moment, that uh, moment that they'll probably both remember forever. Uh, fantastic moment in any rider's career to win a stage of an epic series event, especially the uh, Swiss epic. Held in the Alps, Daniel Gesmeyer certainly feels at home. The Austrian enjoying the Spa Swiss Epic very much, and this year is no exception. Casey South, the taller rider, the Swiss native, he knows this area very well. Looks like he's been a very good tour guide to his partner. We're looking back along the trail. We'll be keeping an eye out for Cannondel Vas Arabe. They were the next best team out on the trails with Bulls Simon Schneller and Axel Rudil Cortinat just struggling a little bit compared to yesterday. They had a fantastic day yesterday. And uh, we will be, we'll be hearing from Dario down on the line. He is with the top teams of the day, the best performing teams in the day. We'll cross down to him in a moment. Today, yeah? yeah, really nice. <laughs> <Crazy>. <laughs> okay, we're ready with today's winners about Aleman and uh, Daniel Geismar. We just talked about his flow trail, so that was good fun for you. Yeah, they were really good fun. It was really nice. We enjoyed it, and then, yeah, fun is fast, they say. So that's all about today. Fun is fast. Yeah, you've been really fast, Daniel, today. So the attack on uh, on this long uphill there, yeah, it was not an attack. So we saw the uh, mechanical from uh, Martin Stosek, and then 
you went full gas or just accelerating a bit? No, no, I said the uh, uh, wood, uh, we have to keep the pace constant. And also we didn't go really fast in the, in the final uh, uphill. Then we accelerate a little bit, but uh, in this altitude you have to pace really good. And okay, wood is uh, for sure really uh, strong and I am a little bit, uh, and I'm not so strong at the moment, but uh, he, he made a good pace for me and I could follow good. For sure was a lot of suffering, but um, I am really happy that we can win today. So did you talk with each other? Because we saw that in the live streams that he had sometimes a look back. Because I thought Daniel he uh, was a bit suffering. Yeah, he was a bit suffering from the altitude, so I tried to motivate him. And uh, yeah, we talked a little bit about the pace, and he told me if I had to go faster or slower. So yeah, we worked really well together, and that's key, I think. Have you been on altitude training? That you're so used to that thing. No, me not. I didn't go on altitude training, so <laughs> yeah, <it's fun. laughs> I'm a little bit surprised. I thought that I would suffer from the altitude, but at the moment it's not uh, not a big issue for me. Okay. So yeah, luckily. You've been on the altitude or what? That you? Yeah, yeah, three weeks ago. But uh, I always suffer a little bit in altitude. It's normal for my body. But uh, today I feel much better. But I, it's normal. We the we the average altitude today was really high. So. It's normal that you cannot breathe so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So general classifications, a word about that? Uh, yeah, we take some time back, but still we we have a big gap. But yeah, it's still two days to go. And you see that uh, you see also today that everything can happen. So we will keep the pressure high and see what happens. Yeah, you won last year, so full gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Everything can happen. Two days uh, to go, and uh, we try to ride fast, but also safe. And then, in the end, we see in the bus. In the fourth. Thank you very much, Sunny Gasma, about Daliman. Have a good one today, and a good one on the next two stages. Thank Thank you. You. Ciao. So back to Neil. And thanks, uh, Doria, for those great interviews, great insights out on the. Uh, from from the trails and Daniel Gesmeyer and Wout Allemann. On the, the uh, on the face of it, they look like they were very much in sync. But uh, a bit of insight that they gave us that uh, Daniel Gesmeyer was certainly the one who was suffering with Allemann motivating him. But uh, the testament to the teamwork and the morale and the team dynamic, the professionalism of the uh, Willia Pirelli team, that they were not letting anything show. They looked very much in sync, very much together. And uh, it doesn't bode well for their rivals if anyone hopes to unseat them from that second spot overall. They did admit to themselves and to, to all of us, in fact, that uh, they still have a big gap to, uh, to make up to the Canyon North Wave. At the start, we've got the unofficial time. Around about 1 minute 22 was their advantage on the stage over Canyon North Wave, which means that... Uh, they will be around about just over six and a half minutes is now the uh, overall general classification. As I said, we'll be waiting for the uh, official times. These are just our estimations at the moment. But uh, having made up uh, one minute and 22 seconds, we'll put them around about six and a half minutes, just over six and a half minutes behind uh, Canyon North Wave. Canyon North Wave certainly look like the dominant team. We did expect them to uh, make that catch. We also expected Perhaps a bit of tactics to play out with uh, Topado Factory. Um, with the agenda of Topado Factory was an all-in stage win for the uh, Swiss and the Italian. But uh, not to be for them. They were had to be content with a just some podium time rather than a stage win. Uh, they will live tonight to fight another day. They'll just uh, spend some time recovering and uh, aim to arrive on the start tomorrow in St. Moritz on the transition day. Some images from earlier this morning as the riders arrived at the start in their warm jerseys, uh, having been through their warm-up routine, but of course wanting to be ready for the stage ahead. The stage, the temperatures would rise above single digits uh, all the way to around about 19 or 20 degrees and they'll have be their team managers will have been watching the weather forecast carefully to make sure they are perfectly dressed, perfectly prepared for today's stage. Stage three, a 58 kilometer stage with 2,100 meters of climbing. Oh, we did see the Americans just uh, with 
the fierce pace set at the front, trying to keep up, just uh, just saving the day with a bit of a foot out there. No, Warren keeping an eye out on his partner. Earlier in the day, we saw the struggles of the Bulls and uh, with the uh, French national champion, Cortinat, just struggling a bit on the early part of the climb. Before the 10 kilometer mark, before that uh, peak, before the Marmot flow trail, which we are watching the world's best tackling right now. For earlier, image, earlier images from this morning, from the 10 kilometer mark, it was a long drop down into the valley, down to around about 1600 meters from the high point of the race at about uh, 2500 meters. Not the highest. We did see higher altitudes in the, around about the 40 kilometer mark. But at this point in the race, they were reveling in the Marmotta flow trail. Just one of the uh, sections of trail in the region, the Graubünden region, and even around St. Moritz. There are hundreds of kilometers of trails just like this, and just like this too. Forest trails, open natural trails, and those uh, famous bermed flow trails that we have seen throughout race week. We did see uh, Lucas Flückiger, who had lost his partner uh, to illness and just uh, wanting to test his legs, see how his form was, uh, see how fast he could have ridden and just enjoying himself. But the story of the day in terms of the men's category racing was that the puncture, the Canyon Northwave team put them on the back foot. They elected to take a risk-free entire wheel change. They could have just addressed the symptom itself, just the puncture, put a plug in it, but they decided to take absolutely no risks and uh, change the entire wheel. This put them at about a two minute deficit, but very soon they caught up with uh, the Torpado factory team and made that pass and set off in pursuit of the Willia Pirelli team who might not have known exactly what was happening out on the trail, but uh, they certainly sensed that there was an advantage. There was a gap. They didn't see Canyon North Wave, so they put in maximum effort from, uh, certainly for the final 30 kilometers, they were uh, really going full gas, taking a couple of risks on the downhill. And for a short while, Torpado Factory were able to stay with the dominant team of the race, the strongest team in the race, arguably Canyon North Wave. And once they'd shed the uh, followers to Apollo Factory, it was really a two-horse race. It was Canyon Northwave chasing down Willier Pirelli, Daniel Gesma and Bart Allman on the front. Already at this point, they were already on the, uh, the Olympia flow trail just after they hit the high point in the race. The high point in the race, Lie Alf at 2,543 meters. And Daniel Gesma already enjoying those float, that flow trail, the Olympia flow trail that any rider anywhere in the world can come and ride and enjoy. At the moment, uh, just watching Daniel Gesmeyer, his focus of the day is certainly not necessarily enjoyment. It is to gain time on his rivals, but uh, maybe sneaking in a few tail whips here and there just to make, uh, just to keep the morale high. Just the direct contrast of trails, forest trails mixed with some berm trails, hand-built trails, and those natural trails that characterizes this race. The, the diversity of trails is really the, what the Spa Specific is known for. Great to take a moment just to enjoy the uh, trails eye view from the Bulls Media e-bike of Stefan Sam, just showing us what it's like to be one of the world's best mountain bikers. A unique, op op a unique chance for viewers all over the world to see how it's done. And Wout Allemann, certainly the best person to show us, arguably one of the best 
mountain bike stage races on the planet right now and certainly denoted by his European Championship jersey. If you think about the density, the depth of competition in the in Europe at the moment with uh, however many riders are, uh, are competing for that jersey and also another national championship jersey wearer is Daniel Gesmeyer, a multiple champion of Austria. We saw earlier on the interview of Wout Allemann explaining to us that uh, he was the one who was uh, leading the uh, leading affairs. Daniel Gesmeyer struggling with the altitude. They, the altitudes did reach 2,543 meters. He knows it's his weakness, but if this is his weakness, if this is him at his worst, that's still pretty good. Daniel Gesmeyer, an experienced campaign, a former winner of the race 2017, and putting that experience to good use. Wout Allemann, look, on the face of it, on paper, the newbie leading the experience campaigner. Topado Factory, a fantastic day out, making good on a difficult last few day or last two days. And some finally some podium time for the very strong pairing, the Swiss and the Italian. And we're about to cross down to hear from the okay. overall Good leaders. Uh, Mark Stutzmann here. Martin is uh, uh, still cleaning everything up. Mark, it was a hard day for you. You had a mechanical, but good bad luck. So the mechanical right in front of the tech station. Yeah, exactly. So uh, Martin hit the hit the stone uh, and scratched the side of the, of the of the tire and. Uh, so he had a little, a little hole, but yeah. we can manage to the feed zone and uh, or the feed tech zone, and then we, we couldn't uh, change the wheel. Yeah, the wheel change was was pretty fast. So you did you realize quite after the hit that you got a flat tire? Uh, uh, I I knew that I hit something, but I I, I hope it was it, it's not flat. But in the end, it was kind of going slow, it's slow, but uh, yeah, it was flat. And I was able to ride on it uh, two kilometers, so we were discussing if we try to plug it or if we change. Yeah. But then we decided to make a safer way, so we stopped and changed the wheel, which was quite fast. It was a good change, I would say. We were also lucky that it was right not, not far to the, to the, to the tech zone. Uh, yeah, then, then, then the chase, chasing starts, and uh, it was not bad in the end. We didn't lose so much. Uh, I was a bit slower in the downhills because I had different wheel with a bit different pressure inside, so I was not very sure about it. Too low pressure? Yeah, it was too low. It was too low and I was like, okay, I don't want to hit nothing uh, again. So we went a bit slower in downhills, but the pace was quite okay. Okay, I thought that you had some problem with the derailleur right after the wheel change or was that? I don't know, there is just a, like adjustment for a clutch that you you close the, uh, the the pulley that is not moving so much. So if you take the wheel out, you open it and you when you put it back, you, you close it. So, but I forgot it, so I did it with my with my leg, and it was fine. <laughs> with the dancing foot, so that was pretty good. So uh, it w was quite a good uh, stage for you. Was that the rest day you've been talking about yesterday? <laughs> no. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, I think we are quite happy ab about today, and uh, we lost only one minute twenty, so uh, everything. It's fine for us, and yeah, we are happy. We are happy. We're looking forward for the next two stages, prize giving in a minute. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good one tomorrow. See you there. Ciao. Back to Neil. Well, thanks, Dario, and great insights there from the trail side and just taking us through that issue and of course a sidewall cut is a dangerous thing anyone who's ever tried to fix a mountain bike tire a uh, sidewall cut is one of the hardest things to repair so a good call to elect to change that wheel um, call the ever professional canyon north wave knowing exactly what to do it's all about uh, damage control and damage management and stozik and stutzman have proven already to be the masters of that They very shortly will be uh, crossing back down to the finish to see the delight and the, the celebrations of the uh, winning team. And let's also 
Spare a thought for Casey South and Jakob Doragoni. They looked in contention for a stage win, but the overall general classification that kind of got in the way of it, they're the massive firepower of Gersmeyer and Allemann and the rivalry between Stozek and Schuttmann and the Willy Pirelli team really came to the fore. Casey South, Doragoni, they will uh, be satisfied with a podium spot, especially compared to their week that they've had. But uh, tomorrow is another day. Perhaps, who knows, they might take a little bit of a more conservative day and aim for the grand finale. They certainly know that they have the ability, they have the firepower to fight for uh, a stage victory. And uh, Casey South, Jakob Drogoni, great showing for the Topada factory team. A final sprint in the final now, 100 meters towards the finish line here. Once again, an Italian duo with Simone Ferrero, Luca Rostagno, Marcisio Tabros. Uh, watching the uh, 14th place riders so that we just saw riders in 14th crossing the line the all Italian pairing Ferrero Rostagno and uh, shortly we'll be seeing the winners of the stage today the stage three the 58 kilometer stage a loop around the St. Moritz well, area we are, we are nestled in Graubunden We are now officially more than halfway towards conquering the Alps. Stage number three, St. Moritz, St. Moritz. And we are ready to present to you the top three UCI men's teams at the end of the stage. Your third position today, the team Torpedo Factory, KC South and Jakob Dorigoni. A wonderful team from our title sponsors, Spa, handing out all our awards as we move to the second position now. It is the team Canyon Northwave, Martin Stozek and Mark Stutzmann. And the smiles always get a little bit bigger when you've got to step that much higher up onto the podium. Our stage winners today, the winners of stage three, William Pirelli, Daniel Geismeyer, and Vaut Aleman. Your third place on the stage, the Beta Factory, second Canyon North Wave, and the winners, Daniel Geismeyer, Vaut Aleman, William Pirelli. And please stick around as we're going to do the presentation of our Chavita sponsored category overall leaders jersey for the Spa Swiss Epic. We are now ready. Zipped up and looking good. Our presentation for the overall leaders of our Spa Swiss Epic 2023. The winners of stage one, the winners of stage two, second on stage three. It is our team, Canyon Northwave, Martin Stosik and Mark Stutzmann. Two stages left, the Queen stage tomorrow. 
and yellow always makes you that a little bit faster. Congratulations, Martin and Mark. And after the podium celebrations of the men's category, the UCI men's category with uh, all three teams in and having done their celebrations ready to start their recovery routine, we are back with the women's category and team Elizator Efficient Infinity Insure, Vera Lawza, Kim Lacourt are charging and it's a carbon copy of yesterday and of the day before Lawza and Lacourt dominant in this category with Adele Morath and Bettina Yanis from the Davos Klosters team. Around about four minutes back at that uh, last time check we had, we saw them at the uh, service station. That was the Chantarella service station, 44 kilometers into the stage. That was after the downhill section, the Olympia Flow Trail downhill section. They have already breached the highest point in the race, the Lyalf sec the Lyalf at 2,000. 543 meters above sea level and they've already plunged down to almost 2,000 meters now and uh, just about to uh, just make the final undulating climb up to the really the last obstacle of the day uh, will be reached at just before the 50 kilometer mark as they descend the Fopetas flow trail we saw in the men's category the winners of the men's category, Daniel Gesmeyer and Wout Allemann. Allemann leading Gesmeyer down the trail and uh, a spectacular trail indeed. And shortly we'll be seeing the top mountain bike stage race team in the world navigating those trails. The professionalism of Lawza and Lacourt. Vera Lawza has uh, spent quite a bit of time in this area on training camps and getting used to the altitude and preparing her body for the effort of the 2023 Spa-Swiss Epic. They want to make good on their victory and prove that that victory at the 2023 Absa Cape Epic, the pinnacle of the Epic Series, was no fluke. And it certainly wasn't. They are proving to be a highly uh, agile and strong team. And not only that, they are certainly the most in-sync team we have seen in the sport for a very long time. Great bond between these two. Vera Laws and Kim Lacourt have that team dynamic absolutely dialed. They said yesterday a very telling thing, which was absolutely never leave each other behind. So they ride together at all times, never a gap, looking after each other, keeping an eye on each other and staying in good touch. They're at the moment such a well-developed partnership. They barely need to talk to each other. They can tell just from each other's body language how they're feeling. And just that team dynamic does it plays a role, certainly in the uh, very early stages of any stage race, as you get to know your partner a bit better every day. But uh, one of the most important things to remember is that it's, a, it's an incremental process, mountain bike stage racing. It's bit by bit, and uh, dare we say it, it's a game of marginal gains. And if every bit counts, and if every bit of morale counts, these two certainly have, uh, have got that dialed. Kim Lacourt, Vera Lawza are four minutes ahead of Davos Klosters. And at that time check, the 44 kilometer mark, 11 minutes and 29 seconds down. Katarzyna Sosner and Irina Luchel Schwab, they look good for yet another podium spot on the day. Stage three, 58 kilometers, 2,100 meters of climbing, a loop course around St. Moritz. We are 11 minutes, just to, let's say, a few good few hours, three over three hours, three hours and 15 minutes plus into racing as Kim Lacourt and Vera Lawza build their campaign in that uh, leaders, Chievita leaders orange jersey. So the last team to pass through the start finish area, Team Stolbikes. Stolbikes is uh, a local brand, a Swiss brand, and what better place to uh, to test their uh, equipment other than on their home race? And uh, certainly, with the demands of the trails we've seen, it's a great testing ground. In fact, it's a it's a well documented case that uh, the Epic Series race, especially the Absa Cape Epic, it's an excellent showcase and also an excellent testing ground 
for some of the equipment that uh, the big brands of the sport bring to the race and are able to uh, document exactly. Uh, it's almost like the, the, the greatest stress, stress, stress test possible. Five days at the Spa Swiss Epic and eight days at the Absa Cape Epic. And uh, the engineers will be getting out their notebooks as to how their equipment fares. So we're back in uh, St. Moritz uh, with our guest Darko Gatsin and together with Andreas Wieland from RTR. From our side, thank you very much, Darko, for being with us. Thank you. In English, and uh, yeah, most of the chat was in uh, Romansh. So. Exact. Nous uh, discourin uh, <laughs> domis dus Romansh, Darko Katsin, and grazie al fede de mia vart. Um, Possa qui tais in pau quei Swiss epic questiam, non i quella due etapas che resta ne un a casa a quei tema trabus en famiglia. In famiglia no, <laughs> perché qui stiamo sono belli su fauna, c'è un po' di prima in scuola, c'è un po' di altri, di altri. Io ho fatto un live stream durante il lavoro, il lavoro di un po' di altri, e ho fatto di qua va a perfetto con il live stream del Swiss Epic. Si costruisce, planisce, baguette, trails, e si mette di Silvelo, se si non trenni, e qui si prende il lavoro, e si spera di non avere il velo. E da ciò non avete il velo, ma era in quella vita io il velo non la ruola principale, però io sto un giorno qui in Engedina, in Grigion, era per vedere il mountain bike, quindi tra i fin quattro anni di slimna, a un certo punto il velo ora si strade, si mince casa. In una Engedina, a Dina Engedina. Ah, in una Grigion, a Dina Grigion. A dove vai col velo a casa, sono in Murezzi, a Punta Gigna, in una bella tour a Vongentà. Si bellezza, si arriva per via là in Stadt, e mi tu visto che ci rien, e loro dai os omelettes da gentar per tra i fans. Grandiose, grazie a te. Dark Poker Team per la visita, il live stream al Victors, quelli che mi hanno chiesto di rangazzi, un Daniel Geismayer del Raminende Austriaga, insieme con il Belgiese Wout Alemana, un Gudegnau, quella terza etapa da Soi Murezzi e Soi Murezzi, bien in un minuto a venire con Martin Stossek della Cecchia, insieme con il Svizzero Mark Stutzmann, che resta in Danton als leader su entre tre etapa, al Grigion, a Yenge Dinese, al Matador Local Fadri Barandun, insieme con Conny Loser, a spiare sozza bien tre di scuitori di minuto, a stiusse con Tentà in parentesi, ma con si usava il plazzo, più e vino nuot con il plazzo da Podesch per Fadri Barandù. Nel classamento generale, resta nel Zenton si giunava il plazzo, 21 minuti, e una volta Martin Stossega, Marc Stutzmann, una volta in plazzo da Podesch, Zenton mo 4 minuti, ed è in corte, vengono noi le più esperte donne, le donne d'elite che vanno arrivare a Sogn Murezzi. Grazie al Fitch. Uh, we're back with the uh, UCI women's on the downhill right before they're coming home to St. Moritz in this fantastic flow trail. It's Vera Loser and Kim Lacourt once more. We tried to speak to uh, Thomas Deitch. Thomas, are you enjoying this uh, flow trail? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so they look pretty. Yeah, you're in front of me, I'm really enjoying too. We are talking to each other, and uh, I think they are really enjoying and really, really nice. So they're, uh, they're, they're, so they're really happy with the riding today, I guess. Kim Lacourt and Vera Lose. So, do you know something about the gap to the to the second ladies? Are yeah, they far behind? Yeah, they're behind for sure, but I don't know there's a gap. Um, yeah, Vera and Kim are so Vera pretty and Kim secure. Are riding really well. Never on the limit, on the in the climb or in the downhill. But always nice, or always talking to each other. Again, now they are talking to each other to, to know if the pace is okay for, for both. That's really cool. Look at yeah. this train, <laughs> incredible. Yeah, yesterday Kim told me that she's not uh, 
we are really keen to ride all these uh, these float threads, but she's yeah, still she really good. good <laughs> she's getting better and better, I think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why the trail uh, planner took uh, three of these uh, flow trails. So <laughs> at least the last one you can enjoy. I <laughs> know. Uh, so. so no problem for the ladies in the downhill and no problems in the uphill. Kim Lecourt and uh, Vera Loser. And we play again. Wow, super cool. Right at <laughs> One more time in this fantastic flow trails here around uh, St. Moritz. Five kilometers to the finish. The course will be different. Yep, five kilometers to go for the ladies. So the last for Petas uh, flow trail. It's the name of that one. So totally different uh, course tomorrow, heading over from uh, St. Moritz to the Foss. No road trails like this, just natural trails, natural rides for these uh, girls here. Kim Lecourt and uh, Vera Loser. And then uh, on a Saturday, a trail around the Foss, the real nice trails around the Foss. I have to talk to uh, Kim Lacoud after the race. So, <laughs> what happened with her? That she's, uh, yeah, riding really, really good on these flow trails. <laughs> must be the, it must be the good air up here. So both of the guys, uh, Stefan Sam and Thomas Dietz, are enjoying these rides. They change every day. So tomorrow, Stefan Sam will be back uh, with the women and uh, Thomas Dietz with the men. Thank you very much, Thomas, for this uh, picture and for these uh, insights. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's only a few cases to go on, uh, on the proper road for these two. So everything secure around here. Yeah, I was a bit surprised in the beginning, uh, Thomas. So Bettina Janas and uh, Adelheid Morat, they took the lead, but I think Bettina couldn't uh, follow them anymore. And so uh, Kim Lecourt and uh, Vera Loser are yeah, in the lead. Exactly. I think it was, uh, yeah, Kim and Vera know that it will, uh, will be a long, long uh, stage again with uh, two big climb. And I think they, they, die, they take the time to go ahead. And uh, slowly, slowly, they, they were in front, and now they, they managed to go to the finish in the, in the first place. Yeah, this, they're in the lead of the general classification um, after uh, two stages, probably after three stages as well. So they, uh, they can take it really easy. So that's a big advantage for the following two stages. So this is a nice view over uh, the village in St. Moritz. Uh, it will be packed in the afternoon when all the riders come back having uh, a drink, having uh, a shake with uh, one from our partners, uh, having something to eat, chill here, talk about this stage. So I'm inside for tomorrow probably. The Hotel uh, Kempinski in the background. So one of the uh, yeah, expensive hotels here up in San Moritz. There are a lot of them, but it's still so beautiful up here. So this stage was full of flow trails and even the uphills. They've been uh, really good. So. Thomas, the uphills, they were perfect as well, huh, as the downhills. Yeah, the, the uphills were perfect, but 
yeah, even if they, these two girls are really strong, that was a really tough appeal. I mean, it was two, two appeal with some uh, really steep part. It's uh, always difficult to manage. Real steep, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we saw that uh, the first climb was really steep and that the second climb looked quite easy, but there were some... Uh, yeah, some trees in the way, and yeah, uh, yeah. So, so some sometimes some they get different percent on the uh, of climbing, and you yeah you can make a, you can get a rhythm, but it's it's not easy, really not easy, and then you need to manage to get some uh, yeah to, to keep some power for for downhill to not make a mistake. Uh, yeah, it's really a tough race. But it's why they are here, there. Yes. Yeah, that's why they're in on on top of uh, of the women's classification on, and the overall classification. So especially trails like this, the, the uh, flow trails are uh, hard to handle. Needs a lot of power in the upper body. Yeah, and you, you are really to be focused on the, on the trail. I mean, even if it's a easy flow flowing trail, you have always to be uh, concentrated to don't make a mistake. Exactly, they made that uh, really well, Vera Loser and Kim LeCourt, the leading ladies at this edition of the Spar Swiss Epic. Not only in today's stage, the leaders in the overall general classification as well at the women's UCI. So. Within the next few minutes, they will arrive here in uh, St. Moritz. Just a few seconds ago, the mountain bike legend Thomas Frischknecht came home with his uh, partner, Severin Dish, and we are going back to Neil. Yeah, thanks, Dario. We just saw Thomas Frischknecht going through there, and uh, Thomas Frischknecht is a former Swiss mountain bike and cyclocross racer, a professional, but best known as the uh, elder statesman of mountain biking, Europe's elder statesman. There's a few uh, godfathers of mountain biking, you could say, but uh, Thomas Frischnick certainly has earned his from a professional rider's point of view and taking his skills from cyclocross all the way to uh, mountain biking and going and racing in the US uh, back in the 90s in this new fangled sport called mountain biking. Frischy is he's well known and uh, former founder, well, a founder of the event, a co-founder of the uh, Spa Swiss Epic, and great to have him still here at the race and competing in the race. But certainly competing at the very highest level is Kim Lacourt leading Vera Lorza through this last section of trail before they reach the finish at the 58 kilometer mark. That is the finish at 58 kilometers. They are well under 5Ks to go. And uh, Kim Lacourt and Vera Lorza solidifying their lead and uh, look well on their way for another stage win. We checked the time at the just around about the 50 kilometer mark and the team of Lorza and Lacourt passed through there after three hours and 21 minutes of racing. And team DeVos Clusters, Bettini Yanis and Adel Morath, five minutes and 20 back. So the time losses aren't as great as they were on stage one. Um, slightly worse than they were on um, on stage two. Uh, Bettini Yanis uh, has not limited the damage as much as she had yesterday. No doubt the ravages of the 81 kilometer stage yesterday taking its toll as it all adds up. The fatigue all adds up. Adele Morath nursing her partner home and yet still to go through that service station that, uh, that uh, sorry, the uh, 50 kilometer mark, beg your pardon, the 50 kilometer mark yet still to go through is the team of Tapada Bulls. They were around about 11 and a half minutes down at the previous time check, 45 case into the race. So we will see just how uh, the uh, Swiss and the Lithuanian rider are faring. Breathing down their necks uh, to an extent, Cannondale, Vas, Arabe, Calderon and Kortikas. But uh, certainly those top three spots on the overall podium today for today's stage uh, look pretty much secure and certainly is the top spot. The Chivita orange leaders jerseys that looks very firmly on the shoulders of Vera Laws of the Namibian and the Mauritian Kim Lacourt having spent a lot of time here. Vera Laws four weeks training camp 
She knows the area well. She will know these trails very well and certainly will have driven, ridden those flow trails we saw. We saw the pairing of them riding down the Forpetus flow trail with great ease. Uh, Thomas Stitch was telling us out on the course that he sensed, and he is the best person to judge, he sensed that there were no risks being taken, just keeping a firm, steady pace on the downhill section uh, from the highest point in the race we saw lie off the Olympia flow trail, then a short uh, undulating climb up to uh, the 49 kilometer mark and then the Forpetus flow trail. So all in all today was a tricky day for the races with four, four obstacles really to conquer, four climbs to conquer. The first at the t summit at the 10K mark, the second around about the 35 kilometer mark, the third at the 40K mark, and just before the 50k mark was the last obstacle of the day. And the team out in front right now, and also the second team out on the road, Davos Clusters, they both have passed through. They've breached those final obstacles, and they're well on their way downhill towards the finish in St. Moritz at the topping off the stage at 2,100 meters of climbing. And a big effort in anyone's books. And certainly with the firepower we've seen from the likes of Lacorte and Lorza, they have earned that, uh, earned those orange jerseys on their shoulders. And as uh, now, by default, they are mountain bike stage race specialists. They're the winners of the 2023 Absa Cape Epic. And uh, just another day closer to the title of winners of the Swiss Epic. They haven't won before. They were third last year. It was their first race together as, uh, as partners, and uh, they seem to have found the, uh, that perfect combination of uh, firepower and also of their bond. As they head into the finish, Vera Laws, Kim Lacourt, it is uh, not just three out of three stages, it is four out of four, because let's not forget, they won the grand finale in 2022. So they have not lost a stage since 2022 in August last year. Team Elizato Efficient, Infinity Insure take another victory, another stage at the 2023 edition of the race, the 10th edition of an auspicious race to win, an auspicious stage, the loop around St. Moritz, and clearly delighted as if it was their first. They are tremendously excited to not only win the stage, but also to put more time into their rivals. And just another day down, another day ticked off with two days to go before that, uh, before they can raise that trophy above their heads and call themselves the Spa Swiss Epic champions. Und Big Spike Holiday mit Fatih Bucha und Hans-Jürg Gerber. Und gleich das nächste Team hinterher aus Deutschland. And the uh, pairing of Loza and Lacourt will be looking back at the clock just to see what kind of an advantage they've, uh, they've held over Davos Klosters. Toparda Bulls have passed through that time check, that final climb at the 49.5 kilometer mark. And that they are over 14 and a half minutes down. But uh, the uh, team of Loza and Lacourt will not be concerned about them in terms of the overall, their nearest rivals, the Germans, Janus and Marath, still about five minutes down, and they will be looking to ride even more defensively than they have. But today, that was their tactic going out, to ride defensively. But they found themselves in an advantageous position on the climbs, able to just put in a bit of an extra surge and uh, extend their advantage over Davos Clusters. And we're going to be shortly crossing down to the finish line with Dario, where he'll be talking to the riders. We're back with the today's winners, Vela Losa, Kim Kurt. Yesterday, you said, oh, I don't like to down it that much. You've been pretty fast on the last ones. <laughs> Yeah, I think I had a lot of fun, uh, even a little bit of a jump at times, which I wasn't planning on, but the right <laughs> behind me was hot on my wheel, so yeah, I had some pressure to go quicker. <laughs> so it was a good day for both of you girls, so uh, another stage win, the overall lead extended. 
Yeah, it was a good day for us. It's also a hard day. I mean, the climbing today, it's always steep. It's really hard on the legs. But the downhills, I mean, I love the, uh, the flow trail coming down into St. Moritz and then the Fopetta at the end. Oh, it's just amazing. <laughs> Does it make you nervous, always in the beginning, Adel Haid Morat is pushing that hard? No, I think <laughs> we plan to just sit on and, and see how the race goes and um, we have no pressure to make the pacing ourselves and uh, yeah, on the, on the steepest part of the climb today, I felt my legs were fine and I, I got a gap and I knew Vera would jump whenever she's ready to do so and uh, yeah, from there we just rode away. So you know all the time that Bettina is exploding some somewhere some. yeah it's always if, if Adelaide puts a high pressure on we know uh, uh, Bettina can't keep it for that long so it's just a matter of time so we just have to st you know, stick, stick in there and then yeah we go when we feel good <laughs> so plans for tomorrow so taking it easy or uh... first we have to recover <laughs> please one more time like that <laughs> uh, we're not really thinking about it now I think we just want to have some lunch, talk about yeah. the day. No, the, the team tactics will come out tonight, but they're still secret. <laughs> Lips closed. Thank you very much. Thanks. Big up. Vela Losa, Kim Lacourt, stage winner, overall classification leaders. One, two, three. <laughs> Back to you, Neil. Thank you very much. Great to hear from the riders after the today stage. All the speculation and all of our guesswork is now put to rest. It's clear that they are the dominant team. And as we suspected, the team of Bettina Yana, Sadel Marath, and the dynamic not quite as slick as, the, as that between Loza and Lacourt. And as we saw earlier on the, uh, on the climb from the visuals we had from the Bulls Media e-bike from Thomas Ditch, it seemed like the tactics were to follow Bettina Yanis. And that's what Vera Loza did. They stuck to that tactic like glue. Bettini Yanis was the rider they needed to watch. As Adel Marath went up the road and set the fierce pace, they knew all they had to do was just keep an eye on Bettini Yanis. And as soon as she showed weakness, they would go. And tactics from yesterday repeated today, and it resulted in them gaining well over five minutes on their rivals. Team DeVos Klosters still have to finish this stage. We'll wait to see what kind of damage that Vera Laws and Kim Lacour did. We can be sure that Adal Marath ra rode those downhills as, as fast as she possibly could. She is a well-known campaigner and formerly a World Cup, uh, a World Cup cross country campaigner and professional for many years on that circuit. So uh, cross country riders generally typically rely on their skills uh, considerably to, uh, for a good result in a cross-country race because of the technical nature and the concentrated nature of a cross-country race compared to a marathon race. But uh, the concentrated nature of these trails, that uh, for Peter's flow trail, the Olympia flow trail, and in fact all of the flow trails they rode today, including the initial flow trail that they rode, the Mamata, they will, she will want to put those skills to maximum advantage. Still also waiting for word out on the course as to how Tupada Bulls are faring Sosna and uh, Luchel Schwab, the uh, Lithuanian and the Swiss rider. They're riding a steady race and tr aiming to solidify that third spot on overall general classification. And as we said that, we see Davos Klosters, Bettini Janas and Adel Marath. Adel Marath in the European Championships jerseys and jersey and Bettini Janas in her trade jersey of Davos Klosters as they head towards the finish, living to fight another day and uh, We'll have to look at the clock to see the official timing as to when they finished. But uh, our guess is around about six minutes, just over six minutes, they will have lost to the team of Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt. Number 51, an auspicious number in world cycling. If you follow cycling closely, you'll know how important that number 51 is. The race favorites in the women's category, Bettini Yanis and Adele Morath, not able to put that favorite, that, that paper favorite down onto the result sheet. Uh, they are former winners, two-time winners of the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. But uh, t this year is not their year. They look to be uh, a little bit on the back foot when it comes to competing with the well-drilled and uh, high momentum and also high morale of Vera Laws and Kim Lacourte.
And the riders are streaming into the finish. And we'll see of the 600 riders that are competing, they will know that they've crossed off yet another day. They passed the halfway mark and passed the challenging parts of the route. Still some challenges to go. We have still the Queen stage coming up. It is a seven, over 70 kilometers to cover uh, with a ex an extremely challenging climbing to go. It's a fresh new route every year. So even for those last Ibex riders, the two last Ibex riders, they will have a fresh new perspective on the trails of Switzerland every single year. And uh, every year it is a unique test of endurance in the iconic landscapes around the Graubünden region with the jagged skyline and the challenging trails that lie ahead of them. And the two person teams are competing for, uh, for in each category with more categories introduced this year. There are top professionals and ambitious amateurs alike. And there is this year for the first time the amateurs jersey. So it excludes the uh, UCI category and riders who have uh, you could say they have day jobs and they get a chance to compete on more or less a living a, a level playing field and uh, they can not only compete but also enjoy the uh, magical trails and uh, stay overnight in and recover in the gorgeous uh, Swiss hospitality in Lenzerheide, St. Moritz and the Vos. As we look at the finish line, the start finish line in uh, St. Moritz and we're going to cross down to the finish line on the line in just a moment. Ah, good, 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 good. So you've been pretty fast, leaders of the of the Grand Masters. Amazing day today. Yeah, it was nice, pretty hot, and uh, but uh, good conditions. <laughs> Nutrition is key. That's what we. What he told you, huh? Yes, of course, we have to uh, eat good before, uh, during and after, of course, or else we cannot perform. Is it really easy for you to orientate in between uh, which are your uh, competitors in the, in the same category all the time, or you ride just your own pace? Yeah, it's like just to look behind and we can measure <laughs> some uh, uh, above how much it is. <laughs> yeah, we know who they are. We know who they are. <laughs> you know who they are? Yeah, just we know your competitors by heart probably now. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> it's the third stage, so tomorrow we're going from uh, St. Moritz to the Vos, a completely different stage. So no throat race tomorrow. Does that match for you? I have to look them up and see how it is. So I'm looking forward to it. So the information about tomorrow's stage is just late in the day. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's quite uh, flat in the beginning and a big climb uh, later on. So we uh, perhaps have to uh, do something different than we had today. Because uh, we, now we're climbing uh, in, uh, yeah. at once. Hmm. We do all, always have a meeting in the evening to uh, make a race plan. <laughs> What's uh, how to manage it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And today it went... It came out perfectly, the plan you made yesterday? Today uh, uh, and also yesterday, we made the same plan and it was okay. <laughs> the best plan is in the field. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Jay. Have a good plan tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you, Neil. And thanks, Dario, for uh, for the chat with uh, Marcus Fair and Christian Sonderegger and well-known campaigners in the uh, in the Grand Masters category, a new-ish category, not the newest category. The newest category we've seen at the race is the Great Grand Masters category for those riders who are over the age of 60 and uh, competitive in both the men and the women's category. And uh, just an idea of how competitive the Grand, great, the grand Masters category is, is that uh, we have uh, a nine-time finisher, two nine-time finishers in the category, lying in second and third. <coughs> they lost some time today to... Um, the uh, Fair Velos team, Barty Bucher and, uh, and his trusty partner, Hans-Jörg Gerber. And in third spot on the day, coming in just a little bit over five minutes back off the, uh, off the winning team in the Grand Masters category, Daniel Schneider and uh, Oliver Imfeld of Danny Schneider Radsport Stolbikes. Fantastic performance. Great to see them still competing after nine years at the front of the field, you could say, in the uh, Spa Swiss Epic. And Daniel Schneider, Barty Bucher are looking very much like they're going to be 
10 time finishes of this race. 10 out of 10. Uh, Romance. Romance. You want to do it in Romance, Lucas? <laughs> no, no, we do it in English. Yes. So you had to pull on some cowboy today. Lucky Luke. So you lost your partner. Uh, you had some stomach problems. Yeah, already uh, yesterday after the stage, uh, maybe there was a bit too much of cow, cow shit <laughs> on the track. No, uh, we are not sure what's what's exactly happened, but he felt really empty this morning already, so he had to to pull out. Yeah. yeah. Team Andreak, so you're alone on course, Lucas Flickig, but you followed the leaders uh, for a long time. Yeah, I try to. I, I'm actually. Um, I'm not a racer anymore, so, uh, but I enjoy the, the Swiss Epic this year, so I want to find out how, how my shape is actually. So it feels not, not that bad, but I had to say in the, in the longer climb, in the second one, ah, I need a break, a small break there. So it's, uh, it was okay. It was okay the, the break was on course, yeah, so it just took it a bit uh, slower. Uh, I took it uh, easier in the second part, but uh, it was fun. Cool downhills, uh, great view. But uh, yeah, it was it was good. It was good enough. Okay, no call ship for you. No, 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 no not no, anymore. Uh, <laughs> all good. So, but you're staying in the in the comp not in the competition yet, but you're staying in the Swiss Epic for the next two stages. Uh, probably no. I need to go home, work in the bike shop again. Maybe coming back next year. Thank you very much. Thank you for having you, Lukas Flückriger. You're still in a fantastic good shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We will see. Okay. Now you are. Yeah, 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 I feel it. I feel it. Okay. <laughs> I feel it too. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Well, we just heard from uh, Lucas Fluckiger, a former professional. Uh, racing at the very highest level of the sport. He has uh, been a well-known campaigner at the Spa Swiss Epic. In fact, he is in fact a former winner of the Spa Swiss Epic. As we look at the third team on the trails, it is Topado Bulls team coming in, uh, looking to consolidate that third place on overall and also third place on the day and is uh, the uh, team, the Lithuanian and the Swiss rider, Sosna and Luchel Schwab, as they come into the finish and they live to fight another day. And fantastic performance from this pairing. That is now three of our UCI women's teams who are done. Just the uh, clear that Irina Lutsch hopped in slightly better spirits than she was when she finished yesterday's stage, having had a better day out on the trails. She's had some bad luck in when it comes to mountain bike stage racing, but also some good luck and some great performances. In fact, uh, winning a mountain bike stage race earlier on in the year, uh, which set her up really well for uh, her campaign at the Absa Cape Epic, but unfortunately a fall at the race meant led to uh, an injury which made her unable to compete. So still so some scores to settle in South Africa as she uh, builds her career and builds her abilities in mountain bike stage racing. We expect to see a lot more. This is the future of our sport as we see more riders come into the finish and uh, especially in the other categories, the mixed category, we'll see some fantastic performances throughout the Our week and here we go team number 177 yet another fabulous performance from this pairing a, a new pairing in fact before the stage they hadn't ridden the race together but uh, clearly adapting very well to each other's abilities The great team spirit from um, Michel and uh, Matoszewski as they finish. Matoszewski absolutely exhausted after today's stage, the 58 kilometer stage with four climbs and uh, plenty of flow trails. There's uh, that 
familiar combination of uh, delight but exhaustion. Certainly delight from the tremendous performance having won the stage. They already had a 10-minute advantage at around about the 50-kilometer mark over their over their Canadian rivals Beaumont and Bouchard, and definitely building on that lead on overall general classification and building their campaign, holding on to those green Chiavita leaders jerseys. And it's very nearly midday in St. Moritz. And most of the fierce racing has already come to a conclusion. And uh, the uh, top teams are beginning to emerge. The top, the racing at the very sharp end of the field is taking shape. The race is taking shape. And uh, it's certainly an exciting one in both the men and the women's categories. And just taking a bit of a look at uh, early on today, the women's race and even before the start of the day, those orange jerseys looked well, very much on the shoulders of Kim Lacourt and Vera Lorza. At the start of the day, they had a 14 minute and nine second advantage over DeVos Klosters, uh, the favorites of the team, former winners of the race in 2022 and also in 2019. Bettina Yanis, Adele Morath came into the race, race number 51, that is the favorite team and uh, but already they were 14 minutes down. So a bit of a conservative start and perhaps uh, some subdued, subdued moods after two days of hard racing of tough trails around the Graubünden region. Starting in Lenzerheide, we saw the first day was a tough loop course. Second day was a transition day from Lenzerheide to St. Moritz and the bike kingdom waved goodbye to the riders as they entered the beautiful region of St. Moritz where there are hundreds of trails around the area to explore and as we've talked about many times and certainly a lot earlier in the race we talked about Stefan the course designer hand picking the very best but the racing was all about taking as much advantage as possible where it really counted and where it counted today we're on the four climbs of the day and the first climb of the day up to the opening section up to the trailhead of La Marmotte, the flow trail and what a fantastic view the riders would have had and all eyes on Bettina Yanis. There is no doubt as to the form of Adele Marath and the uh, pedigree of Adele Marath but as the uh, narrative seems to have been developing over the past few days it's all about these two riders keeping a close eye on arguably the, the weaker of the pairing De Vos Klosters pairing and uh, that is Bettina Janus struggling a bit on that climb and just waiting patiently Vera Lorza launched her move joining her partner Kim Lacourt as they headed down the uh, first major flow trail section of the race. We're able to get these live images from uh, Thomas Ditch is Bulls Media e-bike. And who better to follow the race it, and get us into the thick of the action other than a well-known campaigner, former professional at the highest level of the sport and having placed third at the Absa Cape Epic, Thomas Ditch is able to bring us these fantastic images, really getting, giving us a sense of what it's like to be riding with the world's best. And the world's best mountain bike stage racers certainly are by default and by record, they, there's no argument that Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt are in sync. Now by this stage in the race, the uh, team of Vera Lorza and Kim Lacourt already had around about a minute 20 advantage over the uh, team of Janus and Marath. 
and uh, Jonas and Marath just uh, consolidating their efforts, just limiting that damage. And uh, not only that, but uh, keeping themselves in contention because they know that anything can happen in mountain bike stage racing. And unfortunately, it looks less and less likely considering the buffer that Lorza and Lacorte have already been building throughout the previous two days and are we're currently building this morning and in their efforts to win today's stage. Vera Lorza, Kim Lacorte heading towards the top, the highest point in the race. And that topped out at 2,543 meters. Kim Lacourt, Vera Lorza, enjoying the Olympia Flow Trail, one of the most famous trails in the world in world mountain biking, uh, a trail that any rider can come and enjoy. And, uh, fortunately for the uh, pairing at the moment, it was business, all business, as they wanted to consolidate and cement their overall lead. Taking it a bit conservative, we heard from Thomas Ditch earlier that they were not taking any risks. He really gets a sense of how fast and how hard the riders are pushing, but he did intimate to us that they are not taking any risks, just taking it, uh, to keeping a firm pace, a steady pace, and just uh, holding their rivals at bay, but at the same time, not taking any risks because they know that a mechanical could lose them way more time than just uh, taking it a bit easier around a couple of the corners. Kim Lacourt leading Vera Lorza down these sections. They call it flow trails, with just littered by a few small rock garden obstacles, but nothing that these two can't handle. Now, having already navigated the Fopetas flow trail, the pairing uh, headed towards St. Moritz. They're already at this point past the 50 kilometer mark and heading towards that final the finish line, which is at 58 kilometers, last section, a short section of tar before they enter the last section of single track and head towards the finish. And a hero's welcome after stage three. As planned, everything went according to their master plan, congratulating each other, acknowledging each other's expertise and acknowledging the partnership of Kim Lacourt, Vera Loza, success once again, three out of three. Now just a view of the general classification after stage three in the UCI men's category, Canyon Northwave still very much in charge despite the blip in their performance today. They had a mechanical, they cut the sidewall of their tire and it did lose them a couple of minutes, but they managed to control the damage to Willia Pirelli, hard charging Daniel Gesmar and Wout Allemann, gaining back uh, one minute, 20 seconds and eating into that lead, not enough to really make a proper dent Canyon Northwave still look very strong. They did take those trails down into the finish conservatively. They admitted that they didn't push too hard, knowing they had that buffer. Going into the stage, they had seven minutes and 52 seconds. Buff Megamo, however, the big losers on the day. Positions one and two on GC look pretty much settled. Barring incident, Buff Megamo have a fight on their hands for that final step on the podium between them, the Bulls, and Team Larks. Baron Dunn and Connie Laws are coming good in the latter half of the stage, along with the Bulls, Simon Schneller and Axel Rodil caught in that. We saw the Frenchman struggling on the first section of the trail, the first rise before even the 10 kilometer mark, but uh, their experience and their firepower and their, uh, their professionalism show, shone through and they were able to hang on to uh, the fourth spot on overall general classification, which means they are very much in contention for that final spot on the overall podium. In the women's category, it belongs to Lorza and Lacourt. Who can deny with 20 minutes and 29 seconds of advantage over Davos Klosters, Janis and Marath are look firmly in second spot with Topada Bulls in third. 
In the amateur men's category, an all-Swiss partnership, Spengler and Bauman look dominant over Team Portugal. And uh, another all-Swiss pairing, Enrot and Buetti, at 22 minutes and 21 seconds down. Great new category, and down on that list in fourth spot, the founder of the Swiss epic, Thomas Frischknecht. In the Masters, one of the most hotly contested categories in the sport of mountain bike stage racing, Florian Vogel, former professionals, him and Martin Gujan, after 10 hours and 10 minutes of racing, they have almost a 40 minute advantage over their Finnish rivals. And with another all Swiss team, Sasha and Führer at 40 minutes back, the category of Masters men looks firmly belonging to the pairing of Vogel and Gujan. In the Grandmasters, we heard from them earlier, the Fair and Sondega, they were challenging the uh, ch challenging the uh, the team of the, no the Norwegian team. And of course, Barty Bucher, a nine time finisher of the race, riding with Hans-Jörg Gerber, 11 minutes back off the Norwegian team with Fair and Sondega in third spot. They won today, but uh, it looks like uh, they still have a fight on their hands. And we are here in St. Moritz. We have enjoyed three days of fabulous racing and even a better scenery watching from a trails point of view, the, uh, from the Bulls Media e-bikes, what it's like to navigate some of the very finest trails in the world. It's an area that's famous for skiing, but just as much for mountain biking. And that is why we are here in the Graubünden region the race organizers have handpicked the very finest trails of the region and certainly with almost a thousand kilometers of mountain bike trails in the Graubünden region this is as good as it gets and there is plenty to pick from as the race director and the race organizer and the race design the route designer has picked a perfect mix of single track some natural single track some forest single track and also those flow trails that the region has become so famous for. We see there in the foreground, or the just the Epic Series podium. Epic Series is a global portfolio of mountain bike stage races with uh, the Absa Cape Epic in the Western Cape in South Africa being the pinnacle. And one of the important legs of the series is the Spa Swiss Epic, along with the uh, Four Islands in Croatia, and the Andorran epic in uh, the, and the Pyrenees. This is the Swiss Alps. So we have the iconic mountain bike regions of the Western Cape. We have the Pyrenees. And today, and this week in fact, in August, at the Spa Swiss Epic, we are celebrating the Alps. And we are celebrating the Alps, but the riders are conquering the Alps. After three days of conquering the Alps, they have two to go. And uh, down on the line, we have Dario, and he has been talking to some of the riders, getting some insights as to what it's like down there on the trails and what it feels like at the end of a long day, like today, of conquering the Alps. Two days to go, and uh, they'll be ticking it off, getting into their recovery routine as we see some of the riders pouring in. And uh, although they are still a few good few minutes finishing after the top riders, these are experienced mountain bikers in their own right. Many of them have, uh, have full-time jobs and there is plenty of sacrifice just to get to the start line of a race like the Spice Race Epic. It's a big undertaking, lots of training, a lot of planning and certainly a lot of investment in uh, energy and time. And when we say sacrifices, they have uh, certainly spent uh, their fair share of training on the bike and forgotten those uh, 
those fun things to do like family time and, um, and leisure time, time with friends in favor of spending time on their bikes. It's favoring, um, it's favoring satisfaction over everything else and certainly there'll be plenty of that. The satisfaction of having conquered the Alps and uh, ridden 350 kilometers and climbed 10,850 meters. That's the vertical ascent all week. No doubt everyone will have their own version of that and with uh, each person's uh, personal recording device, their uh, head units. Uh, we'll be having a look at their Wahoo units to, uh, to check, to compare exactly how each rider's climbing or elevation has changed or was different, but that is the nature of the race. It's very hard to predict exactly how many meters of climbing, but uh, it's an estimated 10,850 meters of climbing and uh, it is certainly no mean, mean feat. Whether it is a meter or either side of that, it is certainly a, a difficult task that the riders have to take on. If they sign up for the Spa Swiss Epic, they know what they're in for. It's five days of taking in some of the most challenging but yet rewarding trails in the world. Two more teams getting ready to feel the love of the finish line. And shortly we'll be crossing down to the start finish line in St. Moritz and we'll be seeing the delight of the uh, race winners. Time to celebrate. It's our master's team, Vitali Massimo, Suracci, Mario Suracci, Massimo Vitali. Complimenti, ragazzi. And the Fox Brothers are here, Marcus Fuchs and Christian Fuchs. Welcome to the Fox Brothers. Of course, the Fuchs is a fox. And we are getting ready now for the award ceremonies. We are now ready to celebrate our UCI women. Day three at our third stage of the Spa Swiss Epic being celebrated in St. Moritz over 55 kilometers with 2,100 meters of climbing. And time now for our top three UCI women's teams. In third position at the end of the stage today, Torpado Bulls, Katarzyna Sorjna and Irina Lutzenschwab. Your, your second place today. Our team, Davos Klosters, Bettina Janas, and Arleid Morat. Your winners of the stage, St. Moritz, St. Moritz, stage three, our UCI women, Elisator Efficient Infinity Insure, Vera Loza and Kim Leko. Topada Bulls in third, Davos Close the second, and in the orange jerseys, three stage wins. Your overall leaders, Eddie Sator, Efficient Infinity Insure, Vera Loza, Kim Leko. And we smile for the cameras, right? Now to the next category is amateurs, men, mixed, masters, men, and grandmasters. We'd like to do your podium presentations. In the amateur men's, it's Al Udva, Team Portugal, Stolbikes. 
The celebrations and the delight on the podium. Podium time for the top three contending teams in the UCI women's category. And a fantastic performance from all of the riders, not just the top riders on the podium. And uh, they will know that they still have two days to go. And the fourth day, the fourth stage from uh, St. Moritz to Davos, their final destination, 73 kilometers to go on this stage with almost 2,000 meters of climbing. It's the second transfer stage of the Spa Epic in 2023, and it has earned the title of the Queen Stage. Not just because of the distance, it is one of the longest stages, but also because of the, uh, the two, almost 2,000 meters of climbing and the demanding challenges that the terrain brings. It'll be another day of spectacular views, no doubt. And uh, the ascent of the Skeleta Pass is where it all happens. This is the, uh, the old horse transport facilities, the historic La Chapelle Hospice. It's a former transport route, and it is the longest descent in the race. See from the profile, the major obstacle of the day, Skeleta Pass topping out at 2,606 meters. That is the highest point in the race. And uh, we will be noting some of the riders were complaining about how their bodies are behaving with the altitude, but a fantastic day out for sure. We look forward to seeing the riders out on the stage. And uh, as we're already past the halfway mark of the 350 kilometer race, it was an exciting and dynamic day of racing today. The winners celebrate. The winners have celebrated, and the rest of the field, 600 riders arrive at the finish in St. Moritz. It's a big thanks from all of us after today's stage, and thank you from myself, Dario, Andreas, all of the guests, and Paul and Till on the line. Tune in tomorrow. Do not miss stage four of the 2023 Spa Swiss Epic. We will see you tomorrow.
And I say a huge thank you to Rob Phillipson from Spa has been doing all the presentations. I didn't know Spa had its own range of tailored denim wear, but now I know. Look at that. Rob, you've been doing a great job. Uh, we're going to keep you busy for a while today. But remember, always for you, always there for you. Immer für dich da, Spa. All right, we are getting ready now for our podium presentations. Here we go. We continue with our podium presentations from Spa. Rob Phillipson is standing by. We got our amateur men now. At the end of stage three, third on the stage, Al Undva, Valere Hendrot, and Alessio Buetti. Our second place today, Team Portugal, Christopher Portugal Raibel, Renato Tapia Landa. And it is all Switzerland at the top step of the podium. Stolbikes, your winners of the stage. Luca Spengler, Jonas Baumann. A massive congratulations to Alun Vai, Tritterblatt, Zweiterblatt, Team Portugal. Ersterblatt, Stolbikes, Luca Spengler, Jonas Baumann. In the mixed category, we're looking for Andrea and Mark Böcke, bitte. Andrea Böcke, bitte. Wir wollen gerade jetzt starten. We'd like to start with the podium presentations. Okay. And for the mixed category now. <laughs> 51 kilometers with 2100 meters of climbing. It is stage three. Sackbridge still Sackbridge. And your top three mixed teams, third position team, Erzweibike.com, MTN crew, Andrea und Mark Böttger. Second place today, Pit Stop Velo Cafe, from Canada, Remy Bouchard and Rebecca Beaumont. Winners of the stage today, the old German team, Bike Store, Brunox Racing, Benjamin, Michael and Dörte Matijewski. Adrian and Martin uh, third, Remy and Rebecca second, and Bike Store, Brunox Racing team winning the stage, and overall leaders in green, Benjamin, Michael and Dörte Matijewski. And look at us go now. Time to celebrate the Masters men.
great that we've got all these categories for these riders to be celebrated. Time now for the Masters men. Our third position, our team, Evok Finland, Mikko Kupiainen and Samuli Visuri. Second place, La Bicaria Lipuner cycling team, Sasha de Blazes and uh, Marcel Führer. And your winning team for the stage will be looking forward to the transfer to Davos tomorrow. The team Scott Davos MTB Project 2. Florian Vogel and Martin Guyan. And a brilliant third team, Evoc Finland, La Bicaria Lipuna cycling team taking second. But the win and the overall lead as we go into stage four, Scott Davos, MTV Project 2, Florian Vogel and Martin Guyan. We are looking for Berti and Hans Jörg. We want to do the Grandmasters men, so bikes, bike holiday team Fervelos.ch and team Stika Mertane. Meratini, come on to Berti, Hans Jörg, Markus Christian, Thomas and Oates. Bucher, Hansje Gerber, bitte. We need you on the stage, Berti and Hans Jörg. And it's three more teams, that's six more riders. Well done, all of you. Two times Switzerland, lots of Swiss riders. Gratulier Hans Peter. Costa Rica's in the house. Well done, Natalia. And Heiner, Natalia managing to uncleat it just in time on the finish line. Hand in hand, they join us. What a day it has been. Wonderful celebrations. And it's the Graubündner Cantonal Bank. Well on, gentlemen. Well on, Oli. We are now ready for another one of our podium presentations. It's the Grandmasters. They might be the Grand Masters, but still massive battles between them. Your third place on the stage today. Bikes this bike holiday team, Berti Bucher, Hans Jörg Gerber. Thank you, Hans Jörg, for being here. Second place, Fair Velos Punteha Eins, Markus Fair and Christian Sonder Egger. Taking the stage win today from Norway, Team Stika Meritine, Thomas Morgan Knudsen and Odds Nerthammer. Congratulations to Berti and Hans-Jörg, Markus and Christian. And taking the stage win and the overall leader is going to stage four, Team Stika Meritine, Thomas Knudsen and Odds Nerthammer. Another one of our phenomenal mixed teams. Well done to you in the colors of Square, the official loop partner of our epic series mountain bike racing around the world.
so many teams finishing there. I'll see you later, alligators. Aldo and Thomas. Andrew Judkins with the US. Well done to you from Poland. It is Martin Pierczyk with Dylan Jones. Andre Kosta with Marcius Kosta. The twins, uh, Lea and Petra Turek, finished a while ago. As well as the Masters women, Simona Stoll and Nina Bren. Well done to the Remax team, uh, Philip Imdorf and Cornelia Hoog. Ralf Hutter, Hans Peter Steiger, Sebastian Kellermeyer and Stephanie Wagner. And this is Kristen and Elmar, the Hoaxons, uh, to the finish line. Heine Morer, Natalia Navarro, Tobias Blaise and Oli Friedrich. Philip Bagda Zarians with Urs Samtleben. Franz Blaza, Tony Ubelart, Sean Esmeyer with Martinez Esmeyer. South African Paradise Adventures Squirt Team. And Kristen and Elmar Hoxon from Iceland having finished just a moment ago. The Hawksons finished a moment ago. Our next team joins us in the colors of the Graubünden Cantonal Bank. What a celebration, what a welcome. And congratulations to you two gentlemen. Good job today. Well done to Daniel and Cornell. Also MTV, Graham McCollum with uh, Stephen Weaver. Well done, Graham. Well done, Steph. Welcome to the finish line. And if you're orthodontist, I don't need your help, but if you're orthopedic surgeons, can you look at my right knee? Avi Dornbern, Eins aus Österreich, Philipp und Martin. Hello, Philipp. Hello, Martin. Rot, Weiss, Rot, Österreich. Die Sonne ist draußen hier in St. Moritz. Wir werden unsere nächsten Teams einfahren. Unsere nächsten Altersklassenhelden. We welcome Patrick Niklas und Fabian Hüber. 
Markus Gisler, André Fedier. And then got in Zach Moritz, mixed in Debra Inawen and Kilian Badrutz.
Here we go with the Pangolins, uh, Great Britain, uh, the epic legend in the making, Gregory Smith, and from Colombia, Camilo Lopez. The Alpine Reavers from Great Britain, Brett Tuzen, Ben Ward. Und direkt hinten dran unser nächstes Österreicher Duo, Rosatz, Walter Hartz und Dominik Rossmann. Mittlerweile wird auch recht warm in den Temperaturen. Die Sonne versucht sich durchzuarbeiten durch die Wolken hier an der Finish Line in St. Moritz. Zu dieser dritten von fünf Etappen beim diesjährigen Spa Swiss Epic. Jede Menge Drama heute auf der Strecke bei der Elite vorne. Teams, die sich verfahren haben, technische Probleme oder auch einfach Beine, die aufgegeben haben. Aber großartig unterwegs unser nächstes Team mit Marc Maggi und Melin Fanton. Maggi Fanton in the mixed category. Italy and France at the finish line. The great Grand Masters men wearing the leader's jersey. Forestier Rossi, the epic legend Rene Valley and Ricardo Giulio Acuto. Oh, that was an individual finisher. Sadly, I could see one of the new kid jerseys a little early today back here. So finishing individual today, Jody Hall. Jody Hall nuked his partner out on the trails. Jody, he looked, he looked good when he came back to the village though. He's on two feet, so it's all good. Und unsere nächste beiden Teams, die beiden Swiss Legends, Reto Nigli und Fabian Zürcher, das TS Racing Team in Giordana Baikarena, Zermatt, Larissa Rosner und Melanie Eichmann kommen sie auf dem 10. Platz unserer UCI Women am heutigen Tag.
in the mixed category. Well done today on stage three from Costa Rica. CBC Cycling, Rodrigo Herrera, Soloranzo, and Daniela Chaveri. Wir freuen uns, sind St. Moritz an der Finishline auf unsere nächsten Teams und Individual Finisher, die ins Ziel kommen. Bei Club Kandersteg mit Nils Karl und Sebastian Bixel. Und hinten dran Kenechos, die ewige Legende Daniel Hannig und Carlos Enrique Hernandez. Die Zielanläufe mittlerweile etwas entspannter. Mit viel Genuss geht es rein ins Ziel für unsere nächsten Grandmasters aus der Schweiz. Res Krenbühl und Werner Hollenstein. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Jupe Stockur, Markus Enzler und Björn Schinnett im Ziel. Die Swiss-Legende mit der Epic Legend hat es geschafft. Sie cruisen ins Ziel. Die letzten Meter. Enjoy the finish line, the beautiful finish line here in front of this mountain backdrop in Engadin here in the San Moritz. Afuera del planeta. Jose Ramirez and Anay Miranda. Ja, wie vorher gerade gesagt hat, wir hören von der Strecke, die Anstiege heute, die waren brutal. But he's done it as individual finisher from Portugal, Ricardo Gomes.
love the personal handover. Yeah, it is. Endless Summer, David Barr and Catherine Wood and Full Moons. My go vertical doubles, Marcel Gumala and Martin Matuska. So Lee, uh, Lee, Lee Strawbridge. Not listening, can't hear me, it's all good. The Stoll Bros, 5.5 Peter Bona on Meinrad Fields on a Sana Wilfried Racing Team from Denmark, Nikolai Mortensen and Eric Corneliusen. Yeah, Great Britain, welcome to the finish line here, beautiful St. Moritz, James Shaw and Jack Wilson bringing it home in style. Brutal climbs on today's stage, rewarded by insanely beautiful flowy signal trails with uh, endless berms and jumps towards the finish line. We say hello to Belgium, despite not bringing us an ounce of Belgium chocolate. Team 8300, Mikkel Paulos on Luis Tiers. And two epic legends from Spain. This cycling academy with Jose Luis Poyo and Jose Rivas Ferreira. And from South Africa, Vlad Sweating Gears, Brett Dixon and Christo Gaia.
from Argentina, Medicos Menoginos, Sergio Grotoro, and Animal Mira. Das Team Anton in unserer Grandmaster-Kategorie. Die beiden Deutschen, Stefanek und Thomas Lega, willkommen auch hier an Tag 3. RV Ersigen 260s Bruno Murald und Daniel Delfoss, Stefan Sulza und Ral Bettig, Metz Davos hat es geschafft, genauso wie Gift Gas, Ivan Wesselsport mit Rahel Bettig, Stefan Sulza, Jan Sus, Anna Picard und hier kommen Karina Mohr und Nina Hartlieb, Vierter heute für Scott Sports Deutschland im Masters Women. Wer hätte das gestern Abend gedacht, dass das Wetter sich heute noch mal so dreht für unsere knapp 280 verbliebenen Teams auf der Strecke. Und die nächsten beiden kommen rein bei mittlerweile fast Sonnenschein. Team Dead Cow, Asaf Baldav und Dan Cohen. Ein eher schwierige Team Cycle Magazine. Daniel Brees and Ulrika Eriksson in the mix. Well done to the two of you. Happy celebrations here at the finish line. Team Marius, Samuel Garcia and Anselmo Perez from Spain.
Männer Sport CK and other a fantastic Swedish duo set the finish line. Daniel Pedersen and Christian Sira. Onza leaks the team in again of Fabel to Spa Swiss Epics 2023 Spa. Emma Fiorita, Soro Swiss, Johan Kritzinger, and Eric Kleinhans. And our next two teams on the way. The Crazy Cusses are finally here. Nick Kershaw, Karl Hasselmann. And a blue board rider with Maurice Picard, Kip Gas. Well done. And with him, Quinton Abrahams from South Africa as an individual finisher. Lee, stop it now. Come on now. You're too old for social media. Well, you know what usually happens? The likes of Lee and James, they do sort of live Instagram videos. And hopefully, hopefully James Scharf is watching. But, but Lee's saying, this is my family at home. Here we go. And by the way, to the family at home, we are looking after Lee. He hasn't had his best ever Swiss Epic. But we've been benefiting because of it, because we've had more of his time and more of his company. So don't you worry. We're looking after Lee. He's all good. Hello, beautiful family. Daddy's just fine. And did you know that Daddy's plan is to travel home in Speedos because he's given away everything he brought to Switzerland? Yeah, Speedos and pink road ID stocks. What a look. What a look. Da schaut es euch an. Die Sonne ist raus, vergesst die Sonnencreme nicht. Wir wissen ja auch, St. Moritz, man nennt es die Toskana der Schweiz. And here comes our next Grandmasters Team 
from the Czech Republic, Petr Skala and Ladislav Petr. Keine einfache Route heute, die Anstiege brutal. Wir haben es gesehen, selbst die Elite-Teams weit über die Zeit-Predictions hinaus. Und dementsprechend auch harter Tag für all unsere fantastischen Weekend Warriors, die unterwegs sind. Und dadurch haben wir noch immer 195 Rider auf der Strecke unterwegs. And here we go with our next fantastic duo on the way towards the finish line. High fives. Well done, chaps. Looking like they haven't even broken a sweat here today. The two Danes, Jesper Christensen and Per Skol Strandstof. Obviously, the majority of the day today, slightly more Danish weather here. So playing into their cards, JPMTV. Well done, gentlemen. Here we go with our next two superheroes across the finish line with Jan von Rach, Jakob Aramich and from the Netherlands, Matthijs Geritz and Erik Bronsford.
Und wir freuen uns mit unseren nächsten beiden Teams, die es gleich geschafft haben. Rudergötter AD, unser südafrikanisch-deutsches Duo mit Andreas Diakon, Axel Tornau. Andreas from South Africa, the epic legend across the line. Und hinten dran der CP-Team Slovenia mit Bojan Krivic und Urban Meissen. Und jetzt geht es hier wieder Schlag auf Schlag an der Finishline. Das nächste Team ist auf dem Weg in Richtung Ende. Dritte von fünf Etappen. Wer also hier ins Ziel kommt, hat schon mehr als die Hälfte hinter sich. Morgen geht es dann weiter mit dem Start um 8 Uhr. Die Reise nach Davos wird angetreten. Unsere Queen Stage, die morgen ansteht. Und dann der große Abschluss zum Spa Swiss Epic am Samstag. Die Rundstage in Davos. Team Biltong, Michael van Wodenberg and Paul van Wodenberg. Well done, gentlemen. We are over the pain that you didn't bring us Biltong and we decided not to ignore you anymore, even though you deserve it. And here we go. Looking smooth, looking relaxed. Aus der Schweiz, die Epic-Legende Antonio Foundes und Alexandre Cesne, the faster spine team aus der Schweiz. Here comes the next my teams. Well done, uh, United States, Graham Faulkner and Francis Faulkner. Team Nagato and Team Fairtree from South Africa. Gary Kirsten and Jeremy Thompson. Of athletes. We're getting ready for our next podium ceremony of the day here. And we're calling our amateur women. Please make your way down towards the finish line. The Masters women as well. And the Great Grand Master men. So, Great Grand Master men, the Masters women, and the amateur women. Please make your way down towards the finish line, the podium, for the podium ceremony coming up next. Still Jack's idea and still a fabulous idea that Jack had for Jamie Chalmers and Henry Marks signing them up for the race here. Gentlemen, well done once again for Great Britain. Stage three done and dusted and here we go with the next teams, the Dutch South Africans with Egon Doinison and Quan Hansen and then uh, and then shows the bike from Belgium, Kobe Breckman and Juanes uh, Bosman. And here we go, individual rider Yolanda Lecce, individual finisher for Dani Schneider, Archport, crazy ladies. On Ebenfalls, individual finisher from the Netherlands, 
Rob van der Meijdenberg voor Kraftbier. En nou een ex team voor de Netherlands as well, Cycling Team Delta, Robert de Boer en Mark de Boyle. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready for our next podium ceremony, starting with the Masters women. On a beautiful stage three here of the Spa Swiss Epic, 58 kilometers, 2,100 meters of climbing on those beautiful flowy trails, the World Championship and the Olympia Trail towards the finish line here in San Moritz. Our Masters women in third place in 4 hours 30.07. Team Masters 
Susanne Tanner and Margrit Abecheli. In second place, in four hours, 16 and six seconds, from Switzerland, the Stall Bikes women, Simone Sol and Nina Bren. And saving a mere four seconds across the finish line in four hours, 16.02, for Switzerland, the Stall Bikes twins, Leah Turing and Petra Turing. And ladies and gentlemen, here they are one more time. You top three of the day in the Masters women. Team Matsu, Susanna Tana, Margaret Avecheli. Stolbach women, Simone Stoll and Nina Bren of the Stolbach twins. Lea Thüring and Petra Thüring. Congratulations to our top three and we are now calling our leading duo back onto stage for the handover of the leaders jersey in the masters women it was a close battle on today's stage but a dominant overall lead of 10 minutes and 57 seconds for our masters women leaders Four Stoll Bikes women, Simone Stoll and Nina Bren. And we're still looking for Team RV Eris again, the 260s. Bruno Murald on Daniel Delfoss. Please make your way down towards the podium for the ceremony of the great Grand Masters men. We're looking for Bruno Mural and Daniel Delfos. And we're also calling Zurek Sweden, Linda Dettering and Julie Kapal. Linda Dettering and Julie Kapal. Please make your way down towards the podium at the finish line. Dear spectators, with the arrival of our next fantastic team, we are getting ready for our next podium ceremony of the great Grasters, Grand Masters Men. Jumping straight into second place in four hours, 56.08 for Switzerland. RV Erzgen, 260s. Bruno Mural on Daniel Delfos. And your fastest great grand master man team of the day in four hours forty eighteen seconds. Still wearing the great leader's jersey, Rene Valle, Ricardo, Giulio Acuto, Forestieri Rosti. And here they are one more time, you talk to the great Grand Masters man. Avi Erzigen 260s, Bruno Murad on Daniel Delfos, and in the leader's jersey, Forestieri Rosti, Rene Valle, Riccardo Giulio Acuto.
So far for our podium is ceremonies and welcoming our next individual finishes and teams on the way towards the finish line of stage three here in San Moritz. Thunderstorms and rain last night turned the trails into perfect, flowy, grippy trails out there on the road today. The climbs were brutal, challenging and slow, but they were rewarded with the world champion flow trail, the Olympia flow trail, and a lot of berms and jumps and happy faces on the way to the finish line of stage three of the Spa Swiss Epic here in San Moritz. Here they are, we've been waiting for you, Jens Vredehoek Scullies, Pierre Evert and Dennis van der Westhuysen. All or nothing. Was nicht für das Team, das jetzt gleich hier ins Ziel eingerollt kommt. Da sehen wir die nächsten beiden auf den letzten Metern. Jetzt nochmal gemütlich ausrollen lassen, den Sonnenschein genießen und vor allem das herzliche Willkommen hier an der Finishline für Two Ordinary Belgium Guys, Karel Breda und Gies Obrechts und die beiden Österreicher vom Team B und K, Birgit Lachmeier und Kurt Barth. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. Und es geht direkt weiter. Team Greybeard, Robert Jones, Chris Clyde, 
Kings Hill, Meinert von der Neuvel in uh, Chil Snelda on Team Rittersport, Mark Highland and Sam Highland. Well done, you legends. Irgendwo muss hier ein Lester Nachbiker sein. Die nächsten sind auf dem Weg. Kine Traktik von Belgien. Tom Rosen und Flora Engels. And Team Last Minute. Flori Durst and Nathaniel Him from France. And here we go. Velomar, CSKA, Herbert Herger and Sergei Gurremki. Congratulations, here they are. Maggie and Todd made it once again in style for the United States. Daniel Wegenstein and Margo Kelly. Kenne Mengesen und Thomas Hofstetter, unser nächstes Schweizer Duo in den Grand Masters Man und straight behind from Great Britain, the Fanland Warriors, Paul Fiore and Andrew Croft Taylor. Sie sind unterwegs, insgesamt noch 130 Reiter auf der Strecke. Hier auf dieser dritten Etappe rund um St. Moritz. Und die meisten sind mittlerweile rüber. Über diesen letzten langen Anstieg auf dem Weg runter, den Olympia Trail. Danach kommt nochmal ein Anstieg. Und der letzte, der Forward Trail, hier in Richtung Ziel.
weiter geht's. Letzte Selfies vor dem Ziel. Nochmal bei unseren nächsten beiden Duell Teams. Die O-Toppies, our Oldsters from South Africa. Charles Leclerc und Jaco Duplessis. Well done. And the VCC Julia Cycles aus der Schweiz. Nathalie Steule und Stefan Juliat. Riders looking happy and tired at the finish line. Suso, Mike, Wallenstedt, das sind Marina und Dario Signorell. Die Etappe heute, keine einfache, anspruchsvolle Anstiege. Flowige Trails, aber man muss immer konzentriert bleiben. And our next individual finisher, Road IDP Team, United States, Justin Dischelski. And here we go with the motherfuckers from Belgium. Jan van der Maas and Marno van Lieselt. Any, any models out there on the trail today? I feel like Switzerland and St. Moritz will never be the same again with some of the team names we're pushing across the finish line here. Scott for life. Let's welcome our next duo in the beautiful Spa Swiss Epic jersey on the way to the finish line. Team Longevity with Michael Jeffrey and Mark Fuller for South Africa.
you can see on day three, our support team, the Adib Stellis, getting a bit lazy, just sitting in the lounge chairs, not hanging out with the beers at the finish line anymore. We're ready to welcome our next team from España, La Infinita Locura, Carolina D'Amico and Vicente Aguilar Roseo. Kleiner Moment des Hoschen Aufwärts hier und an der Finish Line. Und dann geht es gleich weiter mit unseren nächsten Teams, die ja auf dem Weg in Richtung Finish Tag 3 sind. Und morgen dann die Queen Stage nach Davos steht an. Also auch da nochmal eine ganz besondere Etappe, die unsere Teams erwartet. Hier wir aus der Schweiz, GKW Epilog gegen Kur, Giannamaya 
und Lea Rutz, unser drittes Amateur-Damen-Team am heutigen Tag. Extreme and our Grand Masters men from Spain, Manuel Alemani Sanchez and Cristobal Catalan. Let's give it up for our ladies from the United States. Well done today. Enjoy St. Morris. Enjoy the finish line. Feet up in the air for the Colorado Rogues. Johanna Noiva and Krista Silvers.
Jawohl, da freuen Sie sich lautstark. Und das Wilrich, die Littitis, Stefan Monnier und Etienne Caillebois in der Grandmasters Man. Felicitations. Our team USWE well done today uh, on this third stage around Sam Reeds, Kelly Jones and Austin Buford Arnett. Hier sehen wieder die wunderschönen Farben, uh, the colors of this bar, Swiss Epic Jersey for Great Britain, our weekend warriors, getting really close to the weekend now, Chris Benson and Robert Benson, well done, and I would say with tomorrow's Friday, it's finally the real weekend for our weekend warriors from Great Britain.
Task Team Gibbons aus der Schweiz. Willkommen Sie, Jan Ramsey, Alessandro Lanfranchi. Look at that and look at you. You've done it. Beautiful sunshine as you arrive at the finish line. Nautilus Racing. Hola, Pep. Hola, Jordi. Buen trabajo, amigos. And a welcome just in time for lunch. Double South Africa, double Maccas on the way. The Mad Max. Nothing mad about you two, unless you cross with each other. Welcome to the Mad Max. Welcome, South Africa. Welcome, Craig. Welcome, Jeremy. By the way, it's Pena Arabiata for lunch with a side dose of beer. Oh, there's no beer left because the South African number one cheering team have drunk it all. Solo to the finish line. Adrian Miller, the Grand Van Masters. Bravo, Adrian. And welcome in Seal. And it's almost time for lunch, Adrian. I'm correct. Some people might say an addiction to mountain biking, a bit of a bad habit. I think it's a fantastic, healthy habit. You get to explore the world in some of the best races on the planet, the best views, as our next team will attest to. Now the screams and shouts 
of our only two spectators welcome them to the home. One and two, our double Belgian combination, Bram and Bart, the Motus RC team. Heel goed gedaan, Bram and Bart. Getting down to business on that day three, stage three of our spa, Swiss Epic Spa, Emma Fidichta, always there for you. And we are here for those smiles of Ville and Tim, Team Sunny Scunny, Finland and Tim Higgins from Great Britain, Ville providing all the sea Sioux. But big smiles on the faces of Ville and Tim, well done chaps. Getting down to business, getting the business done. Our teams are the beautiful sunshine here in Sakvaritz, enjoying Nengadin, enjoying Graubinden. All in black, feeling a little bit warm, but you can cool off now. You are on the finish line. What a Lucian, what a Rich. Good job, boys. Look at you go. So not pros. What nonsense. You are pros indeed. Stage three is done.
You can almost feel the positive body language as they can see the finishing arch here in St. Moritz. It's where it all started this morning. It's where it finishes. Timothy Shera, South Africa, Travis Spencer Coy, USA. It's Team Dynamite, Team TNT. The screams of delight, the screams of welcome, the screams of joy, hands in the air like you don't care, Tommy and Gareth. That's the Glimo energy, Tommy Davies and Gareth Huey. And Team Leo Channel, Torsten und Torsten, zweimal Torsten, zweimal Deutschland. And all the riders I've been speaking to saying that those flow trails, those descents, just magical. But may you know, the work to get up the top of those climbs to enjoy the downhills. A big investment for that reward. And the climbs were steep. Not something we are all accustomed to. out celebrating from Belgium and the Netherlands David and Alex the Battle of Waterloo one of the best team names here and they've won the battle of stage three they've conquered the Engadin one David Allwood Felicitiert Alexander Oberink
some energy, some excitement. A media bike in front of our next team on the way to the finish line. Looking like spring flowers blossoming in a beautiful meadow. They roll down our finish line. Moi, moi, moi. Look at that. Gerard and Yonita. Team Hilbokies. Gerard Creer and Yonita Creer. Fantastic. Congratulations on another brilliant finish. You're more than halfway to conquering the Alps.
Wir kommen noch ein nächstes Mix. Le Duo, die Montels, Javier Valero und Tessa Wiese, das deutsch-spanische Duo. Herzlichen Glückwunsch. I wonder what they speak to each other, German or Spanish? It's probably completely different. They probably, I don't know, have some interesting history and speak Japanese to each other, something like that. I reckon they're speaking Croatian. And talking about Croatia, we have an incredible epic series event called the Four Islands where you race the rocks. And this is their theme song. Come on, Tomislav. Come on, Igor. Time to dance. All right, Paul, it's time for a tent joke. The nomadic tents are on the way towards the finish line. Great in Elderton, Warren Turner. Well, it's been a bit of a stretch, but they've made it to the finish line. Good job, boys. Yeah, look at you go. Nine on a canvas. Ah, oh, Lycra. There we go. Good job. Here we go, KD18 for Great Britain, Stuart Croxford and Jaco Van Gas. Sir, I've just been uh, contacted by, by the Department of Home Affairs in South Africa, and they said, Yaku, you need to change your name. It's not Yaku van Gas, it's Yaku from Gas. He has to change the spelling of his name, because he's got the Union flag. As we get ready to welcome from Singapore, Justin. Justin Ho, solo to the finish line. Well adjusted. Justin. Justin from Singapore, well done. Just in time. Look at that, a little bit of Spanish flavor at the finish line here. Another one of the fantastic races in the Epic Series, the Andorra Epic. If you've ever been to Andorra, you know what's up. Steep, steep up the mountains, the black ski slopes, but then beautiful descending, amazing bike parks thrown in as well. Another wicked race in the Epic Series. Had the pleasure of being at the Andorra Epic twice already. You start at a thousand meters minimum, and it's all about amigos para siempre. That's what the Epic Series is about. It's about the wonderful camaraderie of friends, and two more friends join us now on the finish line. Bienvenidos, herzlich willkommen. Welcome to the end of stage three. In the colors of Spa, how are you boys going? Lecariela, well done. Ima Fidishda, always there for you. That's what Spa says. And was Johannes and Heinrich, the team Murdo, Murdo. Until to answer your question you asked me earlier, do I ever sit around and 
suddenly have these deep and meaningful thoughts? Um, no, because if I was intelligent, I'd have a real job. Now, there's a true story for you. Oh, the suffers are on the way for. In the Change Your Life kit. Change Your Life is a fantastic initiative on these incredible bike adventures, huge fundraisers where we change lives. Welcome to Davi and Mia. The Saffirs are in the house. Well done, you two. Welcome to Take now for a bit of a beer of two. I can see three more teams on the final approach. Here you are. This is what you want from the USA. Alex's Bicycle Pro Shop. Hola, Alejandro. Welcome, Julian Duque. Mr. Duque in the house. And uh, we welcome Carlu and Feras Krikos Bow Service. And Team Olma, Marco and Oliver. Brothers in arms. Thumbs up from them as they make their way to the finish line. And the next team is not far away. Our amigos para siempre. And from the United Kingdom, it's Ryan and Peter. Our middle miss team, Team Mini. Good job to the young amateur men. What well a Pete, what well a Ryan. Celebrating our host nation and celebrating 10 years of the Swiss Epic. Here's a classic. This is the ultimate earworm, Alper Rosa. And they've been enjoying the beautiful roses of the Alpes, Bernadette and Dennis from the Philippines. Timaharlika, Bernadette Tan and Dennis Shangjo. A song that makes me think of knives and fondue and yodeling in the mountains and milking cows and chocolates. Alpe Rosa. A song that also makes me think of riders two by two enjoying the Alps. From South Africa, Amelia and Sebastian, the Deeper Rinks are reunited with the finish line. Welcome, Team Deeper Rink. You wonder what the story with the reunited is? Is that a personal thing or a rider pair thing? I'm not going to try and answer that question because I'd hate to get it wrong. But I think it's a riding thing. Three more riders. And you better be smiling, otherwise you're going to go do the Olympia Trail again. 
They are smiling. They've done it. You are almost on your way to conquering the Alps. Three times the Netherlands, the Waffles and Flowers, Willems and Ventholt. You felicitate Jeroen, Harold and Rulands. I don't know what Waffles is doing. He's been out there for three days now trying to find a flower and yet coming back to the finish line without a flower every single time. Flowers waiting for him on the finish line, that's why. Actually, we got some Stroop Waffles here at the finish line. Celebrating the nations, 45 of them participating in our sparse with their pick. Alperosa, what an earworm. I find myself for weeks after this was epic singing the song in the most inappropriate times. Now we celebrate Italia. Do you understand what you're singing when you sing it? I'm singing about a rose in the Alps, that's all I know. And if you're wondering why there's a finish line and there's music and there's announcing, it's because it is a race. So you better race to the finish line. I'm not sure she was trying to race or to hide. She was trying to hide when she realized it was a race. Looked like in solid aero position, but it was just a hide away. Lot for our next team though, aus Österreich. The Röbereiters, the Röbis, with Tobias and Thomas. Very nice, guys. Let's try to laugh for the camera. So must it be. Oh, that's nice. Ah, somebody lost the watch. Could you do us a favor? Could you drop it off at the race office? Yeah, net net I anakant manier. Langs and langs any beer. Yeah, langs lang langs many beer. Na na langs and chevita is here race office. Okay, hey Tom, lekker dank je. We got a lot of athletes joining us from Sweden. And this athlete won, uh, this artist won the Eurovision Song Contest in 2012. And again now in 2023, it's Laureen. And for these next two riders, it is Euphoria because you are on the finish line. Kirby and James, well done to the Grunters.
Look at Lee's feeling it. You know, busting out the TikTok dance moves again. No, please don't. You yeah. scare the children. Yeah, careful with that replacement hip, eh? And it's Euphoria again. Double trouble, the finish line, Mike Nixon and Mark Van Veen, uh, Team Constantia. If you could conquer Everest, you could conquer the Alps. And another one of the nations represented amongst the 45 nations, the people from La Belle France. A little old Champs Elysees. And if you are uh, into triathlon, you'll know that the Olympic test event happening in Paris as we speak. And the French will be hosting the Rugby World Cup where the Springboks got to kick some ass. It's been a good day for the Germans in Paris today. It has. Two straight qualifications for the Olympics. And then tomorrow, it's the boys' time. A women's race today. The gents tomorrow along the Champs-Élysées. Tilshank, your eyes are better than mine, but I got a funny feeling it might be a six six seven on the way to the finish line. I'm going with that's a six six seven on the way. Celebrating another one of the forty five nations, not just because Lee is standing here, but a little bit of port in the USA as we welcome Chester Chua from Singapore. What a cheese! You can tell by the look on the faces of our friends from Singapore how tough today was they were still smiling and responding yesterday today it's just like relief mixed with something in there but it's not a happy smile right now it's kind of relief and grief all at once celebrating all the nations that are part of the spa specific 2023 the usa is one of the big ones and this is the boss and they've been bossing the trails and they're on the finish line all women's team the smiles are big from iceland inga and anna the ice 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 girls so you gotta explain something to me right the dot here stands for daughter daughter yes correct so why does anna cecilia not have a dot here because she's gotta be somebody's daughter yeah but but inga was carl's daughter ah and Anna Cecilia was Inga's hammer? Yeah, the hammer. On the trails as well, the hammer. They did hammer it on the trails for sure. And Paul, we've been getting uh, official complaints for the lack of music trivia at the finish line today. Oh, there's no, they... oh she's Swedish, so she's not a daughter. Okay. So Anna Cecilia Inga Hammer is from Sarga. But Inga Dagmar Karlsdottir 
is from Iceland, so they are still our ice, ice girls. I, I ran out of my music trivia yesterday, too. And today's not long enough for more. Oh, there he is. Hello, James Sharp, you beautiful thing. How are you, my brother? I know you wish you were here. Oh, you do. It's a beautiful day today. The flow trails have been insane. And just for you, we're spinning a little bit of the boss. Born in the USA. Make your way through the nations in no particular order. A lot of riders here from Portugal as well. So now we celebrate Portugal. As we play you one of the rock songs from Portugal, this is from Australia, Lonnie Toya and Keith Louie, Infinite Nutrition, Australia, matey. The next amazing team on the way towards the finish line here. What a beautiful day and enjoying the tailwinds on the final meters. The Mutt Munchers, Garth Peterson, Andy Wright, you legends, well done. Not one of the big nations that are sparse with Epic. It is our neighbor. It is Germany. Celebrating Germany now.
Here we are. The fist pumps are real. The finish line is real. Here you are. Representing Singapore. Welcome to your finish line. And Nikki Boyston is there as well. What a Nicks. What a you two legends. So Ray Young and Sam Chen, Mark Smith and Nikki Boyston, you have done it. Another one of the nations represented here is Ireland. Now we're celebrating the Irish. Look at this, more legends on the way towards the finish line. We see the 667ers from Singapore again. Looking good, looking sharp. Here we go, you set tailwind. Oh, no, 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 you keep finishing, my friend. <laughs> What's the cutoff? Well done, chaps. Welcome back, you let me Flipping rock star Gabriel Jordan and Vili Serpentine. RNA cycle and fun. While well, we were rocking to the, all our Irish riders, now it's time to celebrate our riders from the United Kingdom. Well done, Tilika Rolsko, Mountain Bike Team 3, Eric Hansen from Denmark, our next finisher today.
looking at the final minutes and moments of this third stage of the Spa Swiss Epic here in beautiful St. Moritz Graubünden. We've got 16 riders left out on the course, of which seven are struggling on that final climb up towards the 49 kilometer mark. And from there, it's just about nine kilometers to go, mostly downhill on beautiful flowy trails towards the finish line. Here they are, the Mahubas, Johan Borchards and Gerard Spreit. What well on to you two guys. I can promise with all the South Africans finishing now, we run out of spectators because the spectators all go join their hubbies.
And these are some of our officials, our medics. Those medics that did a bad job yesterday were fired from using motorbikes and had to actually pedal mountain bikes. Those that did a good job got graduated to motorbikes.
So just when you thought it was safe and there'd be no music trivia, this is Tracy Thorne and Ben Watt. They're actually a couple. They've just released a brand new album that they recorded during COVID because they were bored. They weren't planning to come back. But the band's name is Everything But The Girl. Till, do you know how they got their name? Paul, you know the answer. I have no idea. So, that looks like Svenja. It is Svenja. Hello, Svenja Tours. She's on a session. She can't stop. So, they, when they submitted their demo song, to the record company the first record company turned around and said also we like we love the music but we like everything but the girl so ben watt gave the record company a middle finger called the band everything but the girl and signed up with another record label you see now there's a good story and this song i miss you like the deserts miss the rain was written 10 years before it became a hit. This is the Todd Terry remix. It was massive the summer of 93, 94, and the Todd Terry remix is what made them famous. Ladies and gentlemen, down here at the finish line, I'm happy to report Paul K is back. So listening to DJ Dane Lee and the tunes he's spinning at the moment makes me think, Till, we should be sitting in those epic series deck chairs, relaxing, the gentle late summer sun, the beautiful vista, sipping on an ice cold beer. I feel like it would be rude not to.
Uh, this is the team name. Once again, I do apologize. Try more girls. Obviously, we would never call you girls. Great Britain, Georgia Vance and Kelly Very Hard. You see, if I had to give them a team name, it'd be Grown Ass Try More Women. Georgia and Kelly Mary, well done in the Masters Women. So considering the way they spelt the name, do you think they like to do triathlon as well? I have a feeling. I got a funny feeling that the Trimur girls, they've been singing hallelujah all the way to the finish line. By the way, Tilshank, do you know the name of the artist? I feel like I really should in this case. It sounds almost, what is your era? It sounds almost like a German word, Dr. Alban. Dr. Alban, because do you think he was a funny guy? Well, you think he was funny? He certainly helped people with their smiles. A dentist from Sweden. Here we go, we're getting excited on the finish line. We're getting ready to welcome another team, another two riders. Wow, you are wearing some bright socks and bright tops, but I want to see the one thing brighter than that is your smiles. Yes, please. What a welcome, what a celebration. Singing hallelujah, arms in the air, feeling it. Feeling so good. Congratulations, Kristin and Björk. Christian Svein's daughter, so the daughter of Svein, and Björk Arna Dutter, the daughter of Arna. And as we've learned by now, clearly Icelandic and not Swedish. And I'm seeing a six, a six, and a seven on the horizon. Uh, pushed towards the finish line by the tailwind in the Masters men. From Singapore, look at those legends. Once again, well done, David Tai, Eugene Lowe. Is that a smile? Here we go, it's a smile. Paul, can I have a fun fact about the song, please? We've got nine amazing riders left out on the course, all of which have passed the 49.5 kilometer mark. So the single digit kilometers on the way towards the finish line here on a beautiful, beautiful day in San Moritz.
So I got a little bit of uh, St. Moritz trivia for you. Did you know that this is where alpine skiing was invented? Yes, because uh, Stefan Fleury did explain that to me at my very, very, very first Swiss Epic year in the Graubünden when we started in Graubünden five years ago. Correct. Well done. You're not supposed to say yes. You're oh, supposed sorry. to sound impressed and make me look smart. Holy cow, Till, I did not know that. How, how did how did you know? I just know things. No, Google doesn't count, brother. That's it. Ah, oh, come on now. Dr. Google to the help. And I can feel it in the air. I can actually smell their eau de toilette because it's a tailwind for them at the moment, blowing them towards the finish line. And it is the smell of victory because to finish is to win. Yeah, we can see them. Da kommen sie. Die Lexel weiter in unser nächstes Tour. A blue board rider in one of our individual finishes. They started together. Day one in Lenzerheide as a team with one of them, uh, with Scott Plum having, having a rough day, but bringing it home uh, in style together. Scott Plum, United States, and Mike Griffin from Great Britain. Team True North. Music trivia, a little bit of Faithless, and the song Insomnia. Nothing to do with the fact that I couldn't sleep the other night, being awake since 1am. But Kevin Vermark, the founder of the Cape Epic, in the early days when nobody believed him and nobody saw what this could become, there he was in his office working all night long, lying on the floor wondering, my goodness, will we survive another year? And Faithless Insomnia was his theme song. And it's a good theme song to have. Faithless, especially for our next duo from Zimbabwe and South Africa, Bassett Day, Johan Bezuidenhout. Bezuidenhout and Waddy. What on Johan, what on Dave. Yep, it's all about having faith. That's how you get to the finish line. So as we play a little bit of Faithless and Insomnia, chapeau and a shout out to the founder of the Cape Epic, from which the Epic Series have been born. A shout out to Kevin Vermark and Katie Zach and the Cape Epic team.
I tell you, everybody that was uh, squeaking a tacky on the dance floors of the nightclubs around the world in the 90s, this got your feet tapping and your hips swaying. Italian DJ Robert Miles, a massive tune, children. Five riders remain on the course. 55 kilometers today, 2,100 meters of climbing in the Engadin, St. Moritz to St. Moritz. Talking about flowing off the flow trails and onto the finish line. You better be smiling. Ah, yes, please. Welcome back. Look at you. A fantastic finish. 55 kilometers later. Some steep, steep, steep climbs. Beautiful views. Incredible flow trails. Look at those berms. Unbelievable. They say you don't get berms like you do except here in Switzerland. A little bit of red, white, and blue. The stars and stripes in the form of Robert Lee and Greg Hamilton. Our label designs are back at home base. Good job, Rob. Good job, Greg. A couple of French DJs really remodeled the dance and electronic landscape. And as we've been celebrating our 45 nations, now we play a little bit of draft punk, a little bit of around the world, around the world.
presumably two more riders left on the route they've gone through the 49.5 kilometer mark a while ago so they're on the way back here towards the finish line with a beautiful tailwind pushing them towards the finish here at the spa swiss epic stage three finish in san moritz tomorrow morning we continue with the starts at eight o'clock and then the transfer stage the queen stage heading over to davos 78 kilometers 1950 meters of climbing and an extremely technical and challenging route awaits the riders on that second last stage of this year's spa swiss epic Ich sehe zwei weitere Rider. Paul, see two more riders on the way towards the finish line. We see the broom behind. It is our final finishes of the day. There you are. I hope you're feeling the love as we welcome you to the finish line. Look at your smile. Representing Singapore. What a lee. And his partner finished a short while ago, and here he is. Yeah, good job. What well a Chris, and thank you to our sweeper. Those are the last riders over the line at the end of stage three, day three. And uh, 300 teams, almost 600 riders, have almost conquered the Alps. We'll be saying goodbye to St. Moritz tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock when the UCI men leave. And we'll be making our way towards Davos. Enjoy this super sunny afternoon in sunny St. Moritz. We'll see you tomorrow morning as we say merci, feel mal St. Moritz, and uh, we make our way towards Davos.